Sup, my fellas, don't forget to leave feedback and enjoy the story. On Hymelbis Mountain's summit, this man was moving along while enduring the scorching heat of the roiling lava. Even though all of his gear is heat resistant, he still struggles because if he takes one wrong step, he will perish. On the Korean server, he is listed as the 31st player, Agni, the Fire Dragon Knight. To find a legendary item that can only be obtained by slaying this dragon, this man traveled to this mountain. Agni eventually came across the entrance to the hidden dungeon, but then he noticed a person. He is dozing off right outside the dragon's lair. Agni was perplexed, so he chose to investigate the person's tools first. The sleeping person's accessories and all of his gear were legendary ranked. He reasoned that it would be worthwhile if he could obtain even one thing from this man. Agni composed himself. He understood that this person needed to be very strong in order to be lying around like this in this location. But he can't just let this chance pass him by. Then he began using his flame sword. He didn't let his guard down even though the target of his attack was dozing. Agni attacked with a swing of his sword. His attacks on the player who was sleeping triggered pop-up notifications. However, this man simply rolled over to avoid the attack. The sleeping man suddenly woke up as an unidentified skill began to work. The ability to sleepwalk has been turned on. And then this one launched his defense. Agni found it difficult to defend against his opponent's quickness. Then he noticed chains coming his way. Agni called forth the scale armor of his fire dragon. This is his best defensive ability. But eventually, his shield was breached by the chains. This assault disregards defense. Chains slammed into Agni, and it caused a lot of harm. He was briefly stunned by it as well. Then, in a split second, his adversary struck him fatally. Agni was also given a nightmare condition, and he witnessed something that was beyond unbearable. He witnessed actual death. Agni died after a brief period, forcing him to log out. A sleepwalker just defeated this top-ranked player. Agni threw away some things, but the man kept on sleeping as though nothing had happened. He awoke a short while later. When he noticed some items lying around, he was pleased. He was aware that his skill was used while he was sleeping. He got the flame sword and 897 gold. He then continues by going into the hidden dungeon. Hyunsum describes this player. He is a direct descendant of Thanonos, the most powerful god in Idea. God rank was his class. He is also the perpetually dozy main character. Just a note, don't fret too much if the god's name is misspelled, the author did it on purpose. A little bit of RMC's history. He used to be a corporate slave, taking orders from this useless boss and pouting while doing it. Because of his patience and following orders from his boss, he is admired by all of his co-workers. Our MC just kept saying sorry as this boss talked and blamed Hyunsum for the delay in their task. Hyunsum pays for his sister's medical bills, so he can't afford to lose his job. He wants to punch this man in the ugly face, though, deep down. He's just going to let this one go. Hyunsum will keep working in this miserable corporate position. But the man genuinely wants to leave his position. He greets the elderly woman and thanks her for working today when he returns home. This is Hyuna, the younger sister of Hyunsum. These two were very young when they lost their parents. Hyunsum was compelled by this to grow and adapt more quickly. Hyunsum plays it up every night, saying he's fine and doing well at work. Hyuna follows suit. She wants her brother to stop worrying about her. Hyuna was in a car accident with their parents six years ago while traveling with them. Hyuna managed to live, but ever since, she has blamed herself. Hyunsum shared the blame because he was powerless to help her. But in these situations, Hyunsum became more resilient. He is pleased with Hyuna's steady improvement. A game called Idea has been played by her sister. This virtual reality game makes use of a world that is larger than the Earth. The game's features were all based on things found on Earth, but this world also has magic and fantasy elements. Additionally, it was hailed as the best game ever. Hyunsum purchased a capsule for his sister and a second one for himself. Hyunsum only takes naps in the capsule. Five game hours are equal to one hour in real life. To get some rest, this man uses Idea. Definitely a very shrewd move. He could have rested for 20, 25 hours as opposed to just 4 minus 5 if he had used the game. Idea also wasn't just a straightforward game. Top players were able to amass enormous fortunes simply from playing the game. Due to the higher pay from playing Idea, some of them even quit their jobs. Hyunsum also considered doing this because he had been scouted as a pro player as a youngster. But because of his sister, he can't afford to take rash actions. RMC then began signing into the game. He was taken to this community of recent arrivals. However, he is the only one left this time. Hyunsum continues to enter an inn as usual. As he laid the bed down, he immediately felt happy. Hyunsum began to snooze. After that, this notification appeared. In-game RMC has slept for more than 10,000 hours. All of these notifications came to him later. But this man has no idea what is going on. After 6 hours of sleep in the real world, Hyunsum awoke. 30 hours of sleep, then, all the windows that were waiting for him began to become visible to him. 
Hyunsum became alarmed. He noticed the change in his class. RMC acquired a Fenano's descendant of the God-ranked class. He accumulated a lot of stats from the titles he acquired after sleeping for 10,000 hours. Hyunsum, however, decided to return to this later after he displayed logout. He spent some time investigating what was happening and was shocked by what he learned. He reasoned that if he could perfect the skill he had, he could make a year's salary playing this game alone. Hyunsum began to consider it. Within two months, he will use his savings and work his way up to strength. Hyunsum was in a great mood as a result of this. He prepared their breakfast to get the day going. He then assisted his sister in transferring to her wheelchair so she could use the restroom. Hyunsum was extremely grateful to this game for aiding his sister in getting over her trauma. Her sister was additionally making every effort to recover. She makes covert attempts to stand up. She can move around freely in the game. All she needs to do now is strengthen the muscles in her legs. Because she wants to surprise her brother when the time is right, this little sister kept this development a secret. Hyunsum gave his boss his resignation letter once he was back in his office. His boss was now repenting for his earlier deeds. This man will have to carry out all of the tasks that RMC has been carrying out for him in Hyunsum's absence. The co-workers of Hyunsum were pleased for him even though they would now have heavier workloads. Even the fact that Hyunsum endured for so long astounded them. The dishonest boss made an attempt to prevent Hyunsum from quitting by bringing up his sister. But this caused the atmosphere in the room to change. The table was struck by Hyunsum. He expressed his gratitude to his boss and expressed the wish that they never cross paths again. Hyunsum then left the workplace. He then proceeded to this PC area. Because he had the opportunity to make a lot of money by simply playing a game, RMC was ecstatic. He first rented a PC to begin learning more about the game and conducting further research. He reasoned that he ought to level up first. Levels 100 to 200 contain the in-demand items. He must therefore be here. Then, though, he noticed this tip in the forum. According to this, leveling up becomes harder the higher the class rank of the player is. Hyunsum requires five times as much experience to level up as an average player due to his god rank. Hyunsum began to feel that he had left his job far too early. On the other hand, this simply demonstrates that classes with higher rank were also more powerful than those with lower rank. After doing some research, RMC chose to use a capsule to turn on. He rented the capsule for 9 hours because he still has 8 and a half hours before his previous work shift ends. Hyunsum stepped inside the capsule to begin the game. He checked his stats and skills when he returned to the inn. He was most interested in this area, his god class rank. Thenanos is described as the god of sleep and death in this passage. This god enjoys getting into trouble as well. After reading the description, he concluded that this god resembled a punk in some ways. Hyunsum then looked over his acquired skills. Narcolepsy was my first talent. It's a passive ability that causes the user to abruptly nod off. A random time or once every 24 hours will trigger the activation of this skill. Once this skill has been used, the user cannot wake up. Thenano's dreams is the next. With this one, the user can receive DP based on how much sleep he received. This enables the user to gain DP when hunting monsters, NPCs, or even other players who are 30 levels higher. Additionally, it grants access to the DP store, where users can exchange DP for items and skills of various ranks. The third ability is known as Phantasomnambulism. This enables an artificial intelligence to control the user's character and his skills even when the user is asleep. It won't work unless the user was attacked while he was sleeping. Thano's Nightmares is the fourth talent. The user of this passive skill is able to use any weapon. It results in an abnormal status called Nightmare and a 200% increase in the likelihood of dealing a fatal blow. The skill's final name is Rest of Death. With this, the user can use DP to put someone to sleep for a minute. The enemy also takes twice as much damage while they are asleep. Hyunsen was overjoyed after reading all of these lengthy skills. He even imagined that people would refer to him as a hacker given his skills. His narcolepsy skill then kicked in, making him feel sleepy. Our MC dozed off. The game suggests that Hyunsen log out because his character will continue to be in this state. Hyunsen attempted to request a refund because he unexpectedly logged out but failed. He's a little annoyed that the skill was used right away after he just logged in. The skill, in Hyunsen's opinion, had truly lived up to its moniker. Hyuna was receiving treatment to learn how to walk in the meantime at the rehabilitation hospital. Her physician has now determined that psychological factors were not to blame for her inability to walk. In light of this, psychology professor Lee Mina suggested to Hyuna that she concentrate more on strengthening her muscles. The girl's steadfastness in surprising her brother also allowed her to advance more quickly. Then Lee Mina inquired as to when Hyuna would reveal her secret to his brother. It turns out that Hyuna has been covering the cost of her medical care on her own now. 
Her brother has no idea about this because he didn't pay attention when his sister was talking about how much money she made playing Ida. A call from Huna's brother came in. She then provided an explanation, saying she was just taking her caretaker for a walk and promised to return shortly. She declined Hyunsun's offer to pick her up because she was too embarrassed. Huna then bid Professor Lee Mina her farewells. These siblings, in her opinion, were a real handful. In order for them to be on the same page, Hyun also told her caretaker about the alibi she created. Huna and this Ajima returned to their apartment after a short while. Hyunsun informed this Ajima that she could leave at this time since he would be taking over Huna's care. Thankful, Ajima decided to take the day off. Then, Huna is carried by Hyunsun to her room. When Huna saw her brother's serious expression, she immediately questioned him to find out what had gone wrong. Hyunsun informed her that he was no longer working. She remained silent and assumed that his brother had indeed put in a lot of extra time. Then he disclosed to her his intention to make money through ideas. Huna's expression brightened when she heard this. She said she had been waiting for an opportunity to bring up this idea with her brother. She continued by saying that many people have been making money playing this game. When Huna questioned her brother about his class, he might have received a high ranking that caused him to resign from his position. Huna revealed that she is ranked 331 in her excitement. She ranks among the top 1,000 players in the game and has been making enough money to cover her medical expenses. She was stopped by Hyunsun, who now wants to discuss what she said in greater detail. The poor little girl tried her best to get herself out of this jam, but she was unsuccessful. Hyunsun recognizes his sister's efforts and concern, though, in the end, he believed she had truly matured. These two kept on discussing ideas. Even a wager was placed. Hyunsun ought to crack the top 1,000 in the next three months. He signed in once more that evening. The persona of Hyunsun has been dozing off for 58 hours. His stats went up as a result of this. Hyunsun then makes her way to the village center where the tutorial gate is located. He reflected on his father's words of wisdom, the first step is always the most important. Our MC made the decision to finish this one first. In this lesson, Hyunsun was required to select a weapon. Despite being a second Dan in Kundo, he chose a beginner's sword. In his earlier games, he consistently used this weapon. He is therefore more comfortable using this one. Then he saw this scarecrow in front of him. It appears to be quite frail, and with just one cut, it was halved. Hyunsun completed the tutorial successfully and earned many titles. He now has a plus 10 on all stats thanks to his Leica professional title. He gains a 10% increase to all of his experience points for holding the title of Monstrous Newbie. With all these titles under his belt, Hyunsun has gradually developed into an overpowered player. He then made the decision to travel to the following village. Each newcomer will have the option to decide where to begin their journey. For simpler runs, they typically pick the ones with more developed towns. However, our MC went with the DHA town, which is notorious for being difficult for newcomers. Because there is an orc village close by, beginners should steer clear of this town. However, it means that Hyunsen can level up wildly and solo every monster in this location. These two guards at the DHA town were discussing the absence of foreign visitors to their town. He was informed by the other guard that the acid slime was to blame. These slimes fire an acid blast that novices can't avoid, rather than being weak and easily killed. Additionally, it melts their tools. Additionally, a nearby orc village is present. They were delighted to see that someone was teleporting into the village. All of the NPC in the village welcomed Hyunsen when he arrived. They began to return to their work after realizing that he was just a low-level noob, though. The guards felt sorry for this newcomer as well. Then, in order to go hunting for the slimes, Hyunsen inquired about their location. Hyunsen simply thanked the guards for their concern despite their attempts to warn him about the danger. They feel terrible for Hyunsen. Hyunsen eventually found one slime after some time of running. He attacks it, but as he gets close, the acid in the slime blasts him. Hyunsen, however, dealt the slime a fatal blow thanks to his superior stature, killing it instantly. He reasoned that he couldn't level up with this and went back to the town to inquire about the location of the orc village. The guards' responses when I asked them this were peculiar. They attempted to console Hyunsen, believing that he had given up on life. He was then given something. Money was given to RMC. They advised him to get some scrolls from the shopkeeper so he could leave this town. Hyunsun was given the new title of Begging King despite his continued confusion about what was happening. He gains 10% more goodwill from the NPCs as a result. After being treated like a beggar, Hyunsun made the decision to go alone and locate the orc village. Then he discovered some sizable footprints. He is thus in the proper location. Two orcs suddenly rushed toward him. He was able to avoid the orc's blows, and the first one was dispatched with just one slash. The other also did not have a chance to respond before being slashed behind the back. Hyunsun gained many levels as a result. Along the way, he earned DP. Hyunsun decided to level up and attempt to eliminate every orc in the vicinity of the town because he enjoyed the feeling. 
RMC has begun to feast alongside these helpless monsters. As usual, these two guards were lazing around. However, they immediately increased their security after hearing the Red Orc's screams. But when they noticed Hyunsun approaching from the direction of the screams, they became perplexed. These two believed that Hyunsun fled back toward the town after becoming alarmed by the screams. They were unaware that the screams came from the Red Orcs Hyunsun had killed. Then he showed them everything he had taken as a result of his killing spree and inquired as to where Hyunsun could sell it. These guards acknowledged that they had misjudged the novice. They also considered their financial situation and prepared a plan to request the return of the gold. Hyunsun located the merchant and delivered all of his loot. Because of his careful slashes, all of these parts were in excellent condition. He was informed by the merchant that he must pay 150 gold for everything. This is the same as 15,001. Hyunsun was astounded at how much money he had made from simply hunting weak monsters. He will make more money at this rate than at his previous job. Within one to two months, he will concentrate on leveling up and becoming stronger while also making a lot of money. Hyunsun excitedly ran quickly in the direction of the town's exit. When the guards saw him, they concluded that Hyunsun was much more powerful than the other two. In order to avoid having to give them their money back, Hyunsun was also attempting to avoid them. He kept looking for more orcs as well. After 10 hours of hunting in-game, Hyunsun noticed that he was leveling up more slowly. Additionally, he was able to reduce the orc population in and around the town. Our MC desires to pursue more boss and elite monsters. He's still not prepared for those, though. He needs at least one attack skill to support him. Due to his ability to save 140 ability points, Hyunsun chose to use them right away. He used 70 wisdom, 40 reaction speed, 14 strength, and 16 stamina points. He also went to the DP shop. He began to remove objects. One DP is needed for normal rank ones. Hyunsun received an iron dagger. He received the bloodstone ring despite rare items needing 10 DP. He received the Yala stick as the special object. He treated this like trash because it was meant for magicians. He got this by pulling a heroic item. Iris failed product is the name of it. His existing weapon can be equipped with this item, which will increase its attack power by twofold. Its impact does not impress Hyunsun, but it is still a heroic rank, so yeah. The legendary item comes last. Hyunsun acquired this egg. However, it is still devoid of any description. It's an unidentified egg. The items he received, especially the legendary one, really infuriated him. When this orc showed up in response to his summons, Hyunsun delivered a devastating punch of disappointment. He then resumed pulling techniques. He received sprinting as the standard skill. It gives his sprint a 10% boost. Magical gunfire for the unique. He can use his mana to produce tiny bullets in this way. It has a 3 second cooldown. He was awarded the Berserker's Song for his special talent. For 10 seconds, Hyunsun will be able to ignore damage and his attack power will increase. He acquired the Siren's Seduction as his hero skill. All males nearby are seduced by this aggro skill, which has a 100 meter range. Hyunsun also received the Reaper Chains for the legendary skill. This ability will attack and chain all nearby enemies within a 30 meter radius. Additionally, this will disregard defense and deal 500% the user's attack power and damage. Our main character was very happy with this legendary ability. He was being watched by this enigmatic man in the meantime, and he appears to be unhappy about it. The business that came up with the game's concept is called Inferno. The user management team at the Korea HQ was keeping an eye on Hyunsun's development, and the leader of their team is the man who displays displeasure toward the game's creators. Jo Min Nu is his name. Now that Hyunsun has decided to make the DHA town his starting town, he is suffering from a headache. Additionally, when Hyunsun opened the DP store, his team let him know. At first, he wasn't too bothered by being able to access the god class. Hyunsun, however, began to fear this man as he displayed his natural talents. The mechanics and degree of control of Hyunsun were unmatched. The only thing Hyunsun could do before purchasing some goods and skills from the DP store was to pray. Hyunsun's facial expressions were as shown when he received this branch. This person is giggling, but then it abruptly turned around. Hyunsun acquired the Iris Failed product, and he selected the most crucial one. He won't worry too much because the team leader is unaware of the egg that Hyunsun obtained. Hyunsun is fine with the first three skills he was given as long as there isn't an attack skill. When Hyunsun received the Siren's Song, he laughed. Reaper's Chain, a legendary area of effect skill, was then used in its place. This man was astounded to notice that even the juice he hadn't yet swallowed was gushing out. He was aware that the Reaper's Chain and Siren's Song combined would end the game. He decided to inform the superiors of this development after giving up. Returning to RMC, he was happy with the outcome. Now that he is enjoying his god class, his decision to give up working was the right one. He was able to earn 100,001, or 76 US dollars, in less than 3 hours. He thought of his younger sister, who had attained level 331. 
he needs to start making more money than she does as a big brother in order to continue to support the family. With this in mind, Hyunsun was now more motivated than ever to reach higher levels. He'll now go after the boss. This is the Red Orc village, and before attacking, Hyunsun was quietly surveying the area. A Red Orc shaman, an elite monster, is also present in this area. He will be in trouble if the boss emerges while he is occupied with these monsters. He made the decision to deal with these pests first. Hyunsun applied Siren's seduction to the situation. The orcs were hypnotized at that point and began to rush in his direction. Unfortunately, the boss orc was also drawn in by this. The red orc's hero Kyoric is shown here. Now in a rage, this army of red orcs was preparing to attack Hyunsun. He then employed his fabled reaper's chain ability. The red orc's bodies were pierced by the hundreds of chains that began to protrude from Hyunsun. One of the times when he'll feel bad for these monsters is right now. As the chains worked, Hyunsun received numerous notifications letting him know that he had leveled up. Even the boss Kyoric was defeated in the end. Hyunsun received two more titles, 50 DP, and a shortcut to the secret dungeon as a result of this. Simply put, this skill was too powerful. Additionally, a ton of loot and items were dropped. Wishing he had an item gathering skill for these, Hyunsun said. Hyunsun returned to the farm the following day in search of more orcs, but none appeared. Then he recalled the hidden map he had received. Hyunsun noticed Kyoric's outfield. He reasoned that perhaps he should finish this one first. RMC has arrived at the location, which is simply too clear. A hidden dungeon, that is. Hyunsun experienced excitement as opposed to fear because he would encounter tougher monsters and be able to level up using them. Hyunsun entered the dungeon's entrance and was the first person to find it. Then he encountered his first experimenter, Spirit of the Vengeful Orc Warrior. Hyunsun was unable to finish this one off with a single cut. This is as a result of the reduction in his physical attacks. Then, in order to buy more time, he used his magic bullet. He observed that he can still deal a critical strike while using magic bullets. He deliberated not eliminating this one right away because he studied the monster's attack patterns. And this one was eliminated using a different magic bullet technique. Hyunsun just kept exploring the dungeon in search of more. This Ajima was traveling with Hyuna as she made her way to the rehab facility. They were discussing his brother's decision to resign from his job and devote himself to playing IDIA. She estimated that her brother's current level was somewhere between 10 and 15. Hyun observed these girls going about their daily lives. If the accident had not occurred, she believed she would still be that way. But because of the people she met on IDIA, she was in no way envious. Professor Mina was also given this information by Hyun. She informed her about her brother's IDIA game. She was also told about their wager by this young girl. She was too ecstatic because her brother couldn't possibly win this. Back to Hyunsun now. He has defeated every flimsy mob. The named boss and the mini-boss were the only remaining enemies. He has also organized his abilities and defensive strategies for use against foes. He finally made the decision to open the next door. This is the residence of the vengeful spirit of the orc shaman. Additionally, it called forth more orc warriors to aid in the fight against Hyunsun. The only thing RMC can do is observe this madness. The shaman boosted its henchmen as well, and our main character just sighed. Even though these guys had buffs, Hyunsun already knew how to counterattack them. He just kept slashing his way through the orc horde. The lightning and fire spells could also be cast by the orc shaman. However, this little boss stopped attacking over time. Mana ran out on him. The remaining orc warriors were killed by Hyunsun. The shaman was the only person still alive, and Hyunsun had no trouble killing him. In addition to the levels, this dungeon had loads of loot. Hyunsun opened the next door for the designated boss even though he didn't have much health left. But what he saw had angered him. It merely serves as a tunnel leading to a lower level. With an idea, there was a virtual reality space in the user management room as well. As a result, time passed here more slowly than it did outside. These men have been keeping an eye on Hyunsun for almost 25 hours now. Additionally, the team leader complained about Hyunsun to the superiors, who instructed him to simply let Hyunsun do whatever he wants. This lady was the one who added the god class to the game. She is Minura. The strongest rank class in the game was a god rank class descended from Thinanos. She didn't intend for anyone to actually understand it, she just made it for the plot. And right now, her creation is causing chaos inside the game. According to these lackeys, Hyunsun was just finishing up the secret dungeon. Today, he was also anticipated to advance to level 33. Hyunsun only needed a day, whereas most people need at least a week to get there. He will acquire a new skill to advance in the game at level 30. The real battle will start after that, though. Newcomers have a really difficult time leveling up from 30 to 60. With all the drops and pulls he has made thus far, Hyunsun has been fortunate. But the team captain is powerless to change the situation. Additionally, the ability free of mind was turned on. He didn't realize he could reduce his stress by using this ability. These player groups were engaged in combat with the Cyclops at Para Mountain in the meantime. 
Even the top players are unable to survive in this environment. Only the most powerful players are capable of hunting here, like these two with impeccable coordination. This mage employed the gravity meter ability. Then a huge explosion happened. To save their mage, this blonde girl made the decision to enter. After capturing her, she discovered that the Cyclops had been stunned for five seconds. Then she gave the command to all of her allies to concentrate all of their attacks on the monster. The Cyclops' only option was to scream in agony. And after some time, this group was able to vanquish Aptolikin, the lord of the Cyclops. Along with the treasures, enormous amounts of gold were dropped. Everyone was thanked by their leader for their hard work. They all showed too much modesty in their appreciation of one another's contributions. However, this guy interrupted and said that if Huna had been there, they could have finished this one more quickly. It turns out that these are the guild members of Rin. The subject of Rin's brother joining the guild was also brought up by this mage. There are only seven members of the hero's guild, including Huna. The mage and their guild master both attained legendary rank class. Huna, SDI, and the tank were heroic ranks. The two others belonged to different rank classes. Only the best applicants are accepted by this guild. Additionally, the player must meet their minimal requirement of being at least unique ranked. In addition to Huna's brother, Rin informed the group that her younger sister had achieved a special rank and hoped to be permitted to join the guild. All the guild members agreed that Rin's sister could join if she reached level 100 because they were aware of Rin's strictness. Making an alt is another common practice and idea. Players will be able to level up as a result while the other gathers materials for crafting. As of late, Rin has been using her alt to assist her sister in leveling up more quickly. Rin has made the decision to begin dividing up the items among them after their brief conversation. This is the most enjoyable part of a dungeon raid. They all made the decision to log out after that. And returning to RMC, he was still engaged in killing orcs. However, this time he made it to the actual boss room. Despite numerous warnings, he still chose to proceed. The imposing boss of the hidden dungeon is lying there. Compared to the first ones, this one was enormous and was sleeping. Hyunsung reasoned that he ought to launch an assault on it right away and enter phase 2. However, the monster awoke when it heard Hyunsung's weapon. His roar was so powerful that it made Hyunsung shudder. This is the named boss's power. RMC jumped right into the boss because he couldn't contain his excitement about taking out this monster. Then, though, his vision began to blur. He made an effort to stay awake, but he was unable to do so. The narcolepsy skill has been turned on, so yep. Hyunsung was made to lie down. While engaged in combat, his character dozed off, activating the somnambulism skill. Everyone in the HQ rejoiced upon seeing this notification. The narcolepsy skill was used at an extremely important moment. Some of them believed Hyunsung would be unable to defeat the boss at this time. However, this guy kindly reminded them that the somnambulism skill would enable player-controlled AI to control the character. This man understood it. Thus, Hyunsung will succeed in taking down the boss. But this team leader was aware that something positive was about to occur. The AI controlling Hyunsung's character defeated Karak after a 20-minute battle. The mechanics of the AI were superior to Hyunsung's. So, this one should be simple. The anticipated moment then materialized for the team leader. The character played by Hyunsung returned to sleep after taking down the boss. This man was content because the boss's dropped loot would soon vanish and our main character would not be able to obtain any of it. Hyunsung, meanwhile, was still dissatisfied. He was already aware that the skill would work, but not at such a crucial time. Then Yuan called Hyunsung and introduced himself. Hyunsung was informed by this man, who was also his best friend from middle school, that he has been doing well lately. He now runs his own business. Yuan disclosed that his business is making money off of making videos about idea. Many people hired video editors for Medub due to the volume of players and the demand for advice and information. Hyunsung also disclosed to him his intention to make money with idea after quitting his job. As soon as she had an idea, Yuan questioned Hyunsung about his class. He received a god rank, according to RMC. Yuan drank another shot of Saju in response to this. He was astounded to learn that despite only having played for a few hours, Hyunsung has already attained level 30. With that, Yuan inquired as to Hyunsung's interest in collaborating on video projects. He also explained to Hyunsung how much money could be made by uploading a video to Medub. Hyunsung accepted the offer without even thinking twice. Additionally, Hyunsung demanded that Yuan split the profits in half. But that's not what his best friend wants. Since Hyunsung is the one who provides the videos, the situation ought to be more in his favor. Yuan pretended to agree while Hyunsung continued to insist. When they were younger, Yuan had no friends and was frequently bullied. Hyunsung eventually came up to him and became his friend. With this, Yuan intends to give Hyunsung the entire profit. What a decent man. Hyunsung went home after they were reunited and put a flash drive into his capsule right away. 
he started copying the one with the hidden dungeon in all of his battles. Hyunsung discovered some additional features that he can use when recording some clips. Hyunsung sent Yuan an email that evening with a video demonstrating his concept. When he played the video, he noticed that Hyunsung was hiding his face. Then he went through each clip. They were all amazing, too. The majority of them don't even require editing. Yuan then hurried up to the boss battle. Here is when he realized something was different. Hyunsung's play style had completely changed. This one was more accurate and prevented the opponent from mounting a defense. Phase 2 of the boss began with Black Lightning striking Kirk. Hyunsung then employed the Reaper's Chain talent. The boss of the secret dungeon was eliminated with one last strike. Yuan could only imagine a fierce battle. The following day, Hyunsung noticed that Yuan had inundated him with messages. Yuan admitted to Hyunsung that the video kept him awake all night. The video, in his opinion, was that bad. However, according to Yuan, it was the best video he had ever seen. He assured Hyunsung that there is nothing to be concerned about. Additionally, this editor wants to learn more so he can make the most of the clips Hyunsung sent him. He was questioned about his rank by his sister while he was still with Hyunsung. He did not want to tell his sister just yet though. To be this happy, she reasoned that he should be at least a unique rank. When Hyuna learned that her brother had reached level 30, she was astounded as well. She still finds it hard to believe he advanced that many levels in a single day. When Hyunsung logged in once more, he too received a barrage of notifications. He was eager to see the gear he had won in the boss battle. He made an extra effort to look, but he was unsuccessful. After 40 hours of sleep, Hyunsung's stats have risen once more. But then he noticed the red alerts. This guy understood what transpired. He was unable to find any loot or items, and now they are permanently lost. However, this man moved on. He discovered that if he evenly distributes his stats, he can now use Iris' failed products. He also noticed that he had learned a new skill. This is the Nocturne by Tanano. People who are attacked by Hyunsung will accumulate more nightmares each time. And for each stack his adversaries receive, this skill deals 300% more damage. The fact that it was an attack skill made Hyunsung very happy. His face quickly changed, however, when he realized that a skill book ought to have been left over from the boss battle. Hyunsung then sprinted away from the village. He pursued numerous orcs in the hopes of finding another hidden map. However, he discovered that the passage had also vanished. This guy is completely out of it. The guards, who had intended to get their money back, decided against it. Hyunsung was nonetheless grateful that he survived the boss fight. He chose to use this item as well. When Hyunsung attempted to equip it with his sword, it fused right away. His weapon has been improved by this item. Our MC decided that he should resume hunting in light of everything. Reha is the new town he discovered that is good for leveling up. A teleportation scroll was used by Hyunsung. When Hyunsung first arrived in this town, he was struck by how depressed everyone seemed. To get out of this place, some of them were pleading for teleportation scrolls. He also believed that these people ought to start monster hunting right away rather than begging. He soon discovered that he needs two more members in order to enter a dungeon. The struggle of lone players is this. He had returned to town. Now, our MC was one of those sobbing people who shouts while looking for something. The alternate Rin character was also present in the town of Riha. Additionally, she's looking for a partner because three people are needed to complete any dungeon in Riha. Then he overheard someone calling out for allies. It's Hyunsung, who appears to be a young child who got lost in the middle of a supermarket. Due to his gear, Rin reasoned that he might also be using an alt. Hyunsung hasn't yet changed out of his beginner attire. When Rin saw Hyunsung, she went over to him and said that she was also looking for a party. Hyunsung and Rin both introduced themselves to one another. She also shared with him that her sister would be joining them on their hunt. This girl used the chance to ask Hyunsung if he could spend some time with them. When leveling up, hunting in Riha takes a lot of time. Rin didn't know his level was that low until Hyunsung told her about it. Rin also questioned whether this man could hunt as quickly as them. Because her sister was a speed-based dual blade user, they can hunt very quickly. After that, Rin found another team member and got a message from her sister, they will now meet up. Rin directed her in the general direction of the blacksmith after Hyunsung advised her that he should first purchase a new sword. After saying thank you to her, Hyunsung joyfully ran to the blacksmith. While Rin waited for Hyunsung, he eventually returned. The damage from his new sword, which will be sufficient to defeat level 120 monsters, really pleased Hyunsung. The sword was also buffed by Iris' failed product. When these two arrived, Rin's sister was waiting outside the cafe. She is too young, in Hyunsung's opinion. Younger than Hyunha, perhaps. In his introduction, our MC stated that the girl's name is Hyun. In the dungeon, the three continued to discuss their strategies. Despite their low level, Rin assured Hyunsung that their skills would be more than sufficient. She was told by Hyunsung not to worry because he was also a low level. 
He also believed that they ought to be fairly powerful given her confidence. Following that, Rin invited Hyunsung to the party. He was only at level 35. They assumed that they could simply carry Hyunsung because they never imagined that his level would be this low. However, Rin recalled that Hyunsung's reaction time was about level 80 seconds when he was running toward the blacksmith. She then pondered whether this man might not have needed a legendary rank class in order to possess those kinds of stats. Hyunsung continued to feel uneasy because these two might postpone their celebration. Rin later reassured him that everything would be alright and that they would continue the party with him. Additionally, Hyunsung informed them that he would be filming the journey. He is producing material for Medub. Hyunsung then stowed away and instructed them to begin the hunt. Yoon, however, informed him that they haven't yet talked about their tactics. This man usually just kills his enemies carelessly, so he has no idea that this is a thing. The Lycan's cave was reached by the three. Yoon then instructed Hyunsung to take the lead. She wanted to see how strong Hyunsung was. Hyunsung assumed this to be the case, so he cheerfully replied yes. He also wants to demonstrate his abilities to them. These two seriously undervalue him. And so their dungeon hunt starts. There were alerts stating that because the dungeon had not been cleared in a while, the monsters were all more powerful. However, they will also provide more training. Hyunsung also began filming while donning his mask. He explained that this is just his persona for the video when these two were perplexed. A monster then materialized. It resembles a human-like werewolf. Hyunsung lunges in the same manner as the monster when it attacks. Yoon and Rin were simultaneously shocked and terrified. They believed that Hyunsung would quickly pass away at this pace. But Hyunsung slashed his foe cleanly. This two blonde bees were shocked. His opponent was being outmatched by Hyunsung. Hyunsung then employed his nocturne talent when the monster already had a stack of nightmares with him. When it materialized, black lightning struck the monster. Hyunsung has now successfully killed the werewolf. These two are still in awe of what they witnessed. Even using her main character, Rin is unable to perform what Hyunsung has done. Yoon inquired about the likelihood of such a thing from her older sister. Rin was impressed. She believed that Hyunsung should most definitely be added to their guild. Hyunsung was also delighted that he had finally demonstrated his skills to them. As he continued to lead the way, he hurried to the following lichens. Despite the fact that Hyunsung is a speed type player, Yoon believed that she was moving more quickly than her. Face to face with the lichens, Hyunsung cut his way through them. After inflicting harm and piling nightmare afflictions on them, Hyunsung once more employed his nocturne talent. Hyunsung and Yoon caught up, but the battle was almost over. The heads of the lichens fell to the ground after Hyunsung made one final slash. Yoon has now established that their strengths are different. Rin was having a hard time keeping up with them. When Rin caught up, Hyunsung started to sprint to the next location. These two can do nothing but follow his example. The following victims started to show up in front of Hyunsung. He will use his skills to experiment with his attacks since they were still on cooldown. RNC made an effort to employ various attack trajectories while still having fun. He also witnessed Yoon engaging in her own conflict. Dual blades intrigued Hyunsung so much that he wanted to try them out later. This man appeared to be having a great time. If I get a class that is overpowered, I will enjoy it as well. When the head of the hero guild showed up, the event had already ended. Hyunsung repeated his actions. As soon as Rin caught up with him, he began to run. They now believe Hyunsung was irate. Sunny, their mage, was bored at the hero guild base because all of her guildmates were out. But when she noticed someone entering, she became excited. She is Hyuna. Sunny welcomes her back right away. These two got to talking. Hyuna informed her about her brother's decision to play the idea of finally leaving his job. She was eager to allow his brother to join the guild as well. Hyunsung must first level up though. She revealed to Sunny that it only took her brother one day to level up to level 30. Although Sunny was in awe, she believed that it was not possible unless the person had irrational abilities. They reasoned that they could ask Rin about this thing since she was interacting with her alt. When they called Rin, they learned that she was in dire need. Rin said she would simply call them back later. These two decided to go hunting together since Rin was preoccupied. These two blonde slaves were still on the move. They misjudged Hyunsung, which led them to believe he was upset. Hyunsung's recruitment by Rin was probably out of the question. Hyunsung then discovered eleven lichens. This person desires to murder them all by himself. Our MC began by hurling his dagger. Then he used his magic bullets to follow it up. Hyunsung ignored those who were wounded by bullets and then launched an assault on the survivors. He only needs to lightly graze them before stacking a nightmare on top of them. The lichens were all still stunned when he used his nocturne skill. Hyunsung once more killed 11 lichens with a full swing attack. This guy, however, was irate because he had been killing a lot of them but had only advanced in level once. When Hyunsung saw Rin and Yun, he believed he had gone too far. He inquired as to whether they ought to take a break before continuing. They collapsed to the ground, feeling relieved. Whether they were ugly or not was irrelevant to them. Hyunsung continued to move around and train with his sword as they were sleeping. 
Due to guilt, these two decided to avoid giving Hyunsung any attention. This man experimented with various things. Due to the stress his body has been under, it even caused a decrease in his HP. These two informed Hyunsung that they were done sleeping, despite the fact that they still appeared to be zombies. This guy was being misunderstood in a big way. Hyunsung slowed his pace so that these two could keep up with him, but he continued to work on his sword swing even as they ran. They genuinely believed that Hyunsung was punishing these two. Hyunsung's party has finally encountered an elite monster after much running. The elite will be handled by Hyunsung, and the rest will be up to them, he told the group. Even if they had only been running the entire time, their exhaustion had reached its peak. However, they were unable to let Hyunsung handle the task, so they got ready instead. Hyunsung began his assaults. The elite monster was stabbed before he fired his magic bullets. Additionally, he threw his dagger once more, but the monster managed to dodge it. However, this is only a diversion. After that, Hyunsung was able to score a hit. The elite lichen were enraged by this more. However, the nocturne skill ended it due to the number of stacks this one received. After finishing, Hyunsung used his free time to watch Yoon and Rin engage in combat. These two were very powerful. These two were really worn out after eliminating the last few lichens. This time, they would really want to take a proper break. Hyunsung chose to relax as well and sat down. Then, though, Hyunsung's preferred notification appeared. The narcolepsy talent became active. His vision started to become foggy once more. The somnambulism skill was activated as it went black. Once more, the skill has a way of turning on at just the right time. The two also observed Hyunsung drifting off to sleep. After non-stop hunting, Rin assumed that this was just the way things were. But when Hyunsung stood up, they were startled. Hyunsung's quest will be finished when the somnambulism skill is used. Hyunsung only took a 30-second break before starting to run once more. Now I feel sorry for these two. Yoon and Rin were still having a hard time keeping up with Hyunsung. They encountered things that were on the ground. Due to the urgency, these two decided to simply pick them up for Hyunsung. Yoon and Rin were exhausted after 25 hours of hunting. They are now in desperate need of a nap. Yoon was still leveling up, so Hyunsung must have been still dispatching monsters even as they were speaking. Yoon then pointed out something to her sister after seeing it. In front of the boss room was Hyunsung. The speed was actually unattainable. It usually took parties two to three real-time days to arrive at the conclusion, but it only took them one. They noticed a problem as they got closer to Hyunsung. The boss room was just opened by this person. They both made an effort to stop Hyunsung, but it was too late. Before they can log out, they must now clean out the boss room. The actual Hyunsung is still unaware of what is going on. He believed that Rin and Yoon would simply ignore him while his character slept. He keeps looking for a place to hunt by himself. He'll depart from Rin and pick a different hunting location. Yoon also gave him a call. He inquired as to Hyunsung's general well-being. He informed Hyunsung that while watching the video he had sent him, he had noticed something. When Hyunsung was facing off against the boss Karak, his play style abruptly changed. Then Hyunsung revealed that one of his skills allows an AI to take his place in battle. They therefore had very different skills. This, in Yuan's opinion, was simply too awesome. Hyunsung, he claimed, was like Jekyll and Hyde. Additionally, in order to get Hyunsung's approval, Yuan sent him the edited video. RMC watched the video after receiving the email. He finds it hard to believe that this was his persona. Hyunsung considered using the video as a source of information as he watched it. When the AI took control, Yuan also altered the color of his mask. Just from watching his own video, Hyunsung picked up more strategies. On to their celebration. The main monster is this one. This is much larger and more powerful than the crowds outside. It moved swiftly as well, but Hyunsung was able to stop it. This monster was simply too powerful. Hyunsung was knocked out. Yoon and Rin made an effort to get ready, but they were aware of their vulnerability. But the boss was hit by five magic bullets. The boss was furious at this point and hastened to Hyunsung's location. However, he was able to avoid the blow and launch a successful counterattack. This boss monster has been a toy for this AI. There are already many nightmare stacks above this boss. Hyunsung then employed the Nocturne talent. For 10 seconds, the boss felt dizzy as a result. The AI attacked him right away, wasting no time. The nightmares were activated as well, giving this boss pain and hallucinations. Before the debuff wears off, Hyunsung was also able to attack the target. The Lycan then awoke and began his counterattack. He is now concerned with Hyunsung's nocturne talent. The boss was hit again by five bullets. He consequently assumed that the Black Lightning would be the next victim. But nothing showed up. Now, all the AI was doing was simple attacks. The boss's attention was now on dodging Hyunsung's sword. Hyunsung then reactivated his nocturne talent. Because the boss wasn't expecting it, the skill scored a critical hit. The boss, Service, collapsed once more and bent over. He believed he was completely outmatched by this man. The boss then let out a yell. Yoon and Rin both understood what this meant. 
The boss's second phase will now begin. It's much more powerful now. Because of the humiliating battle he had with Hyunsung, service eyes were filled with rage. He slashed Hyunsung with his faster speed, but it was again dodged. These two kept watching Hyunsung and his amazing control. Out and see launched his retaliation. He struck service with his sword acting as a lance. Hyunsung simply puts a gap between them to get away from service whenever the big bad wolf tries to attack. Hyunsung employed his magic wands. Service felt anxious as soon as this hit him. This was the bluff Hyunsung used on the monster. It continues to wait and get ready for the black lightning to strike. But nothing took place. Service speculated that the ability might be on cooldown. Rin is aware of every development in the conflict. Hyunsung was manipulating service feelings. He frequently makes use of the threat that the Black Lightning has imagined. Service attempted to run away from Hyunsung, believing that she was faster than he was. Then Hyunsung abruptly came to a stop. Sabbath of the Dead was employed by him. This talent served as a kind of proclamation that service will now perish. He was stunned, and for a minute, it seemed to lose its soul. It will take twice as much damage for the next minute. RMC used his Reaper's Chain, which sliced through service body cleanly. Then a black lightning came after it. This poor werewolf had no chance at all. Once service was vanquished, it was determined that the dungeon had been cleared. In the DPN, Hyunsung gained a lot of knowledge. Additionally, their party got twice as much loot, and the best items had already been dropped. Yoon also gained a level. Additionally, a special notification appeared. When Hyunsung reached level 50, a special quest became available. After his battle, Hyunsung went back to sleep. These two simply regarded Hyunsung's peculiar actions. They decided that they should simply watch over his belongings while he was sleeping. They considered lodging for Hyunsung as well, but decided against it. This man was actually dozing off deeply. Hyunsung has attained level 53, the team leader learned upon returning to the Inferno's headquarters. He took out his phone and began to enter some numbers. This man informed those in charge of Hyunsung's level. The higher-ups instructed the team leader to start keeping an eye on an emperor and PC by the name of Iron-Blooded Monarch because of the exclusive quest that had been unlocked. He added that Hyunsung was currently suffering from narcolepsy and would awaken in seven real-time hours. A massive castle spawned at Venya, a city in the Iron-Blooded Monarch's empire, as a result of Hyunsung's exclusive quest. Venya was a city surrounded by water that took its design cues from Venice. One of the most lovely ideas from a citizen perspective. Because they were aware that this NPC might attempt to send some survey corps and sabotage the quest, the higher-ups started to become wary. The team leader, on the other hand, believes that Hyunsung was the actual issue here. As soon as Hyunsung's character is awake, he needs to start the game because it will be disastrous if the Emperor finds the castle first. At the time, Dornum was the mayor of Venya. The mayor would probably only send some NPC troops to check the castle, so the leader felt a little relieved. However, if the emperor visits the castle himself to inspect it, he will undoubtedly startle the creature. The snake wyvern Aquiler is shown here. The disciple of Thanana long ago sealed this monster. Even the most skilled players in Idea won't be able to defeat this thing if it awakens right away. The team leader got the chills just imagining the worst case scenario for this. Then he came to a memory. This mysterious woman should also get the quest now that Hyunsung has unlocked it. This player has a legendary rank and a class that is connected to Thanano's. They each had a different main quest, but they were both tasked with keeping Aquilar from waking up. The leader was currently hoping and praying that these two would cooperate peacefully in their mission. This man was shaking in front of the emperor at the iron-blooded monarch's castle at the same time. He is too afraid to speak because if he uses the wrong words, he could die right away. He said that on Venya's eastern side, a strange building had appeared. The emperor, however, is uninterested in this. According to this man, he will only inform Venya's mayor of the incident. He was then fired by the emperor after that. They were all enjoying themselves at the HQ. The emperor was still perplexed as to why all of his servants were so terrified of him. For the glory of his empire and to bring victories to his people, he showed no mercy to his foes while he was still in his prime. But for the time being, he's just feared by everyone, and he became utterly bored by this. He reasoned that for fun, he should try sneaking up to and leaving his throne. However, this will endanger the entire empire. Additionally, he doesn't get the thrill he seeks from the level 100 monsters. Then he had a really intriguing thought. A contest for power will be held by the emperor. This contest will be open to all travelers, and the grand prize will be a wish. The winner's wish will be granted by this emperor. The empire's fighting tournament was then announced, and any player on the Korean server can participate if they so choose. This significant event was produced by a single, strong NPC in the game. When we return to Hyun Sung, he becomes bored while merely watching his battle with Karak. Then he considered doing something while using his narcolepsy skill. He decided to enroll in a kendo class after doing some research online. Similar workshops and exercise facilities have begun to teach people how to sharpen their conceptual skills. 
This, in Haiyan Sung's opinion, would actually aid in his development as a warrior. After some time, RMC signed up for a gym and is now looking for a kendo dojo. He visited this location and discovered this rundown dojo. This elderly man let himself in. Immediately, Haiyan Sung took note of the elderly man's muscles. They were all extremely well equipped for combat. He then made himself known and declared his desire to study martial arts. Haiyan Sung was complimented by the elderly man for his keen observational abilities and was then invited inside. The ideal equipment was located inside this dojo, up to those lethal real ones, from blunt weapons. They couldn't freely swing the weapons because the ceiling was too high. The old man asked Haiyan Sung to remove his clothes as soon as he saw that he had finished looking around. They should now get going and evaluate each other's skills, the old man said. Haiyan Sung then got ready and picked up a sword for himself. He tries to get comfortable with his sword and warm up. The elderly man took note of his actions and abilities. He immediately recognized Haiyan Sung's genuine talent for martial arts. Haiyan Sung immediately lunged forward to strike when he was prepared. While keeping his distance, the old man attacked RMC with his spear. But Haiyan Sung merely deflected it. Clearly impressed, the elderly man said. After an assault like that, beginners frequently drop their weapon. Haiyan Sung has persisted in his attack attempt and hasn't given up. He was then struck on the knee, which caused him to lose balance. The elderly man sees this chance to strike. By shifting his weight, Haiyan Sung was able to keep his body from collapsing. He counterattacked and drew his sword simultaneously. Haiyan Sung rose. His lack of endurance was his main issue. He is already out of breath even though they have only just begun. The elderly man believed he had at last discovered a pupil worthy of instruction. After the two had finished their practice match, the elderly man began questioning Haiyan Sung. Haiyan Sung informed him of his plan to play and his desire to sharpen his sword play. He also discussed his aggressive demeanor with the elderly man. Additionally, RMC is curious about the play style of the AI. He also wants to gain the ability to use his left hand for another weapon. The elderly man displayed a fighting stance to Haiyan Sung while holding a dagger in his left hand. He also outlined the benefits and possible attack strategies for Haiyan Sung with this particular dagger. He could also throw the dagger at his adversaries and attack from a distance. Haiyan Sung was incredibly impressed and thought this look fit him well. Then he told the elder to begin their training right away. Back to the original thought. Because Rin was tenaciously battling the same wolves Haiyan Sung had previously killed, Rin was taking a breather. But she's utilizing her primary account this time. She was easily able to defeat them, though not as quickly as Haiyan Sung. If she ever meets Haiyan Sung again, she wonders. She really wants to get him on board. Prior to, these two were made to serve as walking loot containers for Haiyan Sung. Even though they waited for a few hours, Yoon was less patient than her sister. She made an effort to wake Haiyan Sung up. A notification then materialized. Due to his extended period of sleep, Haiyan Sung will be required to log out. Upon login, he will also be taken to the closest city. Then his persona disappeared. Yoon received everything in the end because he knew they would probably cross paths again due to their relative levels. Rin must track down Haiyan Sung as soon as she can. She is also anticipating Haiyan Sung's YouTube video upload. But Rin was determined to get stronger while she waited for this chance. She takes pride in her strength and is the guild leader. She is with these two as well, and she is imitating Haiyan Sung's quick clearing strategies. Hyuna and Sunny were having a hard time keeping up with her. They are now curious as to why their guild leader acted in such a manner. Haiyan Sung rested from his training, his body stiff. He then uses his computer to check on some recent game developments. He learned about the enigmatic castle that had appeared in Venya from the news. The Savori troops have also been organized for it by the mayor, and more players are being brought in to help. The Venya Haiyan Sung recognized, because many players were hunting in this area, he excluded this city. He found this boring and simply returned to the gym to resume his workout. He was obviously beaten to a pulp by the time his session with the old man was over. But because his movements were now more precise, our masochist MCU was happy. He really wants to get better. He then signed into the game. Haiyan Sun was born in the village of Rehav. His stats have risen once more as usual despite his extended period of sleep. Then he saw this man dressed as a frog. This player trades goods both ways. Since he had some items that he didn't need, Haiyan Sun approached him. For 32,450 gold, this frog trader purchased all of his goods. In comparison to when he sells his goods to NPC stores, the price was doubled. Then Haiyan Sung goes through each message he received. Then he noticed the most crucial one. Once he reaches level 50, it becomes his sole quest. Haiyan Sung became animated. He had heard about these special quests from the top players, but this one is only available to god-ranked classes. When he opened the window, the necessary information was displayed. About the only disciple Thananos had ever had, the quest was, Haiyan Sung must locate the disciple and search for the tasks Thananos had assigned to it. A mysterious castle that appeared in Venya served as the first hint. 
To keep his master's secret safe, the disciple is said to have imprisoned an old, evil dragon inside. The remaining assignments remained locked. When Hai and Sung reaches the levels necessary for these quests, they will gradually start to appear. Hai and Sung will receive a god relic and a god authority skill for each trace he discovers. However, if someone discovers the trace next to him, he will fail every quest. Our MC thought back to the article he read about Venya. He will revert to level 1 if he fails one quest. A quest with a high reward, risk ratio. He tries to object, but he is powerless to stop it. He believed that the rewards were also not bad. His life will undoubtedly be made easier by a god's relic and a god's authority skill. Hyun Sung's face changed when he realized this. He immediately took off and ran to Venya. After being teleported to Venya, Hyun Sung immediately observed its distinction from Rahab. There were a lot of top tier players here, and they also had quality gear. Our MC, who is extremely strong, is only seen dressed in beginner level attire. Because of this, he is considered a weirdo in this city. To avoid drawing more attention, he made the decision to purchase a basic armor. And he received this, an absurd jacket. This man regrets having purchased a common great armor with all the gold he has been receiving. He then dashed off in a hurry to the castle. It took three game days to ride a horse there because it was quite a distance away. He must therefore begin running right away to avoid the survey troops arriving before him. Dornum was asking this man if everything was going as planned at the mayor's private residence. This guy said yes. Rianer is the head of a guild of superhumans. This player is succeeding because he understands how to win over this NPC. He only continues to do this because the rewards were so great. His pride means absolutely nothing to him. He will exert every effort to win Dornum's favor. He was also given this badge by the mayor of Veni. He will now have complete authority to command and guide all the survey troops on their mission. Because he intends to succeed Dornum as mayor of Veni when Dornum becomes a noble, this man sought to have many contributions for this quest. This guild of superhumans had a reputation for being notorious con artists. He was preparing something. The application line for the soldiers was forming in Veni's East Plaza. For their applications, this was given. Players can access the quest by simply registering. In order to complete this quest, the mayor of Veni hired players because doing so was much less expensive than using the empire's resources. This man was becoming disinterested in his work of player recruitment. But then he noticed someone and they both blushed. He noticed this woman. In theory, players could only alter 10% of their actual features. He believed that this woman was undoubtedly equally stunning in person. This time, he also requested her name in addition to the player's level, which is his customary request. Despite being visibly agitated, the woman still gave her name, Han Si Hwa. She is a level 110 magician as well. This man made advances toward her, but Si Hwa was irritated by it. She must visit the castle immediately. She felt good about how well she handled this one. The following player was then asked to step forward. Hyun Sung is there, and he's got on his mask. Then he revealed his level to the man. The way Hyun Sung responded in an informal manner irritated this man. Because he did not respect Hyun Sung, he considered harming him. Hyun Sung, who had just run for 30 minutes without a map, was back in the city in the meantime. He lost a great deal of time. The team leader followed his journey intently. Si Hwa and Hyun Sung were clearly within reach, and this man was quite annoyed that they hadn't even interacted. He is grateful that they have both arrived at Venya in order to complete their mission, though, at the same time. However, there is one issue. They both have different quest objectives, so if they cross paths at the wrong time, they might even turn into adversaries rather than form a team. The team leader made an effort to review each member's personal quest. Siwa's mission was to prevent the Wyvern Aquila's resurrection, while Hyun Sung's was to track down signs of the disciple. He offers another prayer for everything to work out as it should. The survey corps has set out for the castle in front of Venya. Hyun Sung mistakenly believed that a thousand people had been invited, but only a few hundred people actually showed up when the quest began. Because the superhuman guild was also involved, he is now concerned about this. Once they get to the castle, RMC intends to abandon this and complete the quest by himself. Hyun Sung felt uneasy as this man continued to look at him. He recalled that he might have had a casual conversation with this man. He planned to do something as soon as they took a break because he believed Hyun Sung was looking down on him. Then Rianer got in touch with him. He was informed that they would attempt to stall their convoy before skulking off to the castle. These guys intend to complete the quest independently and collect all the rewards. Adol was the name of the man who was still fixating on Hyun Sung. Hyun Sung will take action as well because he was aware that Adol was making poor plans. Rianer gave the order that they should rest for 3 hours in real time before continuing on their mission. This would take 15 in-game hours, which is too much time. Other players were prompted by this to simply log off and return when they were ready. Hyun Sung decided that this was the ideal opportunity to entice Adol while they waited. Adol observed this as RMC went into the forest. 
He followed Haiyan Sung in the woods covertly. With his weapon in hand, he ran toward Haiyan Sung and prepared to strike. While running, Adol heard the sound of chains, but Haiyan Sung's hand contains no chains. Following this realization, chains struck Adol all over his body. Haiyan Sung was perplexed by what was happening as well. The chains were the Reaper's chains, which he recognized, but there was something unique about them. Adol sustained actual damage, and for 10 seconds he was held defenseless. Adol passed away after that, and he won't be able to log in for a day. Haiyan Sung then overheard someone. This is CHWA. As she was holding this enormous Reaper weapon, she asked Haiyan Sung if he was okay. RMC is still in disbelief over what just transpired. He was just fixated on his stunning face. I'll give you guys some time so you can follow suit. Aha, uh -huh. Haiyan Sung believed that her class ought to be connected to Thinanos as well. After all, she employed a legendary ability that was unique to their class. In Haiyan Sung's opinion, this woman was at the very least legendary. CHWA advised Haiyan Sung to find a secure location for the time being. But Haiyan Sung rejected this offer. She is not required to assist him, he claimed. It's verified. RMC wasn't a slackhead. He made an effort to avoid CHWA because he is still unsure of whether she is a friend or foe. This confused CHWA. Why did she feel lost? She wonders. She has never been turned down before. The team leader at the Korean HQ was furious because now would be the ideal time to form an alliance. He did, however, quickly grasp Haiyan Sung's viewpoint. They are wary of one another because they each have different goals. He had a gut feeling that something sinister was about to occur. Someone at the Survey Corps camp announced that they would be leaving right away. Since they informed them that there were still three hours left in real life, the majority of the players have not yet arrived. Although the players were aware of the Superhuman Guild's nature, they were still irritated by it. RMC made an effort to observe some of the Superhuman Guild members. He questions whether Adol informed his guildmates of his passing already. And sure enough, he did. He told them about the player wearing a mask when he called Rianer in person. He also mentioned that Haiyan Sung was helped by another person. Rianer logged in right away and told his guild who the player was who killed Adol. They then started to get ready and formed some groups. Rianer noticed the player wearing a mask as well, but he made an effort to hide it. He is now concentrating on Haiyan Sung. This window contains information about C.H. Wa's quest. She's looking for additional hints. She was aggravated by how ambiguous her quest was. She must, however, stop the people from entering the castle, that much is certain. CHWA picked up on something, too. The guildmaster kept an eye on Haiyan Sung. She believed that because she killed Adol, Haiyan Sung was now in even worse trouble. CHWA came to the conclusion that in light of Haiyan Sung's acceptance of responsibility, she must now defend him. This woman also developed an obsession with getting Haiyan Sung to notice her. The Survey Corps has chosen to set up camp once more after 35 hours of walking. In reality, Haiyan Sung was also considering taking a break for about two hours, but he will take care of this group first. Since they set out on their journey, they had been keeping an eye on him. Haiyan Sung returned to the forest to lure these thugs. They proceeded to follow Haiyan Sung as expected. Our MC observed that these men were having trouble keeping up with him. He therefore purposefully slowed down, and these guys eventually caught up with him. Haiyan Sung learned that they were looking for his ally as well. This guy overlooked the fact that Adol could quickly alert his guildmates in the real world by using messaging apps. The Guild of Superhumans then confronted him. They inquired about his ally, and our MC was giddy with anticipation. They'll serve as his test subjects for his abilities. Before they could even respond, Haiyan Sung launched an attack. He grazed the man in front of him, and the nightmare skill took effect on him. He then goes to get the others. They were all hacked. Haiyan Sung was experimenting with using the dagger to stab them, and he's beginning to adjust to this new mannerism. Then this guy ordered his fellow guild members to attack Haiyan Sung simultaneously. Haiyan Sung was aware that he belonged to the stealth class and that his weapons contained poison. Haiyan Sung dodged his blow and fired some magic arrows. Then, with another cut, this one passed away. Haiyan Sung realized that by killing these thugs, he could also earn some DP. He now has a motivation to occasionally hunt down bad players. Their conflict rages on. And as usual, Haiyan Sung avoided all of their blows by using his incredibly quick reflexes. He played with them as well. Haiyan Sung was also able to attack this range class magician with the dagger. They were all obviously no match for Haiyan Sung. They resembled his test subjects exactly. Using his dagger, this man was also able to split an approaching arrow in half before killing the remaining arrows. He waved goodbye while grinning. He was given a new set of DPs. The battle was won at this point. These players gave some DP and items to Haiyan Sung. Additionally, he ended his recording session. The content for this guy's channel was free.
he picked up a few things, including one that was crucial. The location of the castle was marked on a map of Venya that was dropped by one of the thugs. Another map was also on the ground, and Hyun Sung thought he had struck it lucky this time. Since he can now travel there alone, he quickly abandoned the quest he received for joining the Survey Corps. Finally, Hyun Sung logged off. Han CHWA was observing Hyun Sung's conflict at the time. She learned that he is strong enough to defeat these punks. She thought back to the time she had saved him and decided he had lured Adol into the forest on purpose. He was seen by CHWA as he took the map. She is now unsure of Hyun Sung's true motives. She made the same decision to log out as Hyun Sung. After some time, our MC returned and started heading in the direction of the castle. He uses his abilities to swiftly clear his path and eliminate errant monsters in his path. He's happy that he's moving in the right direction at last. Then he heard someone say wow in a voice. After turning around and not finding anything, he continued on his course. I'm Han CHWA. She followed Hyun Sung and was awestruck by his abilities. Hyun Sung just defeated some powerful monsters, but he got rid of them in a matter of seconds. This woman understood that Hyun Sung should be at least legendary in his class. CHWA is in awe of RMC's entire behavior. If she decided to found a guild, she even considered hiring Hyun Sung to join it. Oh no, someone is really struggling. This lady is now paying close attention to our MC. In her opinion, Hyun Sung still looks cool despite his funny dodges. The group that Hyun Sung killed has informed Reiner of the incident in the interim. This man is not going to give up. To give them a better chance of being the first to arrive, he will bring a separate group made up solely of fast guys. Hyun Sung and his ally will be held accountable by Reiner for their interference with his guild. But for the time being, this man rested. Running day and night is what Hyun Sung has been doing. He has been performing this for the past 1.5 days. He observed some loot drops on the way. This indicates that someone was in front of him. Hyun Sung paused to consider his predicament. These guys, who numbered between 5 and 10, were at least as quick as him. But he really didn't care because he knows he can still defeat these men. Due to his personal quest, the karma points were also not accruing, which means that by killing them, he could receive more DP. Hyun Sung eventually came across their camp. Five of them appeared to be much more powerful than the first ones. This man has the appearance of a ferocious beast poised to attack its prey. These guys were starting to nod off. They talked about this man in a mask to keep themselves awake. Then they perceived a song coming from a distance as an ambush. This is the siren song of Hyun Sung. Their body also began to move independently, and they now had a direction. In front of them, Hyun Sung materialized. They all took a hit as soon as they noticed his mask, suffering serious injuries. They experienced hallucinations and the nightmare skill was activated as well. After that, Hyun Sung employed his magic wands. He made an effort to coerce himself into attacking Hyun Sung. It's too late, though. They were all piled on top of one another. They were then struck by the black lightning and instantly passed away. The only man who survived the assault is this one. However, Hyun Sung had already approached him and cut off his head. In exchange for killing a player 100 levels superior to him, Hyun Sung received a new title. His stats received an additional 20 points each as a result. This is the illustrious title he was given. Just numbers make up levels. As a result, our MC's attacks against opponents who have higher level monsters or players were 20% more effective. It increased his experience gain by 30% as well. Hyun Sung then noticed Reiner's team had also arrived. Because he believed that his subordinates were still absent, Reiner was furious. Hyun Sung fired his magic bullets at them as a greeting, and they were all struck. This resulted in the notification for beginning a fight with another player. Additionally, they won't be able to log out of the game because of this proactive attack. Hyun Sung played tricks on his prey. He attacked them once more as soon as the battle mode was turned off. They don't know where this player is, which has irked Reiner. This went on for 10 effing minutes, which only made this man angrier. Hyun Sung then materialized in front of them. He was about to be attacked by the group. But you guys already know what's going to happen when you see these black orbs above their heads. When Fanano's Nocturne was activated, the black lightning struck these men. These victims passed away so quickly. With this, Hyun Sung is free to pursue his mission. CHWA was the only challenge he faced with this mission. He's still unsure of whether or not she is an ally. Hyun Sung decided to log out and worry about things later. Hyun was not in the best of shape as she ate with her brother in the meantime. She clarified that their guild master was to blame for this. Rin altered her hunting technique, and now she moves more quickly than they do. This girl is completely unaware of how Hyun Sung influenced her guild master. Simply put, Hyun Sung was happy that his sister liked the idea because her guildmate seemed like a nice person. Her brother observed that there aren't many members in Hyun's guild. She continued by pointing out that each guild had a distinct mission. And because of that, they were still able to perform their duties. She continued by saying that her guild stood out from others because everyone in them genuinely enjoyed playing the game. 
Haiyan then asked her brother if he would be interested in joining her guild after all of this sales talk. Haiyan Sung turned down the proposal. He explained to her that since he was still new, it would not be ideal for him to join right away. The reputation of her sister is important to this guy. Haiyan Sung made the decision to go work out because he had nothing else to do. But just before leaving, he thought back to the videos he had taken. And his battle with the first party was the only one that was helpful, particularly because it contained this awesome video of him splitting an arrow in half. Then, Haiyan Sung forwarded Yilin this clip. Haiyan Sung was occupied on a treadmill at the gym. Then he noticed a news report about Idea being broadcast. They were discussing the superhuman guild's ruse to deceive Venya's neighbors. Rian Er and his guild, it seemed, were nowhere to be found. We all understand that it was due to Haiyan Sung, of course. These guys can't log in anymore because he killed them. The public is furious as a result of this news. The superhuman guild is currently facing consequences for influencing and directing an event. Haiyan Sung thought about CHWA and realized that he is still worried about her. No matter what happens, he reasoned, he must get to the castle first. Yu Lin, on the other hand, had already started watching the videos Haiyan Sung had sent him. Haiyan Sung's new, more fluid movements caught his attention, and he assumed that his best friend had already adjusted to the eye's motions. His staff members also watched the clips and were equally as impressed by Haiyan Sung's abilities. Haiyan Sung was also hard at work in the dojo practicing. The elderly man began to feel threatened by this man's development. His endurance has also significantly improved. He believed Haiyan Sung to be a monster. The elderly man made the decision to take their sparring more seriously. But as they trade blows, he senses Haiyan Sung is outclassing him. This elderly man made the decision to end their meeting today. He noticed the hand of Haiyan Sung. Even though it was already bleeding, the man thought it was amusing. You masochist. Haiyan Sung informed the elderly man that he would return the following day after bandaging his wounds. This old man avoided their training by using Haiyan Sung's cut as his justification. He instructed him to go rest first. RMC will return tomorrow because he believes that this is the ideal time to turn them into calluses. This elderly man probably regrets choosing to teach Haiyan Sung. After that, Haiyan Sung, his sister, and their caretaker enjoyed some barbecuing. He also requested a YouTube channel from them. Belhun was starting a channel and he needed help coming up with a name, he told them. They were informed by Haiyan Sung about the film's dual identity theme. The character has two distinctive personalities. This Ajima then proposed the name Asura. She discussed the half-male, half-female character Asura with Haiyan Sung. Asura is a three-faced god who is also present. The idea was well received by the siblings and Haiyan Sung has chosen to use it as his nickname. He quickly logged into the game after their meal because he had a lot to get done today. Haiyan Sung made the decision to begin slowly and stretch first. While doing this, he looked at the map as well. But someone intervened to stop him. Han CHWA is the one informing Haiyan Sung that he must stop now. These woman's words carry a lot more weight right now. He is resolute. CHWA was already observing Haiyan Sung as he was busy killing Reiner's subordinates. She was also present when Reiner was killed by Haiyan Sung. It turns out that she had already logged in before Haiyan Sung, and she had been waiting for him ever since. She went to a tree and made the decision to stay there overnight until Haiyan Sung showed up. This girl has been waiting on her crush far too patiently. This is how she appears right now, two and a half days later. She didn't even stop to think before she went up to Haiyan Sung. Angry, she yelled at Haiyan Sung. CHWA continued to be agitated, which caused Haiyan Sung to feel a little uneasy. However, he believed that this woman was not a member of Reiner's team. These two were having the same thought at the same time. They are unable to simply reveal their mission to one another. While continuing to keep an eye on them, the team leader became extremely irritated. CHWA was questioned by Haiyan Sung about her comments about him not going to the castle. She made the decision to be open and honest. She replied that she was asked to stop people from entering the castle because she was in the middle of a quest. CHWA only partially disclosed her mission. Even so, it's not a lie. Haiyan Sung made the decision to gamble because, like her, he had a mission. She heard about the Wyvern Aquila from RMC. CH Hwa's response to this was this. This was insufficient, so Haiyan Sung added Thananos, the god of death. Since they both possess the skill Reaper's Chain, Haiyan Sung informed her that their missions might be connected. CHWA was astounded by this information as well. She had no idea that someone could also possess Reaper's Chain. This woman gambled and questioned whether she could trust Haiyan Sung, but she questioned whether Haiyan Sung had copying talent. Our MC informed her that he shares a legendary rank with Thananos. CHWA was aware that Thananos was the most powerful god in idea and that he might also have two legendary classes below him. Haiyan Sung showed her his map in an effort to win her trust. Because he anticipated that the woman would attempt to steal it from him, he had already memorized this. He also made the offer to CHWA. He is now waiting to see how everything turned out. CHWA acknowledged that she had been watching him the entire time. 
from killing one group to killing Rhaenyra, everything in between. She has made a decision at this point. She will have faith in Hyun Sung. Then she said sorry for following him. Finally, these two discussed how their quest related to one another. CHWA has made her goal clear in full. She informed Hyun Sung that she must prevent the Wyvern's rebirth. She complains to Hyun Sung about how ambiguous her quest was. In contrast, that was how Hyun Sung's quest was described. Although it is detailed, Hyun Sung got the impression that her quest was different from his, and he is now wondering why. Han CHWA persisted in complaining about the Death God. Additionally, she received abilities that were too powerful for her. Hyun Sung could relate to her whining and came to the conclusion that she was telling the truth. They were both extremely frustrated. CHWA overheard Hyun Sung start to rant as well. This led them to the realization that they actually have a lot in common. Han CHWA not being an enemy also made Hyun Sung feel relieved. She is simply naive. Yet RMC made the decision to hold back some information from her. In particular, their rank. She is now Hyun Sung's direct subordinate as a result. Hyun Sung remembered to introduce himself while she was still grumbling. They neglected to exchange names because they were too preoccupied with their rants. Hyun Sung responded that his mask is just his persona when CHWA questioned him about it. CHWA thought Hyun Sung was handsome even with his mask on. Then, though, he took off his mask. CHWA Han was perplexed. She believed Hyun Sung to be very attractive and to possess excellent skills. This woman was really into it always the reserved ones. Following that, these two made the decision to run toward the castle. CHWA continues to be infatuated with Hyun Sung. As they run, she continues to admire him. She was aware that Hyun Sung would become a successful YouTuber. Since this was the first time anyone had been able to match his speed, Hyun Sung was equally as surprised. Hyun Sung was too competitive and was determined to win. But he's obviously having trouble. CHWA was only considering a justification for why she should send him a friend request at the time. She gathered up the courage to tell Hyun Sung that they had shown each other. She assured him that it served no other purpose than to complete this mission. Hyun Sung sent the request because he thought it was odd that she was saying so many things. And with that, Ch Hwa's mission was a success. This is a picture of the enigmatic castle. These guys have been running for 25 hours, but Hyun Sung didn't appear to be exhausted. Hyun Sung's tenacity and strength touch CHWA. She desires to gain strength. They arrived at the castle's entrance, but a shield is there to keep them out. CHWA was stopped just as they were about to enter. She is informed that while the test is ongoing, she cannot enter the castle. While Hai and Sung also received some messages, they differed from those sent to CHWA. Only he could enter the castle and he must succeed in a test. He risks the wyvern's resurrection if he fails. She was informed of the requirements by Hai and Sung. CHWA believed that Hai and Sung was responsible for this castle's appearance. Then she advised Hai and Sung to simply go do his best while she looked after the castle. Hai and Sung agreed before abruptly firing. Outside the castle, the pressure changed. Because Hai and Sung didn't even say goodbye, she is furious. Zone declaration, CH Hwa's skill, was put into action. The area was filled with a foreboding aura. She stood in the middle of the entrance to the castle. When CHWA used her Saint Us ability, her appearance changed. She now appears more qualified to be Thanano's student. There was no way I wanted to mess with this woman. She resembles Hai and Sung in female form and is qualified to be a saintess who wields the Reaper. Reaper Summon was another technique CHWA employed. This is some sort of soul-leveling shit. These mysterious fighters were just called by this lady. She gave them orders to protect the castle and slay any intruders. Using this skill still gave CHWA goosebumps. She hasn't yet grown accustomed to its aura. All she wants is for Hai and Sung to succeed in the exam. Our MC was in front of the wyvern during this time. Its height exceeds 100 meters. Hyun Sung experienced some shaking. A notification was displayed. The wyvern equilier was found sealed by Hyun Sung. Hyun Sung's stats all received a plus 5 as a result of this achievement. A chair and a desk then materialized in front of him. The test's first component is this. The next test will get harder every time Hyun Sung chooses the incorrect response. This is actually the first question on a test. Full name of Thinano. While taking the test, our MC's face is beaming. However, threw his pen and made the decision to remain silent. This man has no knowledge of his god. It continued for 10 minutes before coming to an end, reminding Hai and Sung of the repercussions of his actions. This man ignored the quest descriptions because he was too preoccupied leveling up. This man, however, was excited because he would be taking the test that was the most difficult rather than being afraid of it. This is not a means of punishing him. That is, he answered every question incorrectly and the time ran out. He had an hour to avoid passing out while battling the Wyvern's replica. The statue came to life and released an excessive amount of pressure. Wyvern launched a swift attack. Fortunately, Hyun Sung managed to avoid it. 
He is undoubtedly dead if not. The Wyvern's scream caused Hyun Sung's body to tremble. If Hyun Sung fails this quest, this is the catastrophe that the entire game would have to deal with. Hyun Sung removed all of his gear because he was having trouble moving as well. All of his remaining points were also spent on sharpening his agility. Hyun Sung ingested some healing elixirs. This is the first time we've noticed this guy struggling. As soon as the wyvern spread its wings, it began to fly. The boulders were sent flying in Hyun Sung's direction by the force of the creature's wings. There have only been five minutes after all of this. In an effort to first observe the wyvern, Hyun Sung tried to slink away behind some rocks. However, it began to charge its power. Hyun Sung disrupted the wyvern by using his siren song. Only the inevitable was postponed. Hyun Sung disclosed his position in addition. Taking a fire breath, the wyvern exhaled. That attack was narrowly avoided by Hyun Sung. Furthermore, this is merely a doppelganger. The real wyvern would be much more powerful than this imitation. But this notion enraged RMC. He is about to launch his counterattack. He employed daggers and magic bullets. But it didn't get past the scales of this wyvern. He did, however, observe that nightmare stacks continued to function. Hyun Sung recommenced arming himself with weapons. This is bad because the MC started his raid before turning on his recording. He began by striking the wyvern with the Delta Critical and Thanano's Nocturne. The monster's level was too high, so even if the attack had been successful, its effects would have been halved. Hyun Sung believed he was in trouble. These guys were also watching Hyun Sung's battle from the Korean HQ. They were all terrified because they didn't believe they could defeat the real wyvern, even if they gathered all of the strongest players on the Korean server. The decision by Hyun Sung to take on the most challenging version of the test had the team leader on the edge of his seat as well. He continued to attack Hyun Sung from behind, slowly inflicting damage. Additionally, this guy discovered the wyvern's flaw. To melee attacks, it is vulnerable. Hyun Sung cut into its underbelly before reusing the nocturne skill. This is insufficient to vanquish this monster. Hyun Sung jumped in the direction of the wyvern while it was still under the nightmare skill's influence. This is his strongest suit. The reverse scale is being attacked. It is every dragon's weakness. He slashed it repeatedly before using the black lightning once more. There are only 10 minutes left for Hyun Sung. The siren's seduction prevented the wyvern from successfully charging another fire breath. As a result, Hyun Sung had more time to avoid the attack. Additionally, he used this to attack the wyvern, bringing its stamina to a low of 10%. This started a new stage. Now, the wyvern will awaken after one minute. After that, it will be resistant to any abnormalities. Hyun Sung understood that this was his only opportunity to vanquish this foe. He quickly employed the Sabbath of the Dead Talent. The victim will be put to sleep by this skill and suffer double damage from attacks. However, the wyvern was too strong. It continued casting fire breath despite the sleep effect. Instead of avoiding the attack, Hyun Sung met it head on. Chains were pierced through the wyvern. It launched another fire breath in retaliation. Hyun Sung remained in the air. He was unable to avoid this assault. Then he employed his berserker talent. For 10 seconds, he will not take any damage thanks to this skill, which will also boost his attack power by 50%. With this attack, our MC has staked everything on the line because if it fails, the skill will cause him to pass out momentarily. After using a second Thanano's Nocturne, Hyun Sung began to receive notifications that he had leveled up. The Wyvern was vanquished by this guy. He didn't just try to get by for the allotted 10 minutes. He did better than expected. He believed that he was so close to even after winning. Hyun Sung still finds it hard to believe that he completed this impossible mission. His stats all received a 30-point boost as a result of this accomplishment. Additionally, he was awarded 2,000 DP for defeating the Wyvern. Our MC received these new titles. His main objective was also accomplished. The loot drops were all collected by this guy. He was then confronted by this man. Greeting Hyun Sung as his god, he said. This person is Thanano's pupil. However, it was only an artificial hologram. The disciple claimed that a different version of this mission's conclusion would have been set off if Hyun Sung had simply avoided the Wyvern's attack but he anticipated and knew that Hyun Sung would also have a bizarre personality if he were Thanano's offspring. Even though he is furious, Hyun Sung will only listen to what he has to say because this is just a hologram. The disciple will now award Hyun Sung his reward after playing around. However, he must decide between the god's authority and the god's relic. It turns out he can no longer have both. Hyun Sung had two choices after selecting the authority. He can still have the authority in the future regardless of what is rejected. This ability is the first, Call of Thinanos. To activate it, 1000 DP are needed. However, this ability will kill every living thing in a 100 meter area. Simply put, this is mass murder shit. Hyun Sung understood that this was simply too potent. But after seeing the second, he decided to go with this. Because Hyun Sung obtained a legendary item and a legendary skill from the loot drops, the team leader was killed back at the Korean HQ. 
He also got a new, extremely powerful skill that will help him rise to the top in addition to everything else. The team leader made the decision to inform the superiors of this once more. This was the skill that our MC selected, the lucid dreaming of Thanatos. This talent has two outcomes, both an active and a passive one. High and Sun can gain twice as much DP thanks to the passive effect, which also cuts the DP store's cooldown in half. The active skill was that it would permanently deplete one level. However, for a minute, High and Sun will have total control as a result. He has no cooldown on any of his abilities. This delighted High and Sun, because he can now use the DP store to acquire two legendary skills in just one month. The disciples bid him farewell after selecting an authority, but they will reassemble when High and Sun reaches level 100. He also advised Hai and Sung to leave quickly because the castle would vanish in a moment. This infuriated Hai and Sung even more, and the next time, he'll make sure to get to punch this disciple. Just as the castle vanished, Hai and Sung was able to flee. CHWA welcomed him and inquired as to whether he had failed. CHWA immediately recognized that Hai and Sung's response of no meant that the disciple had built the castle. She's met that man before as well. She is also happy that her quest was successful. She looked at her rewards and, as usual, they weren't all that great. If Hai and Sung acquired any useful skills or items as a result of defeating the Wyvern, CHWA inquired. He obviously overlooked these as he went through his stock. RMC was obviously pleased with the gifts he received. These heroic grade boots come first. He gains a 10% increase in attack and movement speed as a result. Additionally, it grants him the ability to make a duplicate of himself using the Mirage skill. A belt of dreams came after that. He will avoid five inevitable attacks each day thanks to this. It's too helpful in high-stakes situations. Hyun Sung also received Killian's ring, but he is yet to put it to use. He was given the worm's heart as the legendary object. He will gain 500 plus stats on strength and intelligence if he consumes this. Additionally, it will permanently double his intelligence points. A skill book for dragon language was also dropped. Hyun Sung would learn the dragon language skill if he used this. RMC studied the dragon language using the book. All skill cooldowns will be disregarded when using this skill, but the mana cost will be doubled. CH1 recognized Hyun Sung's happiness and deduced that he had received some excellent presents. They also made the decision to separate at this time. They were thankful to one another because their mission had been a success. The first to leave was Hyun Sung. Han CHWA has a talent she calls Wake Up Song. She can use this to awaken an ally who will hear her song. She felt that this skill was just too much, but it went well with Hyun Sung's narcolepsy skill. If only she were aware of it. Hyun Sung was back at the inn at this time and was about to eat the worm's heart. He also made use of his other tools. These are the stats of our overpowered MC at the moment. He is currently level 74 and has a large amount of ability points to use. He used 25 of these points to quicken his reflexes and the remaining points were used to build strength. He made the decision to log out after a long and exhausting day. After that, Hyun Sung and Yuen reconnected. Due to the videos Hyun Sung has been sending him, this guy was unable to sleep. Hyun Sung responded that he would like to use the name Asura when Yuen inquired about the name of his channel. It didn't take Yuen long to figure out why, and he thought it was perfectly appropriate for Hyun Sung's persona. These two kept on talking about the videos and other things. Hyun Sung was already farming in the Veni area, according to Yuen's information. He inquired as to Hyun Sung's current level. He was informed that he is currently level 74 by this guy. His closest friend finds it hard to believe how far he gets in the game. Rianer, meanwhile, was furious about what had occurred. He was aware that since he is currently a wanted man in Venia, he cannot use his character. Hyun Sung also damaged the reputation of his guild. He signed in once more, this time using a different character with a different rank class. Hyun Sung relogged into the game as well. He improved his stats by 31 hours of sleep. He recalled that players get a new skill at level 60, so he checked his. The Thanano collection was his. By doing this, he is able to gather the souls of the boss monsters he kills. Although Hyun Sung didn't fully comprehend the function of this skill, he believed that it would eventually be useful. Our MC made the decision to ease up and begin receiving some straightforward quests. Since he began playing this game, he has been non-stop grinding. He reasoned that it wouldn't be a bad idea to relax for a while and take in the game. Hyun Sung was given this mission. He only needs to gather a few shark fins. He saw this man again after accepting the quest. The previous time he purchased his equipment, the Frogman. They greeted one another and made introductions. Amir, the Frogman, asked Hyun Sung if he would like to join their group. The group led by Amir was also leaving the submerged cave. He explained to Hyun Sung the advantages he might enjoy if he joins their party. While they are out hunting, Amir will purchase all the goods Hyun Sung wants to sell. Hyun Sung will have enough room as a result to continue farming and fighting monsters. The proposal was accepted by Hyun Sung because he liked it. The lowest leveled member of the group is RMC, 
who recently joined. They were all above level 100. Amir then introduced Hyun Sung to the other members, who gave him a warm welcome. There is a mage, a healer, and an archer. However, they were already glancing at Hyun Sung's equipment beneath their sweet smiles. These three are preparing to steal from Amir and Hyun Sung and have set up a separate group chat just for them. This guy made the decision to begin their hunt despite having no idea what is going on. Amir was constantly in danger of being struck by these monsters while they were on their hunt. Every time, Hyun Sung was there to come to his aid. The archer wasn't too bad either. He was very talented. The healer is attentive and provides quick healing whenever Hyun Sung sustains damage as well. The mage's magic was also sufficient to instantly kill one monster. These three were aware of Hyun Sung's talent and believed it would be challenging to carry out their plan. This kind of pacing, according to Hyun Sung, was enjoyable. He purposefully keeps his strength in check and blends in well. The items from their hunt were also purchased by Amir, and Hyun Sung earned 547,000 gold. The group then took some time to unwind. Hyun Sung observed that the monsters were growing more powerful as they hunted more of them. For the goods he sold to Amir, RMC received his quest item and bonus gold. Hyun Sung became irate when Amir again suggested that they take a break. Additionally, these three were constantly chatting in jest to one another when Hyun Sung realized they were plotting something. Amir used his aggro talent whenever the backlines were in trouble. When he throws a coin at the monster, it will start to hunt for him. Their collaboration had been working out well so far. The archer then advised them to continue their hunt and move in that direction. He claimed to have seen some monsters inside. Because of his quick reflexes, he believed he could fool everyone. He had no idea that Hyun Sung had significantly better stats than he did. Our MC realized they were in trouble at this point. Their behavior also began to become careless and obvious. However, Amir was simply too kind and decided to believe these thugs. The secret dungeon was opened after the archer led the group inside. Amir couldn't help but be in awe that there is actually something inside. These three were walking with a smug look on their faces. Four, please. The group noticed another door at the end of the tunnel, including High and Sun. The archer stated that he has run out of arrows and will purchase some from Amir. High and Sun reasoned that there was a problem. Before they reached the monsters, he was anticipating an attack from them. While he was waiting for their trap, our MC grew impatient. Amir gathered them once more and cautioned them to be more cautious before they faced the dungeon's boss. They then unlocked the door and discovered Tooth Lacquishan's den of the blade inside. The four-armed shark in this picture is the dungeon's boss. Like usual, Hyun Sung became animated. Before attacking, he also gave his teammates a quick look. Hyun Sung made a quick movement and struck with an assault. Amir then used his aggro skill to follow it up. Hyun Sung took advantage of this chance to sneak up on the monster and attack one of its eyes. This is an opportunity to approach it all at once. The mage and the archer both employed their talents. Hyun Sung reasoned that now would be the ideal opportunity to practice his brand new skill, Mirage. The monster beat him, but his body slowly decomposed into black dust. Hyun Sung began a series of slashes while already behind the monster. This boss, though, was tough, and he pulled off a counterattack. These three hurriedly endeavored to assist Hyun Sung but they have been waiting for this. Several of their assaults also struck Hyun Sung. The boss was able to bite Hyun Sung this time for real thanks to this. Although he was severely injured, he was able to hit its neck. After that, Hyun Sung drank a health potion. These three find it hard to believe that he made it through that. They were making two precise attacks, Hyun Sung noticed. These guys had experience. The mage must take proper aim at Hyun Sung after the archer gave the order for her to launch another lightning bolt attack. She presented it as an error. Hyun Sung, however, avoided it, and it struck the monster. The healer launched another assault, but Hyun Sung also managed to avoid it. They were beginning to become perplexed. Because of their assaults, Amir gave them a thumbs up. The two thanked the veterans for their dedication after the boss was ultimately vanquished. Our MC was extremely appreciative of their terrible abilities. The group then left the dungeon, and Amir began to distribute the loot drops among them fairly. Since they only received four item drops, Amir decided to give each of them everything. These men chose the items without even seeking Hyun Sung's approval. Hyun Sung ultimately obtained the skill book. It's a rare talent that enables the user to call up water-based sharks, similar to Kasama from Naruto. Because he can repeatedly use this skill while speaking dragon, Hyun Sung was pleased with it. Hyun Sung and Amir added each other as friends after the former thanked him for his contributions. There are now two friends on our MC's list. The veterans continued on their journey. Their perspectives were wholly altered. Amir was bid farewell by Hyun Sung, who then left as well. Amir was delighted to have met such a wonderful man. He then put on his fabled backpack. This man is returning to Veni. These veterans were holding out for this time in the interim. Amir would be attacked when no one else was around. But soon after, they overheard a voice behind them. Hyun Sung killed them before they had a chance to turn around. 
He obtained the same items from the dungeon as these individuals. Hyun Sung also learned that he can use his DP points to lower his karma points. This is simply too practical. These three were back after a day of being unable to play, and they were now tense. They intended to take other victims because they believed they were now secure. However, they again heard the same voice. Then poof, they were dead once more. Our MC had developed a taste for amusingly murdering players. View this face. His YouTube channel was prepared in the meantime. There are currently no videos and only one subscriber. E1 was a little anxious because he is just about to upload the first video. Hyun Sun logged off after that. Then he hears Hyena calling him in her voice. Hyena was watching the video of Asura. She warned him that this player's abilities were simply too extraordinary. In this scene, Asura successfully split an arrow in half. By accident, Hyun Sung thanked Hyun Ah for complimenting this player's abilities. Then he made up an explanation, saying that he is grateful to Hyun Ah because of his friend. For Yu One's channel, that is, simply enthralled, Hyun Ah asked Hyun Sung if he could assist her in getting in touch with Asura. This man is aware of his predicament. Hyun Ah requested that his brother approach Asura about joining their guild. The qualifications they uphold in the Hero Guild were then made known to Hyun Sung. The first requirement is that applicants must at least be original. She was also animated when describing her guild to her brother. This is sufficient to make our MC consider joining them in the future. Asura agreed that Hyun Sung would make an effort to convince her to join the Hero Guild, but he said he couldn't make any guarantees. After that, Hyun Sung helped Hyun Ah return to her capsule by carrying her. Then he saw his sister had put on weight. Evidently offended by her brother's observation, Hyun Ah expressed it. She advised him not to treat other girls in that way. She then made fun of her brother for not being in a relationship. This remark was also accurate. Then, Yuen called Hyun Sung to let him know that he had already uploaded a video. He also advised Hyun Sung to look at the most popular web searches. These were currently the most popular search terms. 30 million people have already viewed his video. Just insane, this. The channel of Hyun Sung also attracted 1.6 million subscribers. This section of the manga gave me the motivation I needed to work hard to realize my dream of becoming a top-notch man or recap channel. To recap, Yoon was engaged in combat with this peculiar-looking Venusaur. She succeeded in striking its nape. Sapling Bear, a Venusaur with an odd appearance, was stunned for 5 seconds. Yoon was able to defeat it by quickly slashing across its body to end her attack. Yoon was collecting the loot when he thought of Hyun Sung. His possessions from their previous raid are still with her. She subsequently returned to the city. At the rehab village, Yoon was still waiting for Hyun Sung. She overheard numerous players discussing a player by the name of Asura. She also observed Asura being highlighted on ID's home page. Yoon believed that this man was unquestionably Hyun Sung. She can't help but be amazed as she watches his video because Hyun Sung's movements have become more fluid. After this, she hurried over to Venya at the Hero Guild's residence. Rin was also observing the Asura video. Hyun entered Rin's room as she was too preoccupied to notice that Asura wasn't there. She informed Rin that 70 million people have already viewed this man's video. She also revealed to her that Asura was familiar with her brother. When Rin heard this, she became eager and asked Hyun for something. She asked Hyun to tell Asura something. She fervently desires that Asura join their guild. The items from their previous raid that Rin also wanted to return to Asura. When Hyun learned that Asura and her guild leader had already participated in a raid, she was astounded. After some time, Hyun Sung returned home and was welcomed by Hyun. She inquired as to whether her brother had already spoken to Asura. Hyun also informed him that Asura may have some items from their guildmaster to claim. At this point, Hyun Sung realized Rin might have been using her ultimate. RNC was aware of the difficulties this would cause. Rin will undoubtedly remember his face if he runs into her again, and Hyun will then be aware of his secret. Asura was described by Hyun Sung as being extremely shy as an excuse. He doesn't think he'll have time to meet them in person. This man, in the meantime, told the emperor at the Karin Empire that the tournament's preparations were going well. In one month, it will be finished. The emperor was obviously enthusiastic about this competition. He assured them that the outcome should be as he had desired. Players will be divided into four groups based on their strengths, and they will be ranked accordingly. These players were alarmed by what they saw in the east part of Venya. None of the players were able to stop the monster horde as it began to advance on the city. They were all simply murdered. The aim of these monsters was to carry out a specific order, and that is to murder Finano's offspring. The cause of the issue was preoccupied with reviewing his stats while all of this mayhem was going on. If he hunts alone, he'll get to level 100 pretty quickly. He recalled that the disciple might have planned an additional test for him, so he needed to learn the fundamentals of Finano's. Then, to find out more about this god, he traveled to the Pantan. He noticed that the guards didn't even look at his identification while he was on his way. The priests inside were all attempting to stay clear of him. The NPCs were avoiding Hyun Sung, as other players had also observed. 
so they simply followed suit. RNC was growing impatient because he didn't even understand the situation. Then he noticed this elderly man. Hyun Sun was aware that this elderly man's status was unquestionably superior to that of the snobby priests. When Hyun Sun was about to approach him, the elderly man bowed. The elderly man also expressed regret for not escorting Hyun Sun. It turned out that this elderly man was the temple's bishop. He continued to tremble as he talked to Hyun Sun. The people in their immediate vicinity began to speculate about Hyun Sun. The bishop inside the panton extended an invitation to Hyun Sun. Hyun Sun was introduced to him, and he informed him that he was in charge of this temple. The door behind them was destroyed as Hyun Sun instructed the bishop to stop shaking. This, in Hyun Sung's opinion, was a form of assault. A man dressed as a priest caught his attention. This strange man cried while saying the word God. He then bowed his head so severely that it struck and broke the ground. As this man praised Hyun Sung, tears and blood began to fall. As Libius, he introduced himself, and he serves Hyun Sung. He struck our MC as odd, and she wanted to get out of here. Additionally, Hyun Sung learned that Libius was an NPC connected to his Thanatos. This servant informed his master that if Hyun Sung went to the altar, he would receive a new skill. This man heard the words new skill and was quickly convinced. It is the altar of Thananos. Libius provided Hyun Sun with information regarding this location. Our MC answered with a conversational speech. Then this took place. Libius did not anticipate receiving equal treatment from his master. He requests to be treated like a slave. That is the only way to rise, he informed Hyun Sun. Because he didn't want to prevent this scene from occurring, Hyun Sun concurred. Then he requested that Libius divulge all of his knowledge regarding Thanatos. For his master, Libius called for a chair and some tea. Thanatos was the god with the greatest strength, he informed Hyun Sung. He was informed by Hyun Sung that he already knew that, and there was awkward silence throughout the space. Evidently, aside from that information, this guy knew nothing about Thanatos. Hyun Sung believed that his time was clearly being wasted. He was about to leave when he noticed Libius holding a bag. He will follow Hyun Sung because that is what servants do, Libius informed him. This assignment came directly from the disciple. Additionally, he informed Libius that Hyun Sung should go with him because of the dark energy that will arrive from the east. Our MC was aware that this person would probably be required for the upcoming phase of his mission. The dark energy coming from the east just happened yesterday, Libius then informed Hyun Sung. In just a few days, the city will also be inundated by monsters, so it is pointless if Hyun Sung refuses to accept his help. It is obvious that Hyun Sung is ignorant of the monsters that are approaching the city. He was told by Libius that Hyun Sung's previous success in completing the Wyvern mission was the reason. He then looked in his status window to see if there was any information. Hyun Sung noticed an alert from Idea. The city was actually under attack from monsters. Idea also published a dire search. This is done in order to safeguard Venya. After seeing this, Hyun Sung became enthused once more. He intends to join this expedition. Following that, Hyun Sung and Libius attended a party. The fact that Libius was already level 560 astounded him. This NPC was undoubtedly more powerful than the majority of the Idea players. As a result of this high-level nuthead's support and buffs, Hyun Sung was delighted. These two couldn't wait to travel to the city's east. An NPC that is overleveled and overpowered. It will undoubtedly end in bloodshed. Meanwhile, someone is typing too quickly and seems to be in a hurry. The leader of Idea's development team was Minura. She had been working all day to prepare for the monster wave that Hyun Sung had summoned after killing the wyvern, so she was exhausted. She's been in too much trouble with this guy because of how quickly our NPC is developing. She is now concerned that Hyun Sung might beat the game's opening chapter in a hurry. Hyun Sung now has powerful skills in addition to being with Libius. She believed that if Hyun Sung took part in the siege against the monster wave, he would be able to level up to 100. Players can unlock two skills once they reach level 100, a final skill and a passive skill. However, both skills will be active in Hyun Sung's case. She believed that once Hyun Sung acquires these two skills, no other player could defeat him. She worries about Hyun Sung's quick level rise even while she is eating her noodles. She believed Hyun Sung to be truly insane. After that, she made use of Idea's AI to inquire as to what level Hyun Sung would be at following the monster siege. In response, the AI stated that if Hyun Sung was able to eliminate every monster, he would be close to level 101. He will also kill boss monsters and obtain all of the rarest drops from them. Afterward, Minura made the decision to concentrate solely on the tournament that an NPC had hosted. As soon as she learned something about it, this girl gave up. Yoon, meanwhile, was still looking for Hyun Sung near Venya. She subsequently returned to the city. Right now, the city is crowded with people. She became aware of the urgent need to protect the city from the onslaught of monsters. Players with levels 100 to 150 could also take part. Yoon reasoned that Hyun Sung would likely take part because he enjoys combat. Even just thinking about it made her excited. 
She quickly made her way out of the city after that. She believed that Hyun Sung would engage in battle with the monsters before any other players could. Hyun Sung did make an effort to confront the monsters head on. Still with Libius, he, due to Fanano's strength, the monsters were able to detect his energy and move toward Hyun Sung's location. Then he instructed Libius to try to disperse the energy throughout the vicinity. The monsters will become divided and confused as a result. These were the beasts making their way to Venya. They were all powerful monsters, some of which were bosses. This orc observed how the energy was being divided and dispersed all around. The monsters, as expected, were perplexed. The energy then abruptly vanished. The monsters then made the decision to disperse and search for High and Sung. Our MC was simply watching them. Everything was going as he had intended. There are roughly 1,000 subordinates with each boss monster, and there were about 5,000 monsters in total. Before they arrived at Venya, Hyun Sung wished to lower these figures. Now that Libius can grant him buffs, this guy could easily complete the quest by himself, but he chose not to. He reasoned that this time, he shouldn't be avaricious. However, this guy is still aiming for the top spot in contributions. He only intends to kill bosses and elite mobs. Once Hyun Sung pressed the record button, the show could begin. Libius' excitement is plainly visible on his face right now. Our MC's initial objective will be to strike this Moonward or Ebalk. It is able to detect and smell Hyun Sung's energy. But when the scent was followed, all it found was Hyun Sung's jacket. Hyun Sung suddenly materialized next to him and began firing magic bullets. Hyun Sung repeatedly used this ability on the elite enemies surrounding the boss. These bullets were adequate to instantly kill them due to the increase in his magic power. The boss cast its skill out of desperation. It howled, buffing every wolf in his immediate vicinity. Hyun Sung also requested Libius buff because he wants to completely defeat them. For a period of an hour, all of his abilities and attacks will be 50% stronger. These two sprinted in the opposite direction, but Hyun Sung just kept killing its subordinates. The boss had an insight at this precise moment. There is no conflict here. For this guy, it is merely a means of monster hunting. Hyun Sung made the decision to only use his sword against these men in order to lessen the damage he causes. He used Thanana's Nocturne before stabbing the wolf boss. When black lightning struck its body, the monster howled in agony. It lastly caught sight of Hyun Sung. He did hunt, after all. The boss was vanquished as a result, and Hyun Sung advanced 30 levels. Due to the fact that this was connected to the previous Wyvern quest, he also received the best loot drops from this encounter. Then, our MC employed his fresh talent, Thanano's Necromancy. This is comparable to the MC's power and soul leveling. The boss is consumed by this skill, and in exchange, it is revived. The monster's stats will receive a 50% buff, which will last for 10 minutes. Hyun Sung had taken control of this Moonwater Ebalg at this point. This man believed that having a dog while hunting is essential. This Black Shar Snake will then be the next prey item. Although not as powerful as the ogres, its poison was a major issue. As soon as possible, Hyun Sung dashed because he wanted to combat this while his buffs were still in effect. The wolf bit the snake's body in an instant. As soon as it moved, the snake bit the wolf as well. At this point, Hyun Sung repeatedly stabbed the snake's body. The wolf was able to capture it as well. There were yet more slashes being made. And with that, the powerful black snake fell. Hyun Sung leveled up and once again received the best loot drops. He didn't waste any time moving on to his next objective. This ogre champion Akab is it. But as they neared the ogre, a new boss monster materialized. Kurek, a gigantic orc, is the culprit. Hyun Sung considered using his lucid dreaming talent, but it would be pointless because it would end the conflict. He's just trying to figure out how he could get past the ogre's defense and take the orc's blows. Libius and his wolf were ordered by Hyun Sung to battle the enormous orc, and he will take on the ogre in battle. The magic bullets had already struck the ogre, but the attack was ineffective. Then Hyun Sung employed his mirage talent. On hitting its attacks, the ogre was clearly beginning to struggle. Hyun Sung was able to seize each of the openings that kept appearing. He was successful in striking the ogre. Ogre champion employed his talent. Its power and reaction time were both 30% faster. The disadvantage is that magic spells will now work against it. After that, Hyun Sung fired his shark torpedo. As a result, several water sharks appeared all around him. He attacked the ogre with this, and with its quicker reflexes, it was able to block them. But this was merely a distraction. Hyun Sung succeeded in striking the animal's left eye. This attack blinded the ogre for 10 seconds and dealt critical damage. Additionally, the nightmare skill was turned on. However, the ogre didn't give up and managed to strike Hyun Sung. He was fortunate to have this belt of dreams, which can block inevitable attacks. Hyun Sung discovered that he was encircled by these monsters as well. When he checked on Libius and the wolf, he discovered that the wolf had already been vanquished. MC was aware that the circumstances were not ideal. 
he then called forth his chains, killing the majority of the monsters. The black lightning then struck those who had survived the chains. The two boss monsters were the only ones left after this. The giant orc was then f***ed by Hyan Sun. Against it, he employed his shark torpedo talent. The ogre was attacking him as well, so he was fighting. He assessed the circumstance. Hyan Sun was limited to spamming two skills. The dragon language skill prevents the cooldown from magic bullets and the shark torpedo. He is completely lacking in all other abilities. He was once more surrounded by reinforcements when they arrived. For his YouTube channel, Hyun Sung wants to capture an overwhelming victory. Then he employed his lucid dreaming talent. All of his abilities, cooldowns, and casting times will be eliminated for one minute. However, he will have no defense for the next 10 days. Hyun Sung employed his berserk talent as well. This guy had grand plans to eliminate them all. The monsters are now unable to follow Hyun Sung's movements. They were all vanquished in a split second. Shark torpedoes were also launched in a barrage at the boss monsters. A few slashed, and then the black lightning struck. Magic bullets were also launched into the air. The ogre champion then caught Hyun Sung's attention. This poor guy got a ton of magic bullets and shark torpedoes. Its neck was cut, which completed the deal. Finally, Hyun Sung has vanquished this formidable ogre. Our MC once more employed the necromancy skill while grinning. He now controlled the powerful ogre champion. The giant orc became angrier as a result. It moved in the direction of Hyun Sung and employed its talent. This shackle will render its adversaries immovable. Additionally, the Belt of Dreams won't be activated. Hyun Sung was unable to avoid this attack, which left a sizable gap in the defense. Livius then returned. The orc was attacked by the champion ogre. This demonstrated Hyun Sung's continued existence. Our MC apparently used the Berserk ability once more. As you are all aware, this skill cancels out all of the damage he sustains. Hyun Sung was headed to kill this monster even as the orc was still in shock. All of the boss monsters were then vanquished after that. The spoils of this hunt were immediately gathered by Hyun Sung. His ability to have lucid dreams also expired. For the following 10 days, his defense is at zero. Monsters continued to swarm toward him. He tried to flee because he realized that this time, he is really at a disadvantage. But then a bolt of yellow lightning struck the monsters pursuing him. Hyun Sung was obviously perplexed. He does not possess such a talent. He believed that a new boss had appeared. Additionally, Libius warned his master that trouble was ahead. Caller dialed Hyun Sung. It's a voice you know. It's He Yun. Yun, according to Libius, is the god of heaven's paladin. And it really is. Yun holds this particular rank. Angry-eyed, Hyun Sung gave Libius a glare. He knew Yun as a friend, so he doesn't need to exercise caution around her. When Yun told Hyun Sung that she had been looking for Libius to give him his belongings, Hyun Sung thought Libius was a strange NPC. She continued by saying that she had watched the Sira's video and was aware that Vinya was the source of the fight's background music. Another group of monsters arrived as they were still conversing. These mobs were quickly dispatched by these two powerful players. These three were back in the city following the altercation. Although Libius also wants to go, Hyun Sung and Yoon decided to go to the cafe. Hyun Sung then instructed him to visit the Pantheon and look for additional hints regarding the second trace. But the purpose of this was to drive him away. Libius, an obedient servant, left right away. After that, these two went to a cafe. Yoon was thinking too much. She was concerned that she would appear stalker-like in front of Hyun Sung. She then took the initiative and gave Hyun Sung a look at the items he had previously received. RMC was happy to see a sword and another skill book. Sinclair was the name of the sword. It has a debuff that reduces its damage by 50% while greatly enhancing other characteristics. Defense is also disregarded. Hyun Sung believed that by using Iris' unsuccessful product, he could quickly reverse the debuff. Instant teleportation was one of the skills in the skill book. It has a one-minute cooldown. The user will always be transported to a random location, which was the only drawback. Despite this, RMC was happy. Additionally, he recalled that Rin and his sister do not need to meet up with him any longer because he already has his items. He also requested that Yoon not disclose his nickname. Yoon enthusiastically agreed right away. Hyun Sung had his items and was getting ready to leave. Yoon hasn't added him on Facebook, though. Then Yoon merely requested the friend request. Hyun Sung then made a new game playing friend as a result. RMC returned to the hotel after a tiresome day. He was also eager to inspect the items he had found during his hunt. He received these things. The majority of them resembled crafting supplies. This skill book stood out as the most significant. He acquired this skill by using it. He will doze off for 10 minutes while using this skill, and each minute will result in a health recovery. The AI will always take over once he falls asleep, so this skill was really compatible with his narcolepsy skill. Another powerful ROPMC skill. Hyun Sung was pleased with his contribution to the urgent mission as well. 
he will undoubtedly receive top one because he killed the boss monsters and elite mobs. The hunt also left behind this dagger. It consumes mana, but whenever it is thrown, it can return to high and some. The staff at his best friend's workplace was inundated with calls asking about Asura at the same time. Even the top guilds in Inferno wanted to know more about this enigmatic genius. Yoon also believed that in order to handle the increased workload, he would need to hire more personnel. He then got a call from a significant individual. He replied in a hurry. It came from Devil, a well-known streamer. This guy had a thing for Asura. Yoon was questioned about Asura's guild membership. Yoon gave a negative response. The Devil then seized the chance to ask Yoon if he could tell Asura about his guild. Devil also provided him with crucial information that Asura would find extremely interesting. This had to do with the fighting matchups within the Empire. Hyun Sung will undoubtedly attend this event given what we know about him. Yoon then made a call to Hyun Sung using his phone number. He informed him of the contest. Hyun Sung also disclosed that he had reached level 94 at this point. Yoon then commanded him to stop leveling up. Some professional players will take part in the competition on levels 100 and lower. The competition will be divided into different classes based on their levels. When Hyun Sung heard this, he was happy. He'll get a chance to compete against professionals. Yoon will receive additional videos from Hyun Sung as well. He conducted two raids, the first was against these monsters, and the second was a hunt on Venia. Yoon and his team were shocked by this information. He acknowledged that he had already slain the boss monsters and that this circumstance was caused by him. This new development will undoubtedly garner more interest than his previous videos. The videos were sent immediately by Hyun Sung. After that, our MC went out with his sister to see a movie. They haven't had a chance to unwind in a while. He enjoys seeing his sister smile as well. On the other hand, Hyun had something special for her brother. When Hyun Sung noticed the surprise, he showed this expression. His sister is now able to stand by herself. She could now easily stand on her own two legs. Hyun Sung was obviously shocked, but that shock quickly changed to confusion. Hyun then disclosed that she has been financing her recovery for some time. She began working three months ago. Hyun Sung didn't really want to put her younger sister's financial responsibilities on her. He reacted in this way because of that. Additionally, he learned that Hyun will be fully recovered in two weeks. Hyun Sung requested a favor from her sister knowing this. He expressed to his sister his desire for her to attend college. This guy wants a regular life for his sister. He was confident that Hyun would make wonderful friends and lead a full life. Hyun had one requirement in order to attend college. She desires to accompany Hyun Sung. These brothers and sisters were truly unique. The monsters have gotten to Venia's eastern wall, where the city is located. They began attacking the citizens of the city and the players there that evening. Some players found it difficult to defeat these mobs. Even though some of them moved quickly and organized into groups, they were still overpowered. They believed they were safe after the sunrise, but as they started to unwind, a terrifying sight suddenly appeared. Monsters that towered over the walls began to form a peak. After that, the city was in complete disarray. Guards and players were no match for this power. Coming back to RMC, Hyun was awaking him. Then she demonstrated something to him on the television. It was an Asura video. According to Hyun, it was just uploaded two hours ago, and it is currently airing on TV. The fact that Asura was his brother is unknown to this fangirl. The host of this program expressed their admiration for Asura as well. Except for this guy, the Korean servers rank 450 Fire Mage. He assured them that everything was routine. He suggested that Asura should be at least level 150. This man was obviously unaware of Asura's abilities. This host became irritated and informed him that because he only has a rare rank, he cannot relate to this level of power. The opposing host interrupted them and changed the subject. It dealt with the invasion in Vinya's eastern region. Hyun Sung was unprepared for the harm the monsters would cause to the city. Hearing this, he then went to his room. This idol desired that Asura visit Vinya and assist the city. Additionally, they got news while their show was still on the air. Asura had just been spotted on the eastern side of Venia, she continued. Hyun also became excited by this advancement. These guys were exhausted from defending the city at the eastern Venian wall. Once more, they sensed a menacing aura. The previous wave had only been gone for an hour when another one began to approach. Hope was shouted by a few of the NPCs. They must prevent the destruction of their city. They again had to face the monsters. The monsters were then slain by lightning. These assaults were made by Yoon. While waiting for Hyun Sun, she intends to hold this wave. She used her devastating talent, Heaven's Punishment. The monsters were attacked by thousands of swords that were summoned. This girl's abilities have definitely improved. When the other players and NPCs saw her fighting, they were motivated to join in as well. Yoon began to fight this horde of monsters as the battle dragged on though. She was encircled. She averted her gaze. She believed that this was the first time she had ever died in a video game. 
However, all of the monsters were vanquished when she opened her eyes. Then she noticed this man, a rescuer. This is High and Sung. However, he was donning a white mask this time. The MC employed his sweet dreams talent. After a 10-minute period of sleep, the AI will take control. It's as though he is watching himself on autopilot. As Hai and Sung grew stronger, this AI also enhanced its movements and attacks. Now, everyone in the city was observing the powerful Asura. Monsters tried to attack him repeatedly, but they were all unsuccessful. This is how AI is powerful. Gentlemen, even now, Hai and Sung wants to take on the AI that was in charge of his character. Yoon was utterly engrossed in Hai and Sung throughout the fight. She also agreed to play the part of cameraman for Hai and Sung's videos. However, she reasoned that she couldn't let Hai and Sung fight on his own. She then began to move and engage in combat. Hai and Sung was worried about unintentionally leveling up while the AI was still engaged in combat. Now, he wants to avoid leveling up. He really wants to compete against the pros, but it is no longer possible to control the AI. His protagonist kept slaying monsters. Even more monsters were killed by the AI using the necromancy skill on this orc. Monsters with lower levels couldn't stand a chance against this orc. Players who were onlookers began to assist Hai and Sung as well. His character keeps progressing. He is currently level 96. After killing a few more people, Hai and Sung reached level 99. Now, our MC was terrified. He is very eager to take part in the contest. Not to mention that when he reaches level 100, the second trace will also be activated. But then this alert showed up. Sweet Dream's talent was finished. Hai and Sung started by collecting all the loot he had obtained. This man was definitely unique. Yoon also sent him a personal message. He had saved her, and she thanked him. Hai and Sung then left the area. Everyone in the community appreciated him. They will now defend Asura from the disparaging remarks. Some fanboys developed for this man. Our MC has also altered his appearance in the interim to conceal his identity. He then reasoned that the quest was still incomplete because there had been no announcement regarding the siege. He can't, however, kill any monsters right now or he'll level up. He was about to log off when Livius returned. Hyun Sung had grown accustomed to the enthusiasm of this NPC. He was also tracked by this NPC everywhere he went. Then he had an intriguing thought. Yoon received a message from Hyun Sung asking a question. Also, he gave Libius some directives. The narcolepsy skill then became active. Now Hyun Sung will be made to go to bed. Libius saw his master nod off, and he was overjoyed to witness something miraculous. He then made a second heart bow. People in the neighborhood thought he was strange and crazy. Hyun Sung returned to his everyday life and noticed Hyun watching something. A video about Asura was being viewed by his sister. After that, Hyun Sung went to the hospital with his sister. They came to see how she was doing with her rehabilitation. Additionally, he updated Hyun on Asura. He stated that Asura already met Yoon for his items and doesn't really want to join a guild at this time. They then proceeded to Lee Min A, Hyun A's physician, S office. Hyun Sung and Lee Min A had a conversation. She expressed regret for hiding Hyun A's identity. This really didn't bother Hyun Sung at all. Just that his sister was beginning to recover well made him happy. Hyena was fortunate to have him as her brother, Lee Mina remarked to him. Some families lose faith in healing, which has an impact on some patients. Hyena, however, was committed to making a full recovery, and her brother was to blame for this. Following their discussion, Lee Mina got a call. The capsule that just now arrived was about her. Now this doctor will attempt to impersonate a deer. Her appearance in some way made me think of CHWA. Because of her patience, she became genuinely interested in ID. Except for Hyun and Yoon, all of the members of the Heroes Guild were incarcerated when we last left them. The terrifying siege on Venia was the topic of this meeting. Yoon discussed this with Rin, her sister. Asura specifically asked for this, so she was serious about this. Asura was already well known to all of the Heroes Guild members. Right now, he's actually quite well known. However, this man was somewhat reserved. He knew all the crazy unofficial rankers. He's still not persuaded, then. Then Rin admitted that she had previously encountered Asura while using an alternate account. The other guild members felt relieved as a result. Asura was not really inclined to join their guild, she informed them. Then they recalled a long ago occurrence that had happened to them. When the Heroes Guild first met her, she was far too strong. If one of them was successful in defeating her, the woman promised she would join them. But they fell short. With this memory, some of them were still irritated. After that, Rin changed the subject to Hyane's brother. They all genuinely adore Hyane. However, they were still hesitant to give her brother a smooth entrance into the guild. The main point was that Asura was known to Hyane's brother. They believed it might give them an advantage over Asura. They were still conversing when a visitor showed up. He walked into the room. Eden was his name. He is the head of the Mythology Guild, the most powerful guild in Korea. He also holds the server's official rank. To personally address Venya's situation, he attended the meeting. He stated that they intended to assist Venya in response to Asura's request. 
but the majority of his guildmates were already level 150 or higher. The majority of the members were below level 140, and they'll employ some buffs to effectively support them. In order to support those who might take part in the siege, even will place buffers around the area. This will be a distant support technique, but Rin assured them that there was a better strategy, and it involved the Sura. The Pantheon will be used by this Genus player to battle the monsters. Some members were aware that if Pantheon entered, they would unquestionably win. But getting NPCs to participate in a fight was a challenge, and Libius stepped in at this point. He is currently speaking with the bishop at the Pantheon. This person used his power to intimidate the elderly man and force him to comply with his demands, a Thanano servant who is truly deserving. After some time, the bishop finally consented to defend the city from the monsters. This crazy guy has accomplished his goal. They were still discussing how they would save Venya at the Heroes Guild meeting. Following some conclusions, everyone departed for Venya to get ready. Eden and Rin were left on their own. These guys discussed the Sura. Eden was aware that Rin had encountered a Sura. He advised Rin to swiftly begin seeking out a Sura. Additionally, the Black Guild was moving. When Rin heard this, her expression changed. The Black Guild ranked second on the Korean server. They also went by the name Black Association. The Black Guild was divided into five distinct sub-guilds. Additionally, the top one will lose if they face Mythology Guild at full strength. This was brought on by the enormous wealth these sub-guilds possess. Eden informed Rin that in order to get Asura on their side, they have already threatened other guilds. The balance will undoubtedly change if Asura joins their side. Asura will participate in the competition, and Rin believed that the Black Guild would take advantage of this to enlist him. Eden then suggested that Rin and her guild take part in the competition as well. This will also officially certify their guild, undoubtedly a free advertisement. The woman who defeated them all, according to Eden, will also take part. When Rin hears about this, she will undoubtedly join in. With that, everything has been resolved. Now, Rin and Eden will also travel to Venya. This girl was eager to see Hyun Sen once more. The team leader at Ideas HQ looked like this in the meantime. Due to the volume of work he needed to complete, he has been under stress. According to the other agents, Hyun Sen has already acquired a new set of abilities and gear as a result of the monster hunt. A list of these things and abilities was requested by the team leader. Additionally, this guy was aware that Hyunsen will be competing and is already level 99. He was looking through the list when Mainyura called. She divulged sensitive information to the team captain. The competition will feature the daughter of the chairman. Back at Hyunsen in the interim, he awoke in an unfamiliar location. He was reportedly brought into the Pantheon by Libius. A quest notification that the monster siege had been successful was also given to him. A special item box and a special skill box were given to Hyunsen. These will have randomly selected contents. He put his newly acquired quest-related gear on right away. Our MC reasoned that in order for him to be alone once more, he needed to get Libius busy once more. Then he instructed Libius to watch over the Pantheon while he was away. Hyunsung enjoyed his time alone as he strolled through the streets of Armin. Then, however, a spell uttered by Thanano's pupil carried Libius back to where Hyunsung was. It was obvious that Hyunsung did not like what he was seeing. While he was in the bath, Libius received a call. At the Beldorm Kingdom, this NPC was walking through the streets while naked as a bat. These individuals were also meeting. This person, Jung-gu, was the top combatant in the Black Association Guild. Ichorin, a lady who served as the Black Guild's chief of intelligence, is another. Additionally present was the largest mage guild's guild leader. Henry, the Black Dealer Guild Master, is Palia. And lastly, Zeriabal, the head of the biggest mercenary guild. These guys were all discussing the upcoming competition while focusing on Asura. Each of them will send a representative to the competition, and whoever Asura is defeated by will have the right to hire him. Additionally, these guys intended to use the competition to increase their visibility and advance the Black Association. Someone was running too quickly through the snow on this snowy mountain in the meantime. Siwa played this role. She ponders how far Hyunsung has come since their previous encounter. She was also disappointed that Hyunsung had neglected to get in touch with her after adding her as a friend. Rin was holding another meeting back at the Heroes Guild base. They were unable to locate Asura and Venya. But even so, these fangirls were delighted to have the opportunity to watch Asura in the recorded videos. Some guild members were worried that if they joined, they would win out over the opposition. However, Rin avers that this won't be the case. Other guilds will also send their best fighters to compete in this event. Additionally, Rin informed them that the purpose of this meeting was to select the guild members who would compete. She additionally disclosed that the woman who defeated them was taking part. The atmosphere in the room quickly changed as a result. Hyun informed them that she would not be taking part because her primary function was as a healer. This woman will also fail because her abilities weren't created for use in a one-on-one -on -one situation. With that, Rin was certain that every guild member would take part. All of the agents left the Inferno headquarters and went home. 
rest was necessary because of tomorrow. It's time to start the competition. There was only the team captain left. This man is unable to help but worry. He is concerned that the chairman's daughter will reveal who she is. He took care of Hyun Sung's plans as well. He was aware of Hyun Sung's superior strength, not even professional players. He is aware of the potential popularity of this match between Hyun Sung and the professional gamers. Due to the fact that today is the day the DP store resets, the team leader was also spying on Hyun Sung. He has no choice but to watch as this overpowered character gains more potent abilities and gear. The streets of the Imperial capital were unmistakably alive. There are many people gathered here. RMC was waiting in line to sign up for the event. He hadn't anticipated that many level 100 players would also take part in this contest. Additionally, Libius was waiting for his orders just around the corner, which has him fuming. Hyun Sung made the choice to use the DP store while he waited. Currently, he can spend 8,941 points. This man used the DP store without even thinking twice. He moved his finger from rudimentary skills all the way up to legendary ones. Before him, a number of notifications appeared. Hyun Sung read and scanned each of his acquired skills. Looking at his new abilities, this guy had an interesting thought. Hyun Sung eventually felt prepared for the contest. To participate, the participants must still pass a few tests. By eliminating the weak ones, their population will be drastically reduced. All of the player's passive skills will be disabled during the first exam. They only need to survive for 10 minutes or kill the monster in front of them. Hyun Sung began recording before he spoke. Then his adversary started to appear. This guy will be competing against a duplicate of himself. The previous time, his wish was granted. Hyun Sung sprinted in the direction of his adversary out of excitement. These two clashed swords and struck each other. But it's obvious that Hyun Sung defeated this fake one. But as anticipated, this fake was a formidable foe. Then Hyun Sung made the decision to employ his dagger as a backup weapon. He quickly attacked and captured the fake one. That was the end of his exam entry. In just 38 seconds, he completed this. Hyun Sung broke a previous record. After that, the system inquired about Hyun Sung's competition name. This man was simply too fierce. He was then brought back to the stadium after that. As the records were being displayed in front of them, these people were all in shock. They observed that Asura came out on top in the ranking scheme. Then Hyun Sung attempted to examine it. He realized that his record was much too fast compared to the other competitors. This one was displeased that others were praising Asura. He is the professional gamer who came in second on the leaderboard. He was two minutes behind Asura. This guy is really trying to get Asura to learn a lesson. In the opening rounds, he wants to humiliate Asura. The competition has finally officially begun after some time. The hosts have also said hello to those in attendance. The records of the players who participated at levels 100 to 200 and 200 to 300 were started to be examined. But they were disappointed because Asura's name wasn't listed on those ranking boards. Even inside the stadium, a video of Asura was being shown as they discussed him. The discussion then turned to the participants at levels 100 and under. They were excited about this because professional athletes were taking part. The host, who was about to interview the player, then came into the spotlight. Ark is a professional gamer, and he was this guy. The most notable query the host posed to him was when he brought up Asura's name. Asura was deemed to be ID's top player by this professional gamer. However, the onlookers were let down because they believed Asura was absent. Another professional gamer was being interviewed after Ark. It's Lucifer this time. Because of his boisterous responses, this man was being beaten. He was even difficult for the host to get responses from. Lucifer eventually showed his poor manners and left the interview. The hosts then circled back and discussed their hopes for these professional players. The exam for the preliminary rounds was also introduced. It will be a dungeon clear with a time attack. Each participant will enter a dungeon where three bosses await them. But to make things more challenging, players are unable to use their skills. So, everything here will be based solely on power and their control. The players who finish the dungeons quickly are the ones who advance to the next phase. Our MC was reportedly watching the broadcast in his waiting area. Hewnson was not pleased to hear Lucifer refer to him as an amateur. He was about to destroy these professional players. The exam began shortly after that. The first person to take it was Ark. He demonstrated his abilities without ever taking damage. His development was on display for everyone to see. Some of them recognized his crazed abilities and acute vision. Lucifer has also begun his exam in the meantime. Ark was way behind this guy. The same boss Ark was battling had already lost half of its health. This gave Lucifer more self-confidence. A special invitation from the Black Association was also given to him. Then Lucifer made the decision to end this game and exit the dungeon. Then he rushed over to the boss. However, there was a notification that someone had already passed the first stage that rang out throughout the stadium. The onlookers were all perplexed. In just 4 minutes and 31 seconds, someone completed it. 
The player who set this unreal record was then excitedly revealed by the host. Asura was there. The majority of the idea players were shocked by this. They didn't anticipate Asura's level to be less than 100. This greatly increased the buzz on Idea's server. They find it inconceivable that the man who won the Monster Siege was only a level 99 player. The crowd went absolutely nuts. The anticipation for this competition was now at an all-time high. Asura's dungeon clear was broadcast in the stadium shortly after that. He is currently battling this snake. But our MC showed off his quick reflexes and precise strikes. He was able to strike the snake in all of its critical areas. The snake's body was difficult to attack. Even common attacks wouldn't hurt it. Asura, however, simply sliced through its body like it was butter. The host also observed how deliberate and calculated Asura's movements were. He doesn't waste time with showy attacks. The boss snake was then vanquished shortly after. The third phase then began with little delay. Asura sprinted in its direction and slashed the vampire boss repeatedly. The vampire was unable to respond in time. Asura destroyed it with ease. Then his records were shown once more. In just one hour and 27 minutes, Hyun Sung completed all the dungeons. The crowd erupted once more. They even boasted that Asura would still triumph in a global competition for this. Siwa was observing Hyun Sung as well. She attested to his significant improvement in skills. She now plans to tease Hyun Sung about winning the competition because she is thrilled about it. Siwa, however, questioned Hyun Sung's use of the moniker Asura. Rin was also observing his exam for the dungeon clear. She is perplexed as to how Hyun Sung was able to perform those moves. But then she recalled how, while they were dating, he was always practicing strange moves. Then, Rin made a decision. Even though she is aware that her adversary will triumph in this contest, she still needs to give it her all. The preliminary rounds are over, so these are the results we saw in the end. Han Siwa was the second after Asura. All of the following people came from the Hero Guild. Because she can no longer tease Hyun Sung, this made Siwa sad. Being unable to recruit someone who is ranked higher than her also disappointed Rin. Lucifer was evidently dissatisfied. The unofficial rankers own this so-called professional gamer. Hyun Sung logged off after that. Due to all the things he's been doing, this guy was restless. However, he was now aware that Siwa and Rin were the second place three-eared. Then he noticed her sister engrossed in the competition. To avoid suspicion, RMC provided an explanation that he had already been eliminated from the competition. Since all of Rin's guildmates, in particular, were ranked in the top 10, Hyun Sung congratulated her sister. Hyun revealed to her brother that she also knew Siwa at this point. She was the one who last time defeated the entire Heroes Guild. Their adversary, Hyena persisted in bragging in an effort to entice her brother to join the Heroes Guild. She also mentioned to her brother that many others who were much stronger still refrained from competing. The conversation then turned to Asura. Asura will triumph in this contest, she is certain. Hyena got up and informed Hyun Sung that she would be going to sleep after speaking with her brother. After that, Hyun Sung also took a nap. He must regain his strength before the games of tomorrow. The competition reopened a day later. The most anticipated part comes now. Everybody was watching this broadcast, even regular people. The hosts continued to work from their homes up to the clubs. They were discussing the professional athletes who fell to those unofficial Korean rankers. None other than Asura served as the leader of these players who prevailed. The stadium was playing his video once more. The final rounds format was then made public. All the way to the championship match, each player will compete against the other. They finally declared that the competition would now begin. The emperor served as a jail as well. He wants to see for himself how strong the players are. The first watch involved Asura and Isil, a professional gamer. This guy was tense to begin with. He didn't understand what he was seeing. Asura is depicted wearing his white mask. The spectators in the stadium were astounded as well. This form is known as Knight Asura. This guy is now considering how to handle Asura. According to Hyun Sung, he wants to conceal his true self until the championship match. He wants to gauge the eye's potential. Asura had made this position prior to the start of the contest. Then he used his talent, Sweet Dreams. Asura was the target of Isil's first round of fire. However, the knight Asura demonstrated his prowess. With his movements, he quickly avoided the bullets. Isil threw his weapons because he recognized his disadvantage. Hyun Sung was aware of how professional athletes made decisions. They respond to the circumstances quickly. The mana shield was conjured by Isil, but knight Asura kept rushing in his direction. Isil's defense was breached by Asura's attack, and it struck him. Isil attempted a counterattack with his bullets, but RMC continued to block them. Then there were several slashes after that. Isil is completely powerless to respond in kind. The game was over after that. Asura the knight triumphed. Inside his waiting area, Lucifer kept watch. He was obviously irritated. He really wants to destroy Asura. Then he received a message. It's Serbal, one of the leaders of the Black Guild. Serbal warned Lucifer that their contract would be null and void if he lost like Isil. 
Now, even his career was in jeopardy. Polia was now the target of jokes from the Black Association members. Asura had already beaten his representative. They were now anticipating the performance of the other guild members. These guild leaders acknowledged Asura's abilities as well. They were aware that Asura had the capacity to surpass all other players in idea in terms of strength. Zerbal, however, remained convinced that Lucifer could defeat Asura. Still, his reputation was on the line. After further discussion, they decided to hold off and wait to see what would happen. Lucifer's matches also came to an instant end. He is indeed strong. He had a resounding victory in all of his matches. The host then declared that the first section was over. The MVP of these matches was Asura, who was displayed on the screen as well. The host was then informed that the matches would stop for a 10-minute break before continuing. Asura will conduct a preliminary interview. The host then began grilling RMC with questions. He was obviously tense, but he is forced to accept the job interview. Then, after engaging in combat with a professional player, he spoke. Pro athletes, according to him, were on an entirely different level. They were able to quickly adapt and change their battle tactics. He further stated that he has no intention of holding back. This is appropriate because he also respects the other players. Asura also gave an answer to a different query. He admitted to them that he didn't believe Ark was the best professional player in the competition. Hunsum made this statement and then left. The crowd was still in awe of his audacious claim. He was also dissatisfied with his reply. Hunsum was aware that he lost control. He now intends to simply give it his all in the upcoming rounds. Then he altered the shade of his mask. Due to his more erratic and rough movements, this form was given the name Hunter Asura. The next match for Hunsum was over quickly. He once more outplayed his challenger. He hurried back to his room after the game in order to avoid doing any interviews once more. He watched the third game of the tournament while taking a nap. It involved Ark, a professional athlete, and Yoon, Rin's sister, stood as his opponent. Yoon's talent was lauded along with her beauty by the host. There will be value in this game. They both wanted to win because the victor would face Hunsum in the following round. They began to argue right away. Their movements are difficult for the cameras to capture. These two players were both adept. Yoon started to step it up, but Ark stopped her in her tracks. Then Ark made his secret weapon available. Then ice was placed over his hand. He was also about to strike Yoon. Yoon was aware that she couldn't avoid the close-range attack. She then made the choice to give up. This girl acknowledged her loss. She is now more committed to growing and learning. Following the game, the crowd erupted once more. They both demonstrated exceptional talent. The knuckle weapons arc wielded astounded Hunsum as well. He also wants to give these a shot. These two are merely observing the games at the stadium in the meantime. They were happy to see Yoon, Rin's sister. Huna revealed to her friend that although her brother had also competed, he had already been eliminated. The mage then made the comment that something wasn't right. It was rumored that Huna's brother was stronger than Kaiser. As a result, immediate elimination is not possible. Huna gave it some thought before deciding. These two have just concluded that Huna's brother might be hiding and purposely dropping out of the competition. Another round has now come to an end. The host was in awe of what they were witnessing. Six of the top 16 players who met the qualification requirements all came from the Heroes Guild. These guys were even more potent than Lucifer, it was widely known. This is the Korea's unofficial ranker's strength. Rin traveled to the stadium with her guild mates. All of these guys were happy to have made it to the final rounds. Even Vern, who was a member of their guild, succeeded. Then he showed Rin who it was. Everyone was aware that the person they were looking at was the one who had defeated them all. Rin understood that she needed to triumph over this woman in order to recruit her. Siwa, meanwhile, was unaware of their presence. She had hewn so on her mind a lot. The hero guild became more eager to demonstrate their power as a result. This gave Rin more justification for defeating Siwa. When Siwa engaged in battle, the crowd also went absolutely crazy. Their hearts were more than sufficiently captured by her beauty and abilities. Vern was her next foe. This guy was eager to exact revenge as well. Siwa was irritated because she despises being watched. They both said a few things back and forth. Vern was aware that Rin would still be Siwa's next challenger if he failed to defeat her. Everyone in the hero guild is seeking retribution. After some time, Vern made his move on Siwa. Siwa was able to easily block Vern's attack, despite the fact that his huge sword had enough force to knock someone to the ground. Then he made another attempt to land an attack. However, a counterattack from Siwa's side knocked Vern back. Vern was aware that his usual attacks wouldn't be enough to take her down. He employed his greatest talent. His body disintegrated into shadowy specks that encircled Siwa. Vern then materialized in front of her prepared to strike. Siwa was not hit, though. Already behind him, she was. Vern was swiftly attacked and suffered a critical injury. He continued to struggle and attempt to parry some blows, but it was ineffective. He's starting to be encircled by chains. Siwa set her for another because he was immobile. Vern lost the battle. Against Siwa, he didn't stand a chance at all. 
The spectators at this game cannot believe what they witnessed. The way the players were engaged in combat clearly impressed the emperor, but he has his sights set on Asura among the competitors. Then, because he was interested in Asura, he gave the order to find out more about him. His top spies went and tried to find out more information about Asura at the same time. They started by breaking into the hotel where Asura frequently stayed. However, this guy heard a voice behind his back before he could even enter. Libius is here. The NPC was simply grinning at the spy. The spy was surprised when Libius' presence was not felt. This cannot be happening, the spy knew. He then moved to attack Libius. He emerged from behind Libius, but all of a sudden, he becomes immobile. Turning around, Libius spoke with the spy. This NPC was aware that he was working for the emperor. Then Libius cast a spell on the spy. He then informed the emperor that he must exercise greater caution to avoid upsetting them. They shouldn't mess with Libius' master, who they should respect. All of the spies then continued on their journey. Additionally, Libius reported this incident in a letter to his superiors. His superiors answered quickly, using this talking paper. They commanded Libius to stay out of battle at all costs. But the emperor has already received a warning from this NPC. Now all they have to do is watch for the emperor's response. A war could inevitably break out if things go bad. The authorities then instructed Libius to simply do as his master commanded. This NPC had a genuine passion for defending Hunsum. He is prepared to overthrow anyone, even the emperor. The spy had already delivered Libius' message to the emperor that evening. When the emperor learned this, he laughed. Furthermore, it was so loud that it broke some of the glass vases in his room. The spell that Libius had cast was also broken by this. They should serve the god of death and sleep because the emperor earned it. He became more intrigued by Asura as a result. Then he recalled an incident from his early years. He can only barely defeat one member of the pantheon. He had only ever been defeated by this one other man, the prophet of sleep and death. The emperor has been eager to engage this man in combat once more. He reasoned that he must be important if the pantheon was guarding Asura. He then asked someone to get in touch with the pope of the pantheon using this orb. The next day, whenever Libius greets Hunsum, he makes this face. He boasted that he had accomplished something worthy of his master's admiration. Then he revealed to Hunsum that the emperor had sent a spy to observe him last night. Hunsum informed Libius that he was taking part in the emperor's tournament. Libius knew he was in trouble right then. He was unaware of this competition. Even the emperor was under threat. He simply provided an explanation for this, claiming that he sent the spy back in peace. Libius informed the pope about this right away. The Pope was irritated because the Emperor had already contacted him. Libius should now clean his own sheet, he said. The NPC made a mistake. He is considering overthrowing the Emperor in an effort to solve this issue. Hunsum and Yellen were conversing in the background. He was told he could take his money out of YouTube at this time. Then, when he checked his account's balance, he discovered this. In his bank account, he has two million dollars. All Hunsum did was play Edia, so he was already content with this sum. Yet later, he picked up on something. When he confirmed it, he even dropped his phone. In just two weeks, he made two million dollars. He estimated it to be two million one. When the tournament resumed, the emperor was eager to watch the following match because Isura would be engaging in combat. Additionally, he was with the woman he had personally invited to watch the tournament with him. This is Uriah, the continent's archmage. She was kind of complaining about the participants' skills. This woman was very strong. The emperor then remarked that she must hold off until Isura's match. Aside from Uriah, the man the Panton was guarding piqued Uriah's curiosity. The game will now start after a short delay. It was the emperor's face Uriah saw. It was a thrilling experience. Once she sees Isura, the emperor predicted that she will comprehend how he is feeling. And this time, our MC has a magician's appearance. He also has a blue mask, which is a new color. The emperor was informed by Uriah that she was particularly strict with magicians. She in particular was the best magician on the entire continent. Isura's past as a swordsman was then revealed by the emperor. He hasn't been using this weapon during the matches. The emperor became more intrigued by this development. Likewise, Ark and Isura came together in the ring's center. Hunsen felt somewhat satisfied with his solution. A blue mask for his new fighting stance. The hosts have now officially kicked off the game. Isura wasn't playing a ruse. He had a real talent for magic. Ark began to be pursued by fireballs. The onlookers then referred to this form as Mage Isura. Ark was taken aback by this because he hadn't anticipated it. The ring then experienced a tremendous explosion. The crowd was jubilant due to Isura's magic ability. This guy isn't even level 100 yet. Hunsen was pleased with the abilities he acquired from the DP store. They were all appropriate for his current skill set and it will be more potent if he adds the dragon language skill. Then again, Ark appears to be unharmed. He is now moving in the direction of Isura. Isura decided not to use his strength against Ark because he was different from his previous foe. After that, he used another spell. Ark was having trouble keeping up. 
Isura has been using all of his mana to cast spells. Isura eventually received some clean hits. The body of Ark began to suffer from the effects of the fireballs. However, Ark was still determined and chose to keep his distance from Isura rather than cutting it off. He was aware that confronting Isura would put him in a much more dangerous situation. Ark's HP had fallen to under 30%. He doesn't really care about winning, all he wants is to score at least one hit. He jumped up with what strength he had left to avoid Isura's fireballs. He then reasoned that Isura had run out of mana, so he was prepared to dash in as soon as he landed. This man was willing to take a chance. But as soon as that happened, flames surrounded him. He was held captive by Isura's magical enchantment. Black Ember, a magic of six stars. This ability functions like a landmine, and this spell's destructive power was unmatched. Ark then collapsed, sending the stadium into another frenzy. The strongest professional player, Ark, was defeated by Isura. Uriah was asked by the Emperor if it was possible for Isura to cast spells. Isura could do it if she possesses the chantless and dragon language skills, the woman responded. These two monsters were obviously in awe of Isura's talent. Isura is someone they both want to take on as an apprentice. This man's power really has no bounds. Hyun Sung met Ark after the game and congratulated him on a job well done. Isura is then praised by Ark, who promises to follow him to whichever guild he decides to join. Another fanboy has been won by this guy. In the remaining games, Hero Guild won the competition. Soon enough, the main event took place. Han Siwa was up against Rin. Hyun Sung was eager for this game as well. He is eager to learn how strong these two are. The first person to act was Rin. Siwa's counterattack was her response as well. Siwa used her chains after they had separated a bit. Rin was aware that these chains weren't the same as the ones Vern received. These resemble the chains of Isura more. She did this because she was aware that she couldn't stop them with her sword. Rin allowed the chains to strike her. Siwa slashed wildly at Rin after losing his bearings. The spectators believed that the game was already over. But as the chaos subsided, Rin emerged and sprinted in the direction of Siwa. These two women traded vicious blows and didn't appear to be willing to back down. Rin was then struck by this black blade. The skill sleeping demon scythe belonged to Siwa. The enemy will fall asleep for 5 seconds thanks to this scythe. Rin was taken and by it. If Rin was farther away, Siwa wouldn't have the opportunity to use this skill in Hyun Sung's opinion. He made the decision to get ready knowing that this match was nearly over. But then Libius showed up next to him. He appears to be keeping Hyun Sung safe. Also, a rift in space was visible. Uriah was there. This lady paid Hyun Sung a visit. She then declared audaciously that she would take Hyun Sung on as her apprentice. RMC was visibly stunned. Even this woman is unknown to him. She continues by professing her regret for entering so suddenly. Hyun Sung was speaking with Uriah when a notification started to appear. Just by surviving Uriah's presence for five seconds, he earned a victory. She went on to say that Hyun Sung should call her the disaster and further introduced herself. She also bragged about being the continent's strongest mage. Hyun Sung was aware of her considerable strength. Despite being overleveled, Libius is unable to stand his ground in front of her. Uriah made the decision to leave Hyun Sung alone after a few more introductions. These two felt relieved after that. Libius barely makes it through this encounter. Hyun Sung made the decision to learn more about Uriah after that. Later, he discovered that people were actually passing away just from feeling her presence. Hyun Sung is currently unsure of what to do. The strongest mage just asked him to be her apprentice. On the other hand, Uriah returned to the emperor. The emperor then made fun of her for speaking impolitely to Hyun Sung. Finally, the last game for the players with levels under 100 began. This contest was between Lucifer and Asura. This time, RMC wore his blue mask. It irritated Lucifer. He believed that Asura was making fun of him. This person gave a powerful blow on the horn to signal the beginning of the match. Lucifer sped up his approach to Asura. He wants to reduce the separation between them. He is sure that he could withstand spells with one to two stars of power. Asura then waved his fingers, and Lucifer noticed some dark flame. This new spell from Asura struck him. Attacks from Asura also had one meaning. They were successful. Above Lucifer, there were some nightmare stacks. Then Asura struck Lucifer's body with his Nocturne, Skill, and Black Lightning. The entire Block Association Guild was shocked by this. Lucifer had nightmares before he fell asleep. Then he went down. Asura believed that Lucifer was inferior to Ark in strength. Again, the stadium erupted in hysteria. This man defeated a professional player in under a minute. The award ceremony was held following that. These guys took first place in the category for their skill level. One of the winners was Han Siwei. Then someone declared that Uriah would be the one presenting the prizes. And then a dark portal emerged. This man ran for his life as soon as this lady appeared. The emperor was now concerned that Uriah might make a mistake. She began by saluting Asura. The moment RMC was about to reply, a notification appeared. 
he possesses a narcolepsy skill, and as usual, Asura dozed off as a result. Uriah is completely unaware of what is going on. Asura collapsed, leaving the stadium empty and silent. They believed that Asura was killed by Uriah's voice. This woman was now terrified. She only conversed with Asura. Hai and Seung eventually woke up. He is, however, currently inside the Imperial Palace. Then Libius showed up and greeted his owner. Hai and Seung took care to ensure that the Emperor and Uriah understood what had actually occurred. Once Asura was awake, a servant went to tell him that he would be escorted. There can be no more delays because this is an order from the Emperor. Hai and Seung believed that as a sign of respect for the Emperor, he shouldn't wear his mask. Libius, on the other hand, was ready to safeguard Hai and Seung in case something unfortunate occurred. Hai and Seung found this annoying because he was aware that he ought to avoid offending the Emperor. While he spoke with the Emperor, he asked Libius to leave. Then Hai and Seung went into the Emperor's chamber. The Emperor greeted RMC and informed Hai and Seung that he doesn't require any formalities. Alongside the Emperor was Uriah. The Emperor was still berating her for her rash and careless actions. Hai and Seung is unsure of how to respond as the two argue with one another. The Emperor then officially congratulated Hai and Seung on winning the contest. Additionally, he informed Hai and Seung that there was a more significant question he needed to ask him before giving him his reward. Hai and Seung was informed once more by the Emperor that Uriah was serious about taking him on as her apprentice. He also mentioned wanting to take Hai and Seung under his wing. Then, our MC became silent. With these two strong NPCs who desired to be his masters, we left Hoonsung. The Emperor and Uriah both expressed interest in Hoonsung's potential. Then, Armik began to consider what would happen to him if he were to become someone's apprentice. Hoonsung easily declined the offer as a result of his thoughts of control and being trapped. Hoonsung apologized to these two NPCs in his speech. They inquired as to why they thought Hoonsung would soon deteriorate. The Emperor didn't understand. He believed that if he presented anyone with this kind of opportunity, they wouldn't consider turning it down. Here, Hoonsung gave them the explanation. He claimed to be a wonder to them. He relishes freedom and exploration. And if he chooses to become an apprentice, he cannot have this life. All of them fell silent after this speech. Our MC believed that his speech was successful. After all, the man whose speech he had read gave it. He made serious preparations for this response. However, he then heard something. Hoonsung is unsure of what is causing these two to start laughing. He was beginning to feel ashamed. He believed everything would turn out just fine. The emperor then explained the skill book to Hoonsung. Hoonsung doesn't have to stay in his kingdom to learn his teachings because they already possess this thing. Uriah continued to laugh off to the side. Hoonsung became even more ashamed. He didn't believe that this approach was practical. The emperor provided additional insight into the skill book. Although this would take too much time, they could still complete the lengthy process. The emperor further explained that despite having the skill book, they would not impart all of their knowledge to Hoonsung. The master will only impart the bare minimum, it is up to the apprentice to deepen the lessons learned. Uriah stopped laughing and assured Hoonsung that after becoming their apprentice, they would not take away his freedom. They added that Hoonsung would have the freedom to enhance and personalize the talent they had spent their entire lives developing. The emperor further clarified that a disciple was a person to whom he could impart his knowledge. Additionally, Hoonsung may occasionally be called by his master, but this won't stop him from continuing his adventures. The emperor then began the process of converting Hoonsung into his disciple. This is a promise on which even his emperor title was bet. He will also lose his title if he ever breaks this promise. Uriah followed suit, and when they both asked Hoonsung about their offer once more, she accepted it without hesitation. He now had the titles of Disciple of the Iron-Blooded Emperor and of Uriah. Each title increased all of his stats by 100 points and gave him 1,000 reputation points. The Disciple of Two Heavens was also given to Hoonsung. Along with the titles and the improved stats, Hoonsung also received some bonuses. He acquired a passive ability that reduced the mana requirements and increased the attack power of all swordsmen's skills by 50%. He also acquired a skill that reduced his need for mana by 50% and increased magic power by 50% for all of his spells. His time spent learning new skills will be cut in half as well. He also received another set of plus 10 stats. Hoonsung's happiness caused some tears to fall down his face. Additionally, the Emperor gave him this book. RMC accepted it without hesitation because he was aware that it belonged to the legendary rank. This is Charon's Manual of Swordsmanship. Hoonsung will be able to practice the Emperor's swordsmanship as a result. Hoonsung used the book right away. This is the skill's content. Hoonsung will have the ability to inflict bleeding as a passive effect, and it can stack like the Nightmare skill. It also possesses the active skill stab. This attack only has a 10 second cooldown and can breach a target's defense. It also has a slicing impact. Following that, 
The emperor also gave Hunsung the option to select any item as long as it was of the unique grade or lower. The emperor requested that Yuri bring Hunsung to the room that housed all of his empire's priceless possessions. Both of them entered the portal after it was opened by her. The priest can now stop hiding, the emperor declared next. It turns out that Libya was simply hiding out and waiting for his opportunity to kill the emperor. But then the two began to discuss something. Yuri and Hunsung were en route to the storeroom in the meantime. Yuri gave these two books to Hunsung as they were traveling. The first book, which is a legendary item, was titled Introduction to Gravity, 1 Star to 9 Stars. It also raises the user's intelligence stat by 100 and teaches gravity magic. The other book was a legendary item as well and was titled The Gravity Meter Skill Book. Hunsen will be able to acquire the gravity meter skill as a result. The books were immediately put to use by RMC, who immediately visualized this scene. And the man had already begun to dream. Yuri continued after that. She presented Hunsung with a collection of her own handwritten skill books. She quickly ran to the storeroom to deliver some items to Hunsung after that. Hunsung believed that Yuri was overjoyed that she now had a disciple. This strong mage continued to be kind. Our MC received a number of items and artifacts. He began to smile avariciously. He was also relishing the lavish treatment. Yuri received the same grin. They actually made the ideal pair. She then led Hunsung into a room that contained all of the exceptional great items and above. Yuri advised Hunsung to make a decision right away because staying here for too long could result in trouble. She also permitted Hunsung to look for anything he desired. After turning to look around, our MC suddenly pulled out his sword. His sword's relic, which was attached, began to misbehave. Iris failed to produce it. He used the DP store for the first time to purchase this item. When Hunsung noticed this object hovering around, he first assumed that perhaps another failed Iris product was present. The third Iris failed product also boosts the item stats to which it was attached, just like the first. Yuri was informed by Hunsung that this was the item he desired. Then a fresh quest materialized. Although Hunsung was given the assignment, the rewards were still stashed away. These two then walked out of the room. Hunsung left the palace with him. As they continued to discuss his talent, the emperor and Yuri were happy that Hunsung had accepted their offers. The emperor then mentioned that he was aware of the iris failure that Yuri had given him. Yuri then gave the excuse that she was unaware of the item in question and made fun of the emperor for being frugal. The iron-blooded emperor was gracious and impressed that Hunsung selected item number three from among all the items in that room. In the meantime, Hunsung entered Hanam, the first granary city of the empire, to look for stronger monsters. He began to select the tools he would need for this hunt. He caught sight of Ellie's stick. He can still use it despite the fact that it is a special great item that was made for magic skills and needs level 200 to be worn. He also noticed that this Killian's ring had the same level 200 prerequisite as the previous one. When these two items were brought out, a warning stated that Hunsung may have mixed up these two items. Hunsung briefly considered doing so before deciding to YOLO out. He successfully combined these two things. This brand new, heroic grade item known as Ayla and Killian's staff was given to RMC. In a sense, the effects of the two items were combined by this staff. It reduces the time required to cast magic spells while increasing the user's magic power by 500%. Additionally, it permits the daily use of the spell Abby's Curse. Hunsung reasoned that this item should be at least of legendary grade given all the bonus effects it provides. Hunsung made the decision to put his new tools and abilities to the test. In this wide open field, this guy made use of the gravity meter ability. Then, the NPCs and other players noticed something above their heads after a large magic circle nearly completely encircled the playing area. The meter is enormous and is falling into their town. After a short while, there was a huge explosion. The meter landed close to the town and grazed a portion of it. People were in a panic. Some of them needed healers and were yelling for assistance. An alert appeared saying that the Hanum City's city wall had been destroyed, which raised Hunsung's karma score. But he also advanced in level. Hunsung received a new skill after finally reaching level 100 and above. The skills Thanano's alarm clock and Thanano's postmonition were added to the repertoire of the RMC. Additionally, the second trace for his main quest was now accessible. RMC stopped in his tracks and remained where he was. He still finds it hard to believe what happened. The gravity meter skill already had some range, but it had more destructive power. And while he was still attempting to understand the situation, his DP points were being taken away because he was currently accruing so many karma points. No one is aware that he summoned the meter because he traded his karma points for DP points. Due to the fact that only Uriah was able to summon a meter, those in his immediate vicinity argued that she was to blame for this. After that, Hunsen was relieved, but he had learned his lesson. He won't test his abilities without first reading a description of them. After that, Hunsung relocated and made the decision to test out his newly acquired skills. The Thanano's alarm clock was the first skill, and it is a god-grade skill. 
Boonsung can now set a time for him to awaken whenever his narcolepsy skill activates as a result of its passive effect. Its active skill causes all creatures within 100 meters of him to perish after consuming 10,000 DP points. Hoonsung's smile indicates that he really enjoyed using this new, overpowered skill. This Thanano's postmonition was its other talent. It has a two-hour cooldown and is an active skill. Every time Hoonsung employs this talent, there's a chance that three dreams will be set off. He will receive a buff that will double his attack damage, increase his experience gain, and increase his gold and item rate. Despite the fact that this skill has a random chance, all of its outcomes were in Hoonsung's favor. Hoonsung then reasoned that all of these abilities were designed to help him level up quickly. He recalled his primary objective. Regarding the second trace, it stated that he had to overthrow a demon king in the Phyllis Kingdom. The king transformed himself into a demon because he was so fixated on becoming an immortal. This quest has no time restriction, in contrast to the first. Just getting through this will get Hoonsung to level 150. Then, Hoonsung began formulating his strategy for completing this quest. He reasoned that since it has a level cap of 150, he could just concentrate on leveling up and then simply clear it when he was already close to that level. Hoonsung then extended both of his hands. The environment began to tremble. Once more, this guy called forth a large number of meters. He intends to level up quickly by speedrunning. To repeatedly use this skill, he also began consuming a lot of mana potions. This block guild leader, in the meantime, was still incensed about what transpired at the tournament. Lucifer, his representative, also abandoned him after he lost the competition. Then he ordered his secretary to find Asura and to discover Lucifer's whereabouts. At Thanano's temple, this person had just welcomed a visitor. The Pope of Thanano's was this new character. The guest was none other than Han Siwa, the saintess of Thanano's. The Pope was the one who invited Siwa to their temple because he needed her to complete a task. Siwa must visit the present empire. This is the same empire as the monarch with iron blood. The Pope anticipated a response from the emperor. It was a possession that, when the time comes, will be crucial to Hyunsun. With that, Siwa has been given a brand new quest. It has no time restriction and was in a rank quest. The saintess then walked out of the temple. After that, the Pope was left alone once more, but he is relieved that the temple will look after that item for their god. Hyunsung has kept up his effort to level up quickly in the meantime. He had only been level 148 for seven days following the Empire competition. This guy has been working hard to advance. He decided that now that he was prepared for the quest, it was also time to master the Emperor's swordsmanship technique. Hyunsung switched from using his staff to his sword. It's like a change of classes, and after that they went inside the castle. But the demon king was greeted by a familiar voice before they could enter his castle. Apostle is who it is. Hyunsung became irritated just by looking at him, but he was there to inform him of the quest. The wyvern's clone's quest was easier than this one. That is the reason Libius was present with him at the time. About the history of this kingdom, although the previous king was reputed to be strong and modest, his son was the issue. He was disgusting and envious of his father's success. When he finally killed his father and ascended to the throne, their kingdom began to fall under his rule. The Philo's kingdom, which was the current empire's neighbor at the time and was actively expanding its territory, resisted being conquered. However, the result was clear. Philo's kingdom lost when the iron-blooded monarch took charge of the current empire. However, as the soldiers entered the castle, they came across the demon king's lone piece of armor. Using it, the desperate king struck a deal with the demon. He wanted his kingdom to stand forever. The history of this kingdom is as follows. The emperor eventually gave up because the king kept rising from the dead no matter how many times he was killed. Because of this, no one has ever dared to invade and overthrow this kingdom. The immortal king has control over demonic magic. The apostle continued by stating that Libius' presence with Hyunsung for this mission was due to this. Hyunsung realized what was going on. Compared to the wyvern's clone, this was very challenging. The Apostle cautioned Hyunsung once more because he was aware of how much RMC enjoys these types of conflicts. After making a few more comments, the Apostle left. Hyunsung, however, was delighted rather than terrified because he would have the opportunity to become a new widow as a result of this. Hyunsung has now officially begun this quest with that. He then received a side quest in addition to his main quest. This led to a 1.5-fold increase in all experience points and item drops. And as soon as he arrived at the castle, these demonic guards began charging towards him. Hyunsung effortlessly parried their blows. He pulled out his dagger and used his strike skill. The soldier flew to the wall after taking just one blow. Hyunsung wasn't prepared for this level of power. He noticed the emperor's powerful swordsmanship ability right away. Then the celebration began. Despite the fact that they could now surround Hyunsung, the soldiers began to flee. However, Hyunsung used his magic bullets just as they were about to flee. 
The black lightning then struck those who had been heated by the bullets. Hyun Sung next employed a talent known as floating domain psychokinesis. His weapons began to float, and he dispersed them against these soldiers. He also applied the brand new slice ability. Hyun Sung has been murdering each and every one of these soldiers, but they appeared to go on forever. Libius is still helping to heal and support Hyun Sung in the meantime. Our MC got irritated, changed his class once more, and recovered his mana. Back in Major Sura, he was. And once more, this guy used the gravity meter. It's an eyeball. In the center of the castle, the meter collapsed. Libius was ecstatic about what was happening. The castle was currently ablaze. The castle was beginning to fall apart. The commander then reported that he would take care of the ambassador for this empire. And the demon king was the person to whom he was reporting. The demon king grinned slightly as he waited impatiently for an intrusion. Returning to the evil soldiers, the ones who were now terrified were they. They were desperate and lacked knowledge on how to defeat Hyun Sung. All they did was charge at him. Hyun Sung, however, persisted in killing them one by one. Our MC then noticed this room, either with magic or by using his amazing swordmanship. Despite being hot to the meter, it was still intact. Libius, who was attempting to recruit more soldiers for his master, was standing behind him. Hyun Sung was aware that he was completely pressed for time, and at that moment, this commander showed up. He identified himself as Mindo, the kingdom of Falao's commander. He informed Hyun Sung that he will no longer permit him to harm any of our people. Hyun Sung went and engaged the demon commander because he knew he couldn't let him stop him. Due to Hyun Sung's talent, the commander was being pushed back. He used his greatest talent out of desperation. Before the commander's sword even touched Hyun Sung, RMC employed a different technique. He can teleport quickly, that's his talent. And he emerged in the commander's rear. The commander saw Hyun Sung coming and began to swing his sword in his direction. Our MC blocked the attack because he didn't have enough time to dodge. Hyun Sung was still being attacked by the commander. Until he was given the chance when the commander's sword was thrown out, Hyun Sung was able to parry or block each of the commander's blows. Hyun Sung slashed the commander right away using his heavenly thrust talent. Additionally, he employed his nocturne talent, striking the commander with black lightning. The commander was overthrown at that point, but he continues to hope that his king will live. The remaining soldiers began to flee for their demonic lives after witnessing this fight. But our MC had already begun to attack them. Hyun Sung then employed his telekinesis talent to gather every item that each of these soldiers dropped. Libis was still in awe of how Hyun Sung wiped out every one of his foes. These two eventually entered the bus room after that. Already there was a lot of pressure. The demon king awaited them with patience. Hyun Sung was already aware of this demonic king's power. He questioned Libis as to whether or not he could actually stop his immortality, and this disciple replied that he could seal it. Then the demon king got to his feet. This king's height was no laughing matter. He was four meters tall. This boss, in the opinion of Hyun Sung, would move much more quickly than the wyvern clone. Hyun Sung made use of his belt of dreams effects. He had to be more cautious going up against this boss now. Libius was working diligently to seal the demon king's immortality ability during this time, and he eventually completed his chant. Hyun Sung hurriedly ran in the direction of the boss because he couldn't afford to waste any opportunities. But then this took place. In front of Hyun Sung, the demonic king bowed. Our MC was taken by surprise. The demonic king begged Hyun Sung to take his life. It also began sobbing. This deeply disappointed Hyun Sung. The demon king had had enough, he discovered. He wanted his lengthy stay inside this abandoned castle to come to an end. Hyun Sung was still displeased that he was denied the opportunity to engage in combat with a foe more powerful than the wyvern's clone. Libyaus believed that his master was so strong and powerful that his adversaries were already trembling in fear of him. Hyun Sung decided to comply with the Demon King's request and raised his sword because he knew he had to. But a series of alerts came out before his sword even touched the Demon King. It claims that the legendary egg he acquired in the distant past yearned to leave his storage. Hyun Sung was still perplexed, so the egg made the decision to hatch on its own. The egg was rushing. To escape, it even imitated Hyun Sung's telekinesis talent. The egg questioned Hyun Sung about its ability to absorb the Demon King's response. And the egg will acquire the Demon King's power after absorbing it. Hyun Sung was re-asked by this egg. The egg was genuinely interested in answering RMC's question about its purpose when he tried it a second time. Libyas responded that the quest has nothing to do with the Demon King's strength when Hyun Sung asked him about it. Hyun Sung decided it was okay to let the egg absorb it after that. After receiving permission to take the fragment, the egg approached the Demon King. The Demon King had no desire to engage in combat, so the egg quietly carried out its mission. The fulfillment of his wish made the Demon King happy as well. However, the egg then began to hatch. What Hyun Sung saw astounded him. The enigmatic egg has now successfully hatched, and this infant dressed as a demon emerged from it. The baby's cuteness enthralled both Libius and Hyun Sung. Additionally, this baby started speaking right away. Hyun Sung was aware of this creature's status. 
it was a legendary plus plus, making it more potent than the Emperor's swordplay and the gravity meteor. The baby bragged about its charm after hearing this. This was the creature's pet information right here. It has a growth type rank but no name as of yet. Its stats and level were still unknown, but it already possessed a wide range of abilities. This pet was significantly more potent than typical pets because it also possessed the Nano's power. The growth type on its rank, which indicates that it can evolve up to the rank of a demigod, was noticed by Hyunsung. This pet can consume a bus soul once per in-game day and also has the soul gluttony skill. Additionally, it has the ability to absorb an enemy's skill, which has a 30-game day cooldown. Having the ability to copy skills, an overpowered pet for an overpowered NC also has this feature. Hyunsung was already in awe of the creature because it could mimic his ability to speak dragon language or chant less. Additionally, this thing also possesses the mortality skill. It has a 10-second cooldown and will be instantly revived. Following the reading of all the skills, the pet embraced Hyunsun right away. It was ecstatic because of how cool its master was. The notification that Hyunsun had finished his quest appeared at the same time. Likewise, our NC attained level 150. In addition to revealing Hyunsung's reward and the next trace's clues, Thanano's disciple also made an appearance. The disciple was about to do that when he noticed Hyunsung's new pet. Its cuteness enthralled the disciple as well. Even so, he gave this tiny thing praise for assimilating the Demon King's fragment. The disciple eventually gave Hyunsung his rewards. However, our NC appeared dissatisfied with what he saw. These were his current picks for the rewards, a figurehead referred to as the Conductor of Death in the Jade Mat of God. Having been instructed to pick quickly by the disciple, Hyunsung was already irritated. Please bear with me as I want you guys to understand the gist of these skills. These were the descriptions for the rewards. The Conductor of Death skill was a live ability that for one minute cancels out any damage the user receives. The user's attack power is also increased, but there's a catch, they aren't allowed to use any magical abilities. When using this skill, 5 bus souls or 5 levels will also be lost. Even though he could only use this skill once a month, Hyunsung was impressed with it because he knew it would be useful. The disciple then interrupted Hyunsung as he was reading the descriptions to let him know what his next assignment was. Hyunsung was informed by the disciple that he must travel to the reigning empire. He needs to meet the emperor and get two artifacts. Hyunsung was also forewarned by the disciple about the emperor. He is unaware that Hyunsung has already met him and that he is the same emperor who is now RMC's master. This data was confirmed by Hyunsung using Libius. The disciple is completely clueless. RMC has decided to return to the current empire with this. Libius, on the other hand, believed he was overlooking something crucial. Hyunsung has apparently completed the story dungeon, according to notifications. The moment they leave, the castle will also be destroyed. Hyunsung eventually returned to the present empire. He learned that the relics he needed had already been sent to Thanatos' pope. Han Siwa previously received this quest, so it was the same. But she brought them to the temple rather than giving them to Hyunsung. Libius apologized to his master and bowed his head. It was initially his idea to do this. Hyunsung discovered that if he ran at full speed, it would take him 30 in-game days to reach the temple. Hyunsung was irritated by this because he is unable to travel there using a teleportation scroll. Then the emperor offered him a flying boat so he could travel there more quickly. Hyunsung gladly accepted the proposal. He'll use this time to train while he's on the road. The emperor will then let Hyunsung know when the flying boat is prepared. A brief conclusion to this chapter. The animal requested a name from Hyunsung. Hyunsung initially believed the infant to be a boy before learning that she was a girl. Hyunsung made an effort to comfort herself because, let's face it, she actually had a boyish appearance. She was overjoyed when Hyunsung gave her the name Fanon after that. Meanwhile, Rin was perusing the numerous applications that had been submitted since the competition at the Hero Guild Guildhouse, and Haiyan and Hyunsung interrupted her as she was doing that. Hyunsung has a message for her. This matter concerned Hyunsung's brother. It turns out that he wanted to investigate and tour the guild first before formally joining them. Hearing this startled Hyunsung. She's already given this some thought. Because RNC previously informed her that he knew someone from their guild, she surmises that Hyunsung's brother was actually Hyunsung. Hyunsung was aware that her sister was still unaware of this. She speculated that perhaps Hyunsung intended to reveal his Sura status to his sister. Furthermore, the girl is unaware that Asura is her older brother. Yoon then said that she too was interested in meeting Hyunsung's brother. She arranged for Rin to meet Hyunsung's brother as well. Immediately following that meeting, Hyunsung entered her brother's room. She informed her of it and said that tomorrow, Rin and Hyunsung will meet. Hyunsung really does intend to reveal his gaming identity to him. Our NC happily agreed and said he would see them the following day. Hyunsung has since kept up his grind and training in preparation for more. Since then, he has been employing the gravity meter. Hyunsung is already level 160 at the moment. 
Due to Libius' uses wide-ranging provocation ability on the nearby monsters, this process became much simpler. Hyunsung then informed his pupil that he had to leave right away. Libius became depressed. He is still suffering from his previous error regarding the relics. As long as Hyunsung is still present at the meeting, Libitius must also remain hidden. Fauna was also told this by RNC. She made a commitment to keep quiet during the journey. Libius tried his luck at clinging to his master after witnessing this adorable scene. But he only received this enormous explosion. Hyunsung met her brother at this bakery cafe. Yoon and Rin will be delayed because they must complete a task first, she informed Hyunsung. Yoon sent Hyunsung a private message at the same time informing him of their meeting with him. She gave Hyunsung some extra time in case he needed to tell Hyunsung something first. Hyunsung then became aware of Fauna. The cuteness of this pet won Hyunsung over. When Hyunsung informed her that she could now speak, she was still holding her voice. Hyunsung was given an introduction by this infant. Fauna received the soul candy from Hyunsung while they waited for Rin and Yoon. Fauna thanked her master and ate the soul candy with joy. And at last, these two showed up. Hyunsung greeted them both when he saw them. Rin seems unable to accept what she saw. Hyunsung was Hyunsung's brother. About to introduce them to one another was Hyunsung. She was about to hear something from Hyunsung and Rin. But then, something struck Hyunsung. A heater for the cafe. And Hyunsung protected them from the falling objects. Then someone yelled out Asura's name. They were all startled by this. Yura was it. And she was only trying to find her follower. With that, Hyunsung was perplexed. In addition to introducing herself as her brother's teacher, Yura also referred to herself as an Asura. Hyunsung met with his sister, these two women, and other family members. However, when someone entered, we realized it was Yura. Greeting Hyunsung, she referred to him as an Asura. Hyunsung was now perplexed. Asura was what she was looking for, so she quickly scanned the area. The people outside the cafe followed suit. They were perplexed as well because Yura also referred to this player as one of her disciples. If that was even feasible, they questioned. Hyunsung put on his mask to conceal his identity after that. His sister, however, noticed this. Yura questioned her pupil about failing to go see his master. Hyunsung was still in a state of shock and was completely frozen. These two sisters learned that the brother of their guildmate was a follower of two of the five heavens on the continent. RMC asked his master if they could go somewhere else because he felt very uneasy about how much attention they had already drawn. He also introduced his master to Hyunsung, the two sisters, and himself. She then made the decision to include them in her travel plans, and all of them were instantly teleported. Tears began to well up in the cafe owner's eyes. However, the branch of the disaster division was quick to offer him compensation for his destroyed cafe. They were also startled by the man's sudden rush of panicked aggression as he approached them. Libius was it. He was sobbing that he was unable to follow Hyunsung. He was excluded. They were left looking at his pitiful face as these guys. Hyunsung's pet, who was traveling with Urea as well, was on the verge of throwing up in the meantime. They were all currently gathered at Urea's lab in the Imperial capital. A skill book was immediately given to Urea's disciple. Since she felt more giving than the emperor, she began bragging in front of Hyunsung. These ladies were in awe of this scene. RMC rejoiced at obtaining a legendary skill once more. Meter writing was the name of this one. This ability, which was created by Urea, enables the user to travel using the gravity meter. It uses half of the user's maximum mana. The cooldown for this skill is 30 game days. This skill is still a little clumsy, but it will really help Hyunsung get places quickly, said Urea. She prevented the emperor from giving him a flying wyvern and gave him this skill instead. Urea and Hyunsung were talking casually about dragons as if they were too common, which is why Hyuna, Yoon, and Rin were making these facial expressions. RMC made the decision to bid his master farewell after that. He thanked her once more for her kind gift. Urea was delighted to help her disciple. When he returned to see her, she would even teach him a new skill. These four all sighed as they left Urea's home. Hyuna likewise demanded an explanation from her brother. The fact that our RMC was overpowered had nothing to do with his sister. They all proceeded to the hero guild's base. Hyuna was able to confirm that her brother was really the same as the Urea she had grown to love at this point. Her brother was a student of two of this continent's most formidable NPCs. She still finds it hard to believe everything she learned. Hyunsung was occupied with expressing his regret to Rin and Yoon for the chaos of today. He will now receive a private tour of their guild from Rin. These four players now began exploring the guild's grounds on foot. Hyunsung observed how highly revered they were by every NPC in this area. These NPCs were crucial because they served as the first line of defense in case their base was attacked. Hyunsung also learned that the top guild, Shinho, was merely a division of the Hero Guild. This indicated that the top player on the Korean server was a former member of the Hero Guild. Since he was the only person Rin could rely on to run the Shinho Guild, she gave him the authority. Eden was also a cousin of Rin. She also said that everyone in the Shinho Guild was aware that they belonged to the Hero Guild. 
Then they were advised to transfer all of the talented players from Shoney. The same factor led to Yoon's relationship with them. They kept going until Hyun Sung spotted something. It was this passageway that was illuminated in green. He was informed by Rin that their guild was the owner of this dungeon. There is a location inside the castle like this in every guild territory. A secret dungeon was constantly being constructed, but not everyone was allowed to casually enter the dungeon. She informed Hyun Sung that there were monsters with levels 300 and higher in this dungeon. When they needed to level up or prepare for something, they used this. Hyun Sung was now considering the prison located inside the Imperial Palace. He will undoubtedly request access to the dungeon from the Emperor. In comparison to regular dungeons, these ones offer a lot more experience, said Rin and Yoon. Our MC made the decision to ask his masters about this after finishing the main scenario in order to level up quickly. The castle wall was the next stop on the tour. This served as one of their primary lines of defense. A cliff's edge was chosen for the castle as protection against flying monsters. Hyunsun compared this to an impregnable fortress and pondered whether he would ever be able to possess something similar. They all heard a loud noise coming from outside just as they were about to move on to the next location. The defenses of this fortress at a high level were being breached by something. The wall's resilience was deteriorating as well. Rin was aware of the intruder and that they needed to move quickly. The castle wall on the opposite side was already trembling. When Rin and her group arrived, the NPCS alerted them to the strange activity beneath the castle wall. These four were stunned by what they saw when they glanced over the edge to see what was really going on. Yoon wondered who the intruder was when he realized that it was none other than RMC's most devoted employee. As he watched this high-level NPC breach the defense of the most formidable guild on the Korean server, words came out of Hyun Sung's mouth. He yelled for Libius to climb the castle wall out of rage. This one climbed as if there were no barriers at all, immediately following his master. Libius disregarded every magic trap. Hyun Sung smacked the sheet out of Libius, but his master was already casting his gravity heavenly trust skill. But this NPC happily accepted it. He then began to apologize to Rin once more. Hyun Sung became even more enraged when Libius questioned why his master was acting in this manner. Since the damage caused by Libius was comparable to level 300 monsters attacking the castle for an hour, Rin began to wonder what level this NPC was. Libius did nothing but bang his head against the wall, which terrified the woman greatly. The tour was over, so Rin informed Hyun Sung that they should head to the meeting room. They then all gathered inside this room. After a brief pause, Rin announced that she couldn't accept Hyun Sung into their guild. Yoon and Hyun Sung were shocked by this. Rin explained why this was the case in detail. Hyun Sung was perplexed as well because he had been rejected. Another meeting was taking place during this time at the Veldorn Kingdom. It was the guild's block leaders. This one continued to mock Zerbal for his excessive self-confidence. The other leaders were already discussing how Zerbal wasn't qualified to lead the Black Hunter Guild. They were considering obtaining that position from him as well. But since the other three lost a lot of money in the competition, only one of the four leaders in this prison would be able to run the Black Hunter Guild. This lady right here knew that no one would stand a chance against Asura, so she only sent one representative to the competition. Her decision helped her save a lot of money. Additionally, they believed that the Asura incident had improved their reputations within their primary guild. They then moved on to the next subject. Because they knew the Shinhua Guild belonged to the Hero Guild, they were worried about them. All of them wound up in Shinhua after some of them sent spies to infiltrate. This woman pondered whether their structure wasn't more akin to a subsidiary guild than them. Additionally, they verified the familial ties between the two strong guild's leaders. Some even went so far as to say that Rin was a conglomerate's daughter. The only issue was that they were unfamiliar with Rin's face and were unable to identify which conglomerate family she belonged to. They will also postpone all of their plans as a result. This action was supported by all of the other leaders. They do not want to attack a subject they are ignorant of. However, they have some professional gamers with them, so if they had the time, they could easily win this battle. They only had Asura to worry about. If the player joined the hero guild, the man questioned. However, Asura was already an emperor of Yurei's disciple. Warren was confident that the hero guild wouldn't try to capture Asura either. These two leaders supported their claim because they were aware that Asura was already making a sizable sum of money and could defeat nearly all of the boss monsters on his own. Junju continued by speculating that the hero guild might decide to work with Asura as a partner or a subsidiary. But H. were confident that Rin would resist such pressure because she also comes from a conglomerate family. She even declared to everyone that she would stake her entire financial future on this return to the hero guild. Yun believed her sister was misinterpreting something. Libyaos was also enraged because he believed that this location was insufficient for even his master. Hyun Sung believed that this NPC was the reason he was being rejected. Rin then expressed regret for misrepresenting himself. She believed that, rather than the other way around, Hyun Sung's abilities were really beyond what her guild could handle. 
The first was that Hyun Sung was already an Imperial Charon disciple. He was Yurei's pupil as well, and she had a point here. Hyun Sung already possessed more insight than the rest of the players, and his YouTube channel made this widely known around the world. She believed that if Hyun Sung allowed himself to be a member of a guild, it would reflect poorly on his masters. Yun nodded as she reflected on Yurei's deeds. Rin was upfront about her motivations, but later she asked for a partnership instead, and RMC was interested in this notion. Hyun Sung should only have his own one-person guild, she advised, but she will still grant him access to the Heroes Guild dungeon. She could also help him if Hyun Sung needed extra people for a raid. Rin also said that she could provide him with any information they learned about the monsters and special prices for expensive goods. Hyun Sung questioned what he would be giving to her guild in exchange despite knowing that everything was for his benefit. Rin explained her main worry. She expressed to Hyun Sung her desire to learn more about the main scenario. She was interested in the specifics and plot of the quest if RMC was going to undertake it. The only thing she required was this, the details following Hyun Sung's completion of the missions. She further disclosed that this was the impetus behind the founding of the Hero Guild. In order for them to have an impact on the plot, they only hired players with unique ranks. Hyun Sung was also informed by Rin that she would not pressurize him to make a decision at this time. In case RMC was prepared to answer, she just sent a friend request. Hyun Sung went to the Hanam Square after the meeting. He was still considering the advantages he would experience. He had only considered starting his own guild after visiting the Thanatos church. But first, Hyunsung made the decision to use the DP store. He decided to acquire a legendary level skill. This person was extremely fortunate to receive a legendary plus, and he believed that it was merely a bug. After a while, we noticed this orc warrior being struck by an arrow in this forest. He looked around to see who had attacked him. However, an arrow struck its forehead and left a grim expression. It was sent by RMC. He was once more killing these boss monsters. Fauna was urging her master on. She thought it was cool that Hyun Sung was using this bow and arrow. She even assisted her master in locating additional boss monsters nearby. Hyun Sung was employing a skill known as the Ambrid's Arrow of Destruction. The most recent legendary skill that RMC acquired was this one. He is able to use three different arrows thanks to this talent. The first one was a standard type that requires 300 mana. It deals damage equal to 300% of the user's attack power and has a 10 second cooldown. Ambrid's Binding Arrow, the second type, requires 2000 mana to use. It has the same effects as a regular arrow, but instead of instantly killing the target, it binds it for a minute. The Arrow of Destruction costs 10,000 mana, and its name is. It enables the user to warm the target's vital areas. In addition to the normal arrow's additional effect, this deals 40% of the target's total health. Only one use is permitted per day, and RMC was about to put this powerful arrow of destruction to the test. With this ability, he could quickly see all of his target's important features. He still had the option to add skills to this arrow in addition to all the other effects, and at this moment he selected the skill that could pierce right through his target. When Hyun Sung finally released his arrow, it was simply too quick and tore a hole in the body of the boss monster. He would deal an extra 3% damage if he could heat the vital point effectively. Because his narcolepsy skill won't be activated if he begins the third trace quest, this guy was now attempting to level up quickly. He was feeding fauna with every boss orb he obtained. Hyun Sung kept using his most recent ability to pursue the monsters. He was getting excited because he wanted to once more demonstrate a fun activity for everyone. Hyun Sung was still irate that her brother had kept his Sura identity a secret while eating breakfast the following day. She questioned him about whether there was anything he had yet to reveal to her. Hyun Sung informed her that his in-game character is a god class as he sat down. He disclosed that he was a god named Thananos, one of the most powerful gods in idea, and that he was his ancestor. He was also the deity of sleep and death. Hyun Sung considered that perhaps her brother was still making jokes, but as he had no other excuse to lie, she gradually started to believe him. Hyun Sung also advised her sister to leave the house right away. They can now afford a better place because this guy was making a lot of money on YouTube. Hyun Sung forgot about this, but she agreed if it would be an improvement over this. Additionally, she requested permission to design the interior of the home, and her brother granted it. Alan was able to accommodate Hyun Sung's request because he always gets a draft of the videos his brother intends to upload before he uploads them. Her appa was a Sura, which made her extremely happy. She even forced him to log into the game while offering to clean up and do the dishes. After logging in, Hyun Sung immediately messaged Siwa. When he inquired about the Church of Thananos, Siwa only offered him her best wishes. These two were now in the air, floating. Hyun Sung asked Libius to tell the NPC to hold on to him tightly when he summoned the gravity meter, and then he used the gravity meter skill. Following it up with his meter riding prowess, RNC quickly gained the upper hand on this meter. Because he still suffers damage even though he cast the skill, using it was difficult. 
Even the computer system wished Hyunsung luck as he changed the direction of this meter. Hyunsung was able to properly control it at the very last second to save them while they were still falling to the ground. He was beginning to regret using this skill because he could endanger his life with a single error. Even though they were on the verge of death, this NPC handled it like he was simply on a roller coaster. Simply put, RNC's mode of transportation was an F meter. These followers were busy worshipping their god at Thanano's main church during this time. Like Libius, they all offered worship. They were banging their heads against this enormous Thanano statue. Amorgica, the bishop in charge of them, was pleased with them all because they were devoted Christians. But then he became aware of something. It was a sizable meter that was directly moving towards their church. These men began to praise their god even more instead of panicking. They all congregated in the middle after sensing a recognizable energy emanating from the meter. This bishop even developed resentment toward the believers for having such freedom to act freely. The meter finally touched down after a few more seconds. These men were forced to disperse by the impec. Because he had anticipated that the most enjoyable part would be just before they touched down, Livius was overjoyed. His master's response was different. Then Libius greeted these men, who all turned to look at him. They rushed over to Libius and addressed him as their cardinal and teacher right away. Some of them even expressed their sadness at Libius downgrading to priesthood and his forced departure from this location. Hunsen finds it hard to believe that so many people held his servant in high regard. Additionally, Libius advised everyone to leave because he would still help their master. They were all taken aback upon hearing this statement. And then Hunsen and Libius saw someone coming toward them. He was running at full speed and it was this guy. Hyunsen believed that this man's strength could easily place him above the emperor. In front of Hyunsen, he bowed and introduced himself as Pope Francis. Hyunsen was then instructed to follow him into the church by the man. Pope Francis was aware that their master was on his way to retrieve the relic. He also expressed regret to Hyunsen for possibly having caused too much stress from Libius. The Pope informed Hyunsen that they had already begun to release the seals but had only been able to break the first stage as they moved closer to the relics. He reasoned that perhaps Thanonos's direct descendant would be able to break the other ones. These artifacts were also those that their god employed in chastisement and punishment of the evil deities in his realm. Hyunsen anticipated that the interior of these artifacts would resemble chains. Siwa had been giving herself a loud sigh. He was already anticipating receiving these intriguing items when he was already given the artifacts. These objects were brightly illuminated and shone. Hyunsen did not appear to be impressed when the Pope said that these two items were the strongest relics of their god. Meanwhile, these guys were still keeping an eye on RMC at the Inferno Server Management Office. Hyunsen acquiring these artifacts at such a young age surprised the management team's leader. The relics for the other god class from the other server weren't even available yet. Additionally, he reasoned that the disciple might assign the quest leading to the main scenario now since Hyunsen had already obtained these items. He grinned because ordinarily it would take eight months to reveal the main scenario, though Hyunsen had already carried it out. One of the artifacts he obtained was this soft pillow from Thanano's, which was of god rank. Hyunsen had exclusive access to this item. Our MC's HP and MP recovery would be doubled just by having this item, and if he used it while sleeping, his DP recovery would also be doubled. The other was a soft blanket belonging to Thanano's. Hyunsen was the only one who had access to this, and it will aid in his deep sleep. The duration of the negative status would be cut in half by having this relic, and if he used it while sleeping, the experience points would be doubled. This blanket would also reduce the narcolepsy skill's impact to two actual hours. Hyunsen was contemplating how to best use these relics when the disciple suddenly materialized in front of them. Hyunsen was aware that these artifacts were actually ideal for his character. This man was perplexed because he was not in the imperial palace, but after examining his surroundings, he realized that he was in Thanano's church. He told Pope Francis that although he was about to make it difficult for Hyunsen to break the seals, it appeared that the first stage had already been accomplished. The jokes the disciple told offended this guy. He already felt enraged with him. The disciple informed Hyunsen that they would simply meet up on the following trace quest and left right away because he had grown afraid. Hyunsen was so irritated with the disciple that he inquired of the Pope if there was any animosity between them. The Pope then revealed that the disciple had stolen the church's relics and fled, preventing them from using some of their teleportation scrolls because they had lost the relics. Due to this incident, the church has also lost a majority of its authority. Normally, their religion would rule the entire continent, but at this point, people barely gave it a second thought. Francis, the Pope, also disclosed that some of their adherents weren't even people. He additionally tried to ask Hyunsen for a favor. Our MC granted this request, which caused this man to smile. The purpose of this request was to preserve Thanonos' church's authority. Pope Francis and other beast men from the other races were making the best of a bad situation, but there had been a problem in one of the towns of the cardinals. The ground caved in as they were collecting minerals, and they all felt the power of death. 
They couldn't even enter this cave because this aura was so much stronger than any other auras they had experienced. The Pope also said that Thanano's death aura was not the same as this power. This death resembled a dark, evil death more than others. He had already dispatched numerous priests and bishops to investigate this issue. Even he made the trip. All of the necromancer's andlings he sent shared this sentiment. It was a root of darkness here. They were also perplexed to learn that only adventurers with a level between 150 and 200 could enter the cave. Pope Francis believed that the situation was too serious to leave the travelers in charge of the mission. He wonders if Hunsen could finish this quest for them since he already meets this requirement. A quest appeared once this situation was known. This one was ranked plus. Even if Hunsen doesn't finish this one, he will still receive rewards. But compared to the alternative, the rewards for finishing it were much nicer. And as usual, these kinds of adventures were presented to RMC, who accepted them. He then won the support of the main church's pope. Pope Francis then made a call to a person who could assist Hunsen in his search. She was a cardinal in their faith as well. Hunsen noticed the rabbit eyes right away. Carrot was given to this one, and she honored Hunsen by doing so. Carrot felt that this servant had bothered their master too much, so she immediately apologized on Libius' behalf. Libius received a lightning-fast kick from this one. Simply put, the impact was too strong. Libius was sent flying in the direction of the church wall. She acted in such a way that she bowed her head to her master, but Hunsen was somewhat pleased with what she did. The Pope also revealed that this priest was despised by Carrot. Slowly emerging from the ruins, Libius praised Carrot for being overly spirited. Hunsen then bid the Pope his farewells before leaving for the Cave of Darkness, and Libius had already started to flee. Yet the Pope took note of him. Then he inquired as to Libius' intended destination. Libius assured him that he will help Hunsen in his search. However, the Pope kept him in check. He was aware that this NP would only cause Hunsen trouble. In addition, he was about to assign him a different mission. Libius was sobbing because he was about to lose his master as Hunsen and Carrot were joyfully walking away. He was abandoned there and allowed to sob uncontrollably. Libius stopped sobbing and inquired about the Pope's true purpose. Pope Francis revealed that it had to do with their religion's adversaries. He required a person who could take out his enemies because they have already located their base of operations. Since Libius was the only cardinal with combat experience, he was ideal for the position. His expression immediately changed when he heard this. This one had serious rage. He even started to exude a sinister aura around him as he grinned. He wants to obliterate everything. Livius also requested permission from the Pope to return with Hunsen after his mission was completed. In this game, dragons frequently used magic to relieve themselves of physical burdens. They were also frequently unaffected by ointment and gravity. Due to their ability to fly quickly, our MC was now riding a dragon while carrying a carrot toward his next mission. He believed that riding a dragon was superior to riding a meteor, and he will inquire of the emperor without telling Yuria. Soon after, Carrot mentioned that they had already arrived close to their destination. As they drew nearer, these notifications appeared. At the peak of this dark mountain was a dungeon infused with the energy of death. Hunsen discovered the initial piece of the larger puzzle. The Holy Land of the Fallen was the name given to this region. The Holy Land of the Fallen and the Raiding Dead is a new mission that the RMC has been given. Hunsen had won in game week left and needed to look into this cave to see if any other gods were capable of sending out death like Thananos. The second clue for the main scenario will be revealed after completing this quest. He then entered the cave with Carrot and believed that this was the most crucial mission he had been given because completing it would alert all other players that the main scenario would soon begin. Hunsen will also receive a high-ranking class-related item and a book of skills in that regard. RMC asked Carrot to close off the area around this dungeon and prevent anyone from entering because he knew he needed to be more cautious while completing this quest. He also considered telling Rin about this quest when he was done. After all, nobody could aid him because only Hune had access to the dungeon. Carrot asks her master for something as they continue into the cave. She requested that Hunsen speak to her informally so they can have the same kind of informal conversation that Hunsen was having with Libius. This seemed too simple to RMC, who accepted it. Carrot was ecstatic about this. Notifications that Hunsen had already entered the cave popped out as he continued to move toward the dungeon. All of his stats were raised by 20 because he was the first to identify the main scenario. He was now prepared to finish this dungeon. Hunsen was also alerted by numerous red notifications that this dungeon is dangerous. This particular dungeon had a much higher level of difficulty than the typical ones. Hunsen also observed that the dungeon's boss monster was keeping an eye on him. Knowing this, he decided against using his primary skills because he didn't want the boss monster to figure out his attack patterns. Hunsen then heard some footsteps, and he could tell they were heavy right away. He saw this silhouette, and he sprinted for it. He approached this monster by calling upon his heavenly powers. 
His attack succeeded in setting off this enormous explosion. Hewnson felt like he didn't even score a critical strike as Fauna felt dizzy from the impact. Hewnson was informed that this monster loads him in his speech. As the one who possesses pure death, this soldier addressed the RMC. Hewnson understood that he could no longer conceal his abilities because they were insufficient to kill a simple soldier. Then the rattling soldier ran screaming towards Hewnson. This one was now approaching him in a sprint. For this attack, RMC was more than ready. He swiftly displayed his sort of wind talent. He was able to outmaneuver his rival thanks to this talent. Hewnson took advantage of the situation to attack the soldier. Additionally, he observed that despite the monster having a high defense stat, he was still able to deal a sizable amount of damage thanks to the increased strength of his attacks. This one was spewing out gray blood. RMC was confident that he could use his other abilities, the magic bullets, in combination with these physical blows. These precisely heat the target. Hewnson also began to watch and consider how he might more effectively combat the monster. He can't just use up all of his energy on one monster. He was now considering how to deal critical damage with the least amount of MP usage. After a brief interval, he had an idea and sprinted in the direction of the soldier. During the process, he also checked his inventory. Then, RMC equipped the destruction arrow of the Ahembrid. This was his best option because it allows him to see all of his enemy's key weak points. He could increase his damage output and lower the amount of MP he used. Hewnson cancelled his skill as soon as he noticed the crucial areas. He then put back on his sword and dagger. He was now prepared to end this conflict. This person persisted in their struggle while making an effort to call out to Hewnson. They desired to be killed by divine nature. RMC grew weary of this conflict. He employed a different ability called Infinite Dagger, which caused numerous copies of his weapon to appear. He combined this attack with another ability called Moon Sword Falling Slash, and the monster was pierced to the core. There was a huge explosion because the daggers were explosive shurikens as well. However, this number of assaults was insufficient to vanquish this monster. It continued to sprint toward RMC. Hewnson was fortunately also ready. He had already set a price for another talent. This time he struck the monster with some physical harm. He performed a heavenly thrust. This ended the zombie soldier's resistance. He learned more about how to handle these monsters from it as well. Someone was keeping watch on RMC somewhere in the dungeon. This one realized that regular soldiers couldn't defeat Hewnson. He was being watched by this person. It was an additional NPC from the game. He also grinned because he thought Hewnson was very intelligent. He hasn't yet made use of any of Thanonos' abilities. Then, this NPC concealed himself and prepared an action to begin the situation. In front of these numerous soldiers, he began to speak. He declared that the Thanatos heir was in the dungeon and asked everyone to greet him respectfully. In that room, every prisoner soldier present concurred and obeyed his command. This one believed that his master would be content if they could eliminate RMC. These guys continued to keep an eye on Hewnson's development while working in the Inferno server management office. They find it hard to believe that a player could actually pull off this feat on his own. Joe Minwu, the team's leader, learned that Hewnson was now at level 175 at the time. He questioned whether someone could actually finish the main scenario using just this level. His lackey retorted that since Hewnson is a god-ranked player, it was not impossible. He was far superior to the other god-ranked players, though, if they were to compare this server to the others. Minwu was still in awe of the way RMC handled the fight with such a formidable foe. He reasoned that perhaps Hewnson was reserving all of his abilities and strength for this boss because he was aware that there is still one inside the dungeon. In addition, everyone is aware that Hewnson has three different playing styles. Now, Minwu questions whether our RMC will be able to maintain this momentum all the way to the end of the dungeon. Then, this guy looked at the rewards that Hewnson might receive if he succeeded in completing the mission. While some of his lackeys continued to have doubts about his ability, their team leader insisted that it was still possible for him to complete the game's main scenario by himself. And because this quest was about the main scenario, it made it possible for Hewnson to get a relic or an authority skill just for finishing it. Their team leader froze for a moment when he heard this statement. He recalled the incident in which our RMC obtained a relic that was purported to be unlocked at level 400. Minwu double-checked the information regarding this main scenario quest. Thanos is the only god in this game with three relics as opposed to the other god's single relic. Hewnson was predicted to obtain two of the three relics prior to level 400 based on the way he was currently playing the game. However, the team leader's only concern was that our RMC was completing all of these quests on his first attempt. It typically takes a player four to five tries to finish these kinds of missions. Team leader Minwu was once more mumbling various scenarios. His lackeys all took note of this. This one asked for a second computer in the server room so he could draft an apology letter just in case something unplanned occurred. Our RMC really botched this one, and this guy noticed something while they were still busy watching Hewnson. 
The other men in the server room also observed what was taking place. They quickly began to feel anxious about what might occur next. Minwoo was still working on his letter of apology when the uproar interrupted him. He inquired as to what was going on. Then someone informed this man that Hyunsen had just found a hidden passageway inside the dungeon that could serve as his safe haven. Our RMC had just finished destroying the soldiers that stood in his path. These were now much simpler to kill since he was familiar with their attack strategies. The soldiers raised Hyunsen's level and gave him a good number of experience points. After all those battles, our RMC was already feeling worn out. He wished he could take a short nap, but the computer kept reminding him that the dungeon's baron was keeping an eye on everything he did. He wasn't allowing Henson to relax. He then reasoned that perhaps this baron had the power to command every soldier present. Hyunsen picked up on another thing. Fauna was occupied pulling this massive object. She desired to reward her master with it. Then, as she was really struggling, our RMC stopped her. When he unintentionally fell asleep, he suggested that she could just assist her. Our RMC gave Fauna a soul orb to eat because she felt a little depressed as a result. Her mood quickly changed as a result, and she assured her master that she would try her hardest to lift his spirits. Fauna continued to consume the boss orb despite complaining to her master about the food's flavor. Really not tasty was the soul of a rotting soldier. Fauna wasn't too bothered by this because she could still find food along the way. Moreover, she noticed something while looking for something delectable. Hyunsen followed her when he saw her flying in that direction. Fauna tapped a brick as she flew in front of this wall. Then a hidden door surfaced and opened. This person rejoiced because she was so impressed with what she had learned. Hyunsen was alarmed, as well as the desolate dungeon. RMC's face quickly changed as he made a realization. The system informed him that all requirements had been satisfied, allowing him to access the hidden location. The eroding secret hallway was the name given to this one. This location was brimming with divine power, which kept the Baron from viewing Hyunsen. RMC was aware of this and believed that this location had not yet become corrupted. He also believed that perhaps there was something in this location that might connect him to Thanatos. And as he moved, he noticed a space that had a lab label. He went into this one and noticed that the space was smaller than he had anticipated. Hyunsen discovered a ton of historical texts and scholarly articles about Thanatos. He began to receive everything. Also on the table, this guy noticed a letter. According to the letter, all of the soldiers in the castle dungeon were already corrupted by the time this item was discovered. It was also revealed that these soldiers had been Thanatos' followers at the time. They all believed that their god had forsaken them. They all rebelled against him because of this. The apostle who was in charge of them was then compelled to conjure a wall that would keep everyone inside this fortress. Hyunsen also learned that everyone who disobeyed Thanatos was doomed to a ratting death. That clarified why it was included in his main scenario. The letter's author also left a gift for the person who could find this location. Hyunsen persisted in looking for the gift, and when he finally discovered what it was, he smiled. The Baron, meanwhile, remained silent. He had no idea that the castle contains a hidden passage. He was now perplexed as to why this secret had remained a secret for so long. The soldiers were told that they couldn't figure anything out about this hidden passage because something was preventing them from doing so when the NPC asked them to do everything they could. They were forced to wait until Hyunsen reveals himself once more as a result of this. With their current strength, this NPC was still certain that they could defeat this lone player. The NPC eventually grinned after observing a development. Hyunsen appeared, but he was immediately perplexed because it appeared that RNC was eloping. The intense trembling all around the NPC prevented him from giving the order to all the soldiers to pursue Hyunsen. Then there was a huge explosion after that. It turns out that the self-destructing bomb that our outmatched NC used to destroy the castle was located inside the hidden passage. This person just performed a sprint. He could tell that this approach was very efficient because he gained a ton of experience points. He was elevated to level 180 by it. Hyunsen decided to rekindle the flames after observing that the explosion was subsiding. Then, this madman player used his gravity meter to aim for the castle. Even casting one did not satisfy him. Hyunsen threw three packing meters and all into the castle dungeon. It would be reasonable to assume that all of the monsters within this location have already been vanquished, but this was not the case. Using a barrier, this person managed to survive. It was the castle's desolation. The fact that these events didn't surprise this NPC was due to the eccentric and fanatical nature of Thanano's followers. The instant he saw Hyunsen fleeing, he realized something was wrong. The loss of every one of his subordinates in those assaults was the only regret he had. He had spent a great deal of time building such an army. Then something caught his eye, cutting off his thoughts once more. A second meter was on his way. The Baron became even angrier towards RMC as a result of this. He was adamant about getting rid of Hyunsen. After a brief period of time, the meter struck the castle once more. Hyunsen was sipping a mana potion throughout this chaos. He was facing the castle and was still, because there hasn't yet been a clear indication. 
This one also deduced that the dungeon's boss monster is still alive. The Baron managed to survive every assault and emerged with this appearance. This one yelled at Hunsen and vowed to destroy him without a doubt. That scream was not a typical one because it hit Hunsen with strong sound waves. This guy was caught off guard and didn't have time to react. He was luckily saved by the Belt of Dreams. It sustained one unavoidable injury. The Baron then carried on with his assaults. Hunsen wasn't even scared off by the fact that his casting time had no delays. Even as he planned to aggravate the adversary more, he grinned. This guy was having a great time. The Baron became angrier as a result of his attacks consistently missing. He lost control of himself. Hunsen spotted a chance and used his stealth prowess to conceal his presence. Behind this boss monster, our MC materialized and discharged his arrow of destruction. Then came the dark lightning after it. This guy also prepared a strong blow. This assault completely destroyed the adversary. This boss had zero chance of triumphing. The Baron then began to fall to the ground, but there was a problem. Hunsen was met with a red notification. It unlocked his third phase and informed him that the power of the Baron seal had diminished. This one realized his meter attacks were only for the boss's two phases. The Baron took on a new appearance. In addition, he forewarned RMC that he would be killed as soon as his period of invincibility ended. After a brief delay, the Baron could now move once more. He was about to use his blink ability to get closer to Hunsen when something stopped him. An arrow was used. The arrow also possessed a power that transformed his leg into stone. It had become petrified. The Baron was still considering how to get through this one when two arrows struck him once more. He still made an attempt to strike back by casting some skills at Hunsen, but when the dust settled, it became clear that RMC was fine. Another arrow was being charged, and this one also had this ominous aura surrounding it. It hit right on target. The vital point was struck, activating Thanano's nightmare skill. This will cause this boss monster to experience hallucinations and excruciating pain. He felt as though his body were being torn to pieces. Our MC then went on to use the Sabbath of the Death skill as a follow-up. Using 1000 DP, this one put the Baron to sleep for a minute. All harm done during this period will also be multiplied by two. Immediately after casting this ability, Hunsen dashed over to the Baron and launched a series of attacks. He paused and spoke to the Baron, telling him that he still had one attack left. This boss monster was already being approached by a packing meter. An explosion then occurred after this scene. The main scenario was successfully cleared by our overpowered MC, as evidenced by numerous notifications. All the players in this game were informed of this accomplishment as well. This person's reward was a god relic and a high-ranking class-related skill book. He will receive additional compensation from the Pope for completing the quest. The Hero Guild was holding a meeting as Hunsen and the Baron were engaged in combat. Since almost all of the members were present, it appeared to be a serious one. These guys were reportedly looking for hints about the main scenario, but they haven't found much. This mage advised them to go get some rest first even though their guild leader Rin was already considering giving up on this quest. The exhaustion from finding some clues was now affecting their ability to make decisions. While they were just approving this plan, another participant entered the meeting and agreed with this guy's suggestion. This guy informed everyone that he had recently discovered some pertinent details regarding the main scenario. They were all stopped by a notification as he was about to tell them all this. A hero had just successfully completed the main scenario 1, the system announced. The game will change significantly as a result of this development. Rin was obviously perplexed because she had not anticipated this information. Every player was also instructed by the system to consult the game's home page if they had any questions. The announcement from this guy was a split second late. All the high-level players assumed that they were too high-leveled to find anything at that point, but this individual continued to talk about what he had discovered. He disclosed that it has to do with the Pope who was reciting in the Church of Thanatos. RMC now, please. He quickly ended the recording after finishing the main scenario quest. This quest, in his opinion, had the feel of a prologue. It was obvious that the Baron was merely a subordinate of a more powerful person. RMC was aware that the going would get tougher from this point forward, but since he had just completed a main scenario quest, he was more eager to see what rewards he had received. When Hyun Seng first saw the items he had received, he looked like this. The book History of the Rotting Death was delivered to RMC. His priority pass for the following scenario will be this. This man felt a little let down because he anticipated more value. He then looked at the other prizes. He received several rewards, including Thanano's breath. It was an aptitude for active authority. The user of this skill will be able to create a fog around him, and any enemies caught inside will be given a debuff. They won't be able to replenish their health and mana, and both their attack and defense will be 20% weaker. Upon realizing that this skill was yet another overpowered one, Hunsang's face brightened. The god relic he now possessed was known as Thanano's Bed of Tranquility. This item increases the damage of Thanano's Nocturne by 200% while having its cooldown. 
This could also be used as a means of transportation, similar to Goku's Quentin Cloud. Additionally, it could three times daily replenish RMC's HP and MP. Hyun Seng began daydreaming as he sparred over this scene. He could simply lay down and continuously hit the gravity meter. This player made the decision to leave the game after reviewing all the prizes. He was starting to feel way too powerful and was now wondering if the game would reduce his stats and skills. We could see Thinano's disciple inside this room, somewhere inside a tower. The main scenario has already been eliminated, which this guy finds hard to believe. He was also conversing with someone via this shadowy orb. Now, this person was considering where he could bury the other god relic that might make Hyunsang even more powerful. The disciple tapped the orb as he searched for the ideal locations, and after some time, he realized that he could conceal this artifact inside the black dragon lair, which was shrouded in a thick layer of black fog. The disciple now pondered how Hyunsang would respond once he realized what was going on. He was about to carry out this strategy, but something was wrong. The disciple became alarmed after losing the last of Thenano's relics. In the meantime, the internet was inundated with articles about Asura clearing the main scenario. All the players' reactions to this were conflicted. Additionally, it had an impact on players on other servers because this incident provided them with important hints about their own main scenario. Because they were aware that normal players could only take part in this quest once it reached the third main scenario quest, other players also began supporting Asura. This type of expression indicates who is to blame for the chaos. Haiyan and Yuan wouldn't leave Hyunsang alone, which caused him to become very exhausted. These two grilled RMC mercilessly about how he handled the main scenario. When Hyunsang logged back into the game, Carrot welcomed him. As he finished the quest, she asked her master if they would now return to the main church. Hyunsang rejected this suggestion. He informed Carrot that he still had to proceed to the imperial capital. He really didn't want to see Libius aside from this. Carrot heard this and ascended the dragon. This one will first report to the main church before turning around and returning to the Karen Empire. Hyunsang looked at the location's map as well. He questioned the direction of the Karen Empire. Once more conjuring his meter, RMC rode in the direction of the Empire. Now that he was more accustomed to riding this vehicle, Hyunsang's departure caused the notification of the main situation to suddenly appear. This indicated that this quest had been successfully completed as of that evening. A gathering of shady characters was taking place in Fabidon, a harbor city. They have this unsettling aura about them. They were discussing the Baron's passing. Because their master predicted it, some of the attendees were prepared for this development. Some of them were also worried about delays affecting their plans. They didn't anticipate the Church of Thenanos becoming this potent once more. This man advised them to cast out all their thoughts and worries, telling them that all they had to do was obey their master. It was also made known that, in contrast to the Pope of Thenanos, the Holy Emperor was cooperating with them. When he heard the name of the Pope, this member became incensed. He asserted that Thenanos' church had left them behind. This one was now inquiring as to how the seal preventing them from using their abilities might be broken. Then this NPC by the name of Baron Peril showed up and responded to his query. The death of the previous Baron caused the seal to become loose. However, it was still insufficient to destroy it. Baron Peril adjourned the meeting after a few more issues. Then I left this one alone. He considered the other group members to be just plain annoying. They are unaware that they cannot simply move in that direction. The five heavens of the continent still ruled over this region. In order to avoid some hassles, Baron Peril also wanted to kill the members, but he was forbidden from doing so. Additionally, he was aware that Thanano's church was currently at its strongest point ever. This was a force of a kind they can't simply handle. This Baron reasoned that he should now exercise greater caution. He was prepared to leave this location when he suddenly felt strange. Suddenly, a person approached him and inquired about the death's rotting process. The mysterious man was wearing robes that Baron Peril immediately recognized as belonging to the Thanano's church. It was none other than our powerful NPC, Libus, who suddenly materialized. This guy was assigned to look into this situation. Baron Peril considered attacking Libus, but our boy foresaw it. Then Libius cast this menacing aura around the Baron. This man was now considering how to resolve this issue quickly so that he could rejoin his master. He asked Baron Peril to share all of his knowledge about the decomposing of the body with him. It was established that Libius's spell to make this man respond to all of his questions was effective. Baron Peril was still asleep after some time. Libius finished questioning the Baron and threw him into the river. This NPC appeared to think the task at hand was simple. There were a lot of strong characters in the Church of Thenanos. When Libius learned that there were four corrupted holy lands in this region, he grinned. He intended to clean up a spot or two before informing the Pope of this. Hyunsung arrived in the current empire the following day, and he is now in front of the Emperor. This one asked if there was anything he could do for our MC after quickly observing the development of his disciple. The Emperor's kind offer was acknowledged by Hyunsung. He then displayed the history of the rotting death book. 
This master quickly went over the book's contents and made a commitment to further investigate it. If he discovers any information about it, he will also get in touch with Hyunsung. The computer system informed RMC that he would also receive a reward after giving the book to the emperor. Hyunsung obviously wasn't anticipating this one. Then the emperor came over to RMC. Hyunsung received another skill book from him in exchange for the information. This guy noticed that it was a growth type as well as another legendary skill book. Hyunsung was extremely appreciative of the gift. This delighted the emperor. The emperor then broached the subject of a contest for the followers of the five heavens of the continent. He explained to Hyunsung that he was under no obligation to take part if he didn't want to. This was just a straightforward game to gauge the influence of their disciples. The majority of these disciples, according to RMC, were also players like him. His interest was piqued, and he made the decision to enter the contest. Following that, the emperor instructed Armik to remain inside the castle because the other disciples would soon arrive. Hyunsung then used his free time to go through the new skill book he received from his master. He believed that growth skills were extremely popular with Emperor Charon. He now possessed a skill known as the Emperor's Battlefield. In doing so, the user can decrease his HP while increasing his combat power, MP recovery, and resistance to status conditions. Additionally, he gains Indomitable Will, which can restore health once it is zero. This guy was happy to learn yet another strong skill. Additionally, he could now stop working on clearing the main scenario. Our MC was being accompanied by Fauna, who was focused on consuming the souls of defeated buses. She then informed Hyunsung that she had just sensed the energy of a dragon close by. Hyunsung was then startled when he peered out of his window and saw a dragon's eye staring at him. He later learned that the dragon was traveling with Carrot. This bunny actually flew a wyvern into the imperial castle. Then our MC invited Carrot to enter his room. He was informed by the cardinal that she had some urgent information to share with him. Carrot continues to award the Hyunsung rewards for completing the Pope's quest. Emperor Charon then appeared next to them, interrupting their conversation. Carrot quickly made a bow and bowed to the Emperor. Hyunsung also observed the Cardinal shaking in the presence of the Emperor. He believed that his master was a very strong individual. Emperor Charon then gave the order for Carrot to stand. He questioned her as to why she had come. Then, this one reported that their church was currently pursuing a formidable foe, and she was dispatched to defend Hyunsung. As soon as the emperor realized this, he inquired about Carrot's needs. The number of the enemies, according to Carrot, was unimaginably large. She also disclosed that the vast enemy has already seized the majority of the Middle Continent's secret lands. They were unable to find every one of these areas because they were dispersed. Her main goal was to win the emperor's blessing so they could start conducting some investigations inside his domain. Emperor Charon was already aware of the identity of the formidable foe she was referring to, those who had the rotting death. Additionally, Carrot informed the Emperor that with Hyunsung's assistance, they had already destroyed one of their bases, and the Emperor permitted the Church of Thananos to carry out its missions because this news made him proud of his disciple. He also reassured Carrot that Hyunsung was safe inside the castle and that she didn't need to worry about him. Carrot then proceeded to return to the main church to report the news. She also apologized and thanked the Emperor for this unexpected favor. Hyunsung remarked that wyverns are cool as the dragon and Carrot took flight. The emperor's attention was drawn to this. Since boys were so fascinated by dragons and wyverns, he considered this to be both kind and reasonable. The emperor then abruptly departed. Hyunsung believed that his master was currently looking into the case of the decomposing death. As he realized that things were going in the right direction, he also experienced a sense of relief. Hyunsung then focused on the rewards he had received from the Pope. It was a class skill key in the skill book. As a result, Hyunsung would be assigned a chance-based, job-specific skill that he could only acquire through quests. Then the man starts to open the chest. He noticed a set of earrings. These people were referred to as Kalano or Death Seekers. All of his stats are increased by 10% with this item, and the effectiveness of his skills against opponents is also enhanced. He can also gather death energy this way, which he can use to replenish his health and mana. Although that item was very helpful, our MC's focus was now on this skill book. Hyunsung was questioned by the system about using the item. Our main character eventually acquired a skill called Soul Harvest. This skill was of the god rank. Hyunsung's expression clearly changed when he saw this notification. Emperor Charon was working on something in the background. He was currently in front of this enormous fire dragon. He believed that the dragon was too large to serve as Hyunsung's primary mode of transportation. Emperor was forewarned by the dragon. It had never been brave enough to allow anyone into its den before. But this guy was immune to the intimidation. Emperor Charon returned the warning to this being. The red dragon was just defeated by this old man using a conqueror's hacky. This was also the first time since becoming an adult that the creature had felt such pressure. It even believed that this level of pressure was much higher than that experienced by the older dragons. 
The red dragon had the impression that it was in front of a large, strong human. Emperor Charon sighed as he thought back on earlier times. He would have quickly and unhesitatingly severed this thing's neck back then. He was aware that as he got older, he became more forgiving. The old man then made the decision to let the dragon live but not to protect its other wing. The red dragon instantly lost its left wing. The red dragon then recalled the myth that its ancestors had shared. Once upon a time, a human defeated a large number of dragons to take their hearts. Now standing in front of it was the person from the legend. Emperor Charon departed after deciding that he should seek out some wyverns rather than dragons. This old man could still move at a crazy pace. A kingdom known as Cucasium was residing at the easternmost point of the central continent, where the Haimpest Mountain was. This one was referred to as the Blacksmith Kingdom. The other continents, five heavens called Dursal, were leading Cucasium. Now this guy was getting ready for their journey. The person he would be traveling with was his student Wall. He was the youngest of his followers. These two were the beginning of their path to the current empire. They moved through this burning mountain. Dursal paused when he saw that someone had arrived to welcome them. Then this enigmatic being praised the old man. He was still able to recognize this person right away. The other continents, Five Heaven, Uriah, was the one who entered to welcome them. Wall quickly paid her respects by bowing his head. Uriah, on the other hand, took advantage of the chance to watch this other disciple. She thought this one appeared to be intelligent enough. Dursal then began to make fun of the elf. He informed her that because Uriah was his apprentice, Emperor Charon was actually in serious trouble. Emperor Charon, however, had already warned Uriah about Dursal's antics before this elf was even sent here. He advised her to keep her cool whenever she spoke with the dwarf. Uriah was then able to respond with some admirable comments. Dursal was impressed by this as it demonstrated how much the elf has actually grown. Dursal next probed Uriah about their disciple. This person anticipated the disciple of the emperor and Uriah to be a skilled magic user. But because Hewinson's style varied so much, Uriah was unable to confirm this one. Dursal used the fact that she was unable to respond to his question as an opportunity to tease Uriah and imply that she was not a particularly good master. Dursal laughed louder and advised his own disciple, unlike Uriah's, to concentrate only on one area. Then the two of them began to compliment each other on their skills. These two eventually reached their breaking points and were about to engage in combat. As Wow wished for these two to stop, he was simply left there helpless. Two people were now taking a brief nap on the other side of the continent. One of them was observing an Asura's battle widow. Praise for this player was all he could think about. Then, when his disciple said something like that, this man didn't like to hear it. One of the five heavens on the continent, this one went by the name of Tungsten. He was becoming irritated because his disciple wouldn't take a nap and kept on keeping an eye on Asura's widows. Titan was the name of his disciple. He was a player as well, and he had developed some admiration for Asura. This one was particularly thrilling because he could finally face off against his hero. Then, Tungsten continued to prevent this man from having that thought. Team leader Minwoo believed that something was wrong at the Korean Infernal Branch. He was currently watching Emperor Charon bully dragons and wyverns in the game. This NPC's behavior was unexpected by the guy. Emperor Charon was not paying much attention to the main plot simply because his disciple preferred to travel by dragon. But he believed that this was to be expected because Thanonos' descendant was already skilled at manipulating the game. The fact that the other NPCs were proceeding as expected made Minwoo even more grateful. The Pope and Libius were advancing against their foe. The team leader was also relieved because the other Thananos related classes continued to work on unrelated quests. The Saint and Saintess of Thananos were the only players he was worried about right now. If the church chose to include him on the missions about rattling death, things would shift to his focus even though the identity of this saint was still unknown. Additionally, Minwoo advised his subordinates to pay attention to the developments surrounding the rotting body. The main scenario was also drawing near, and they couldn't afford for an unexpected event to occur. However, one of his men informed him that the Saint Emperor of the Rotting Deaths movement was a little different as he was issuing this order. As a result, Minwoo was stricter with his instructions. They must monitor each and every one of the participants. Another report arrived, and this time it concerned our young man Libus. It was anticipated that this non-player character would be skulking around looking for other Rotting Death group members. However, at this moment, this powerful NPC felt free to destroy their enemies' bases. This scene is what caused Minwoo to make this facial expression. Something will twist at some point. Returning to RMC, he was now making his way to the gym. This guy gave the information his friend provided to him some thought. The main scenario could be significantly impacted and changed by his very presence. He reasoned that he should now exercise greater caution. Hewinson heard something intriguing as he was walking outside. This computer store was where it was coming from. The subject of the conversation was a person who was winning. 
our MC made the decision to investigate because he believed that this individual might be a top ranker in ideas. Then he noticed the game that he had once played with Huna. Demolishing Storm, a battle simulator, was also present. Now inside the capsule was a mysterious being who simply kept defeating his foes. Our MC, who was addicted to battles, decided to try to fight this man. People in his immediate vicinity were now speculating as to whether the challenger could successfully contend with the streak of the Enigma. Both players selected the same character before the game began. This was just a match, it turned out. The two then sped up their approach to one another. The same type of attacks were carried out by both players. The conflict was over. Someone was now running toward the capsule and believed his adversary to be a professional gamer. However, the other player had left by the time this one returned. This was the player's enigmatic face. Hewinson had already left when he returned to retrieve some additional coins. Having lost to RMC, this person was now dejected. The people around him found this guy's murmuring to himself to be a little odd. The enigmatic figure then left the arcade and went to see his master. He was referring to the same person who instructs RMC. This elderly man was overjoyed to see his former pupil return. The man's name was then revealed to be Raymond Kim. A few years ago, Raymond left the country to attend to some business. Then someone introduced RMC, who was also present inside the dojo, to Raymond. Their master was perplexed by the familiar tone in which these two greeted each other. Then Raymond came clean, saying he had already met Hewinson downstairs while they were playing some video games in the arcade. He acknowledged that he was totally lost. As for RMC, he noticed that Raymond's fighting style reminded him of his master because he thought it was somewhat familiar. Then, Raymond took advantage of the situation to ask Hewinson for a match. But this time, they'll actually face off. This match was quickly accepted by RMC. Then, these guys went to the fighting area. Two of Master Wine's pupils were about to engage in combat. Hewinson assured Raymond that he would take advantage of the chance to pick up a few new skills. This match won't be as one-sided as their previous one, this one retorted. Then both of their weapons collided. It took a while for them to play, and when it was over, Raymond's hand already looked like this. Wanjin then started giving this man some first aid. After fighting Hewinson, he knew that Raymond would now be coming every day. This one commended RMC as well because it was the first time they had witnessed someone getting stronger with each round. Wanjin told Raymond that the first time he had seen him, he had had a similar reaction. Hewinson and Raymond both took great pleasure in engaging in combat. Raymond then continues to speculate that Hewinson might be a vindictive insider concept. He compared RMC to the current most well-known athlete. He even speculated that Hewinson might be the true Asura. It was also made known that Raymond was regarded as one of the best players in the idea team. He became so busy playing this game that he neglected to go to training. The elderly man then reprimanded his pupil for spending too much time playing the game. In the game, Raymond revealed that he was a member of a bizarre religious order and had to perform numerous tasks. This reminded me of Thanano's church. Additionally, this guy claimed to be a prominent member of that religion to his master. He also anticipated meeting the offspring of their god. The god's heir, of whom he was speaking, was at this moment returning home on foot. After his match against Raymond, our MC was in this condition right now. He found their conflict to be a lot of fun. He began to believe that going to the dojo wouldn't be as boring after seeing another strong student arrive. Soon after, Hewinson returned to the action. Our MC was then informed by a servant that Tungsten, one of the five heavens of the continent, had arrived while he was away. This man was then perplexed by the information. It turned out that the Emperor Charon was not a prison, and they required a greeter for their visitors. Here he are left as well. Our MC thought he would be the one to welcome the attendees. However, it wasn't the case. The only purpose of the servant's visit was to alert Hewinson that Tungsten might seek him out. But the old man arrived suddenly, so this warning came a split second too late. He then gave Hewinson a salute. Our MC paid his respects and quickly identified himself as a seer. The elderly man just kept staring at him. Tungsten sensed the immense divine power emanating from our MC as he watched the disciple of Arar and Charon. He believed this man to be a monster. Consequently, he understood why Charon and Irar chose this person to be their disciple. Titan then showed up as Tungsten continued to introduce his own disciple. Asura was addressed by this man as one of his ardent fans. Titan even came prepared with a pen and a notepad and requested the signature of his hero. Then their conversation came to an abrupt end as they all sensed a presence entering the castle. Hewinson already knew that his master Irar was involved from the commotion outside. There was a great deal of trouble at the Emperor's castle. This strong elf was still enraged. Duracell was being criticized by Iriar for being too slow, and the old man retaliated by acting silly as well. Then Tungsten appeared, interrupting their conversation. He warned the other masters that setting such a poor example for their followers was not appropriate. Iriar approached Hewinson as soon as she spotted him. The old man was then teased and boasted about by this lady, who asserted that his disciple has no chance of defeating Hewinson. 
From this one's viewpoint, he soon became aware of how much divine power Armic possesses. He came to the conclusion that Asura was not a typical disciple. They were also greeted by Nuval, another disciple. This one represented the five heavens of Elger, the other continent. As his master sent him off by himself to compete in this event, this disciple exuded great confidence. The other masters were greeted by Nuval, who informed them that his master believed he had no need to be here. Iriar grinned as she asserted that this was the ideal situation. Elger would have been engaged in combat with Charon had he arrived here. Hewinson gave Nuval a quick glance and noted how powerful she appeared to be. And when all the disciples had gathered, Tungsten turned to look for the Emperor. Due to the fact that he hadn't seen his master since the problem with their mission, our MC was now slightly perspiring. He believed that he might be to blame for this. The Emperor was still in the land of dragons and wyverns at this time. He arrived at a mountain summit and greeted a familiar face. This old man named Elkishus was the one speaking to me at the time. The dragon lord, he is. Emperor Charon then revealed to his companion the reason for his visit. His disciple desired a dragon or wyvern. This person searched for the corrupted ones, but he was unable to locate any of them. Elkishus chuckled upon hearing this explanation. He then regarded his friend's disciple as his own disciple as well. Old man was searching for something. He then displayed this golden egg to the emperor. This was an egg the dragon lord had previously received from the sky god, he informed Charon. And since his disciple would be raising this child himself, it will be the ideal gift. We can see the towers, and then the arena, the teacher said that he did not have a special need to be present here and sent a deputy. It was just like him to hold a gathering of participants without Elgoris is quite difficult, so they can immediately start the competition of students, no one is against it. After becoming the preeminent personality of the 5000 continent, how can there be even one elder who is afraid, said the girl next to him. Now she will explain the rules, they are very simple. Her disciple will go up to the battle arena and fight Durali's disciple. Then, regardless of victory or defeat, the next match will be with Wolfram's apprentice. And finally, there will be a confrontation with the student of Elgers. The representative said nothing in response. After that, Durali's students will fight Wolfram's student, then his duel with Elgers student will take place. And since each student's life is priceless, Julia will surround the body of each of them with a protective shell. It's like a thin protective film that will wrap around their bodies. Also, the protective shell does not restrict movement, does not interfere with the attack in any way. In addition, the protective shell acts as an armor equal to the target's HP, which will be dispelled if the hit is higher than this value. In other words, this is the same as instant death, and despite the presence of a protective shell, they will still feel pain to some extent. Victory counts only when the enemy's defensive shell is destroyed. The representative wanted to fight the emperor's disciple first. What did Ashura think of this? It wouldn't have mattered to him who he fought first. Elgers, an arrogant creature who has a powerful physique, so he does not hone his weapon skills or techniques at all and enters battle relying only on the strength of his body. There is a high probability that the student will also not use any weapons or techniques, devoting himself entirely to training the body. The battle has started, maybe we should activate the skill obtained with the key that opens the skill of the profession. I thought the boy got the soul-gathering skill, it was divine. Some other players appeared nearby, Belka and others. The opponent used the moon sword, cutting flower, Nicturn of Tenanos. At that moment, a lump hit him right in the chin, but he did not give up, this is not a fair fight, he said. Both of the opponent's attacks were aimed at him, clearly containing divine energy. It doesn't seem like it's about the Emperor's or Lady Julia's skills, is he right? It's a glorious place where the continent's disciples compete in strength, but he wonders if it's fair to dare to compete after receiving divine power. Many people supported the fact that the competition should be fair, it seems that the man still underestimated their student, the girl said. He noticed how his disciple put on the mask, but why, he is choking with indignation. If the opponent has already lost, then let him admit it and ask for the opportunity to challenge again. But why ask for the chance to fight again, twisting everything as if this guy broke the rules? If possible, I don't want to let this trick that he has in mind go through with it. The man agrees with him, then from now on, Ashura will not use techniques that contain divine power. Other techniques he can use as much as he wants, no one really minds, right? The main thing is not to use divine power, and everyone on the podium thought so. The player understood that the opponent, this guy, he was strong, but if he didn't use divine power, the player had every chance of winning. The fight started, the guy used the gravity meteor skill and the opponent didn't understand what was going on. A huge lump of fire flew into it. The girl and the man laughed, the curse passed down to him even by such knowledge, the crazy little elf. The victory was reserved for the guy, it's a pity he wanted to have fun a little longer, his opponent was taken away on a stretcher. Although Elgoris isn't here to see it, the man doesn't want to see his apprentice suffer the same fate. An evil man with a black beard spoke to a small boy. 
Thanks to the characteristics of an immortal traveler and its strong vitality, it successfully managed to make its body harder from iron. But in his current state, the boy will not be able to put up against a gravitational meteor. The man on the podium was amazed at this guy's strength. Should they continue, or will they see each other again next time? The man with the beard grabbed the boy, said that they were the first to leave them and left, or rather, ran away, but can't we leave after the guy sees another duel of the master? The boy was indignant, because he wanted to see all this, and the man grabbed him by the ear and dragged him. Since the guys were in the capital, they should also stop by the same place with Will, who agreed. A lot of people were talking about the guy's voice, so we should dig into the main script, and he thought. A man approached him and asked him what his student wanted to eat or if there was anything he would like to have. The guy was surprised, but his teacher Julia will buy him anything he wants, maybe give him a fetic. It seemed that the puzzled expressions of the old man had made her ecstatic. The guy did a great job today and the teacher handed him a golden egg. This is an egg obtained from the dragon lord, he said that he got it from the god of heaven, so it will clearly be of use. Well, what does it mean from the god of heaven? There was no description of this egg. Well, they'll go now. By the way, when his level is higher than 200th and there is no standing dungeon on the way, then let him come to the man. He will open the imperial family dungeon for the guy. He went ahead with the girl, and the boy thanked him. Didn't Julia give too much away? This time it's worth giving up a little to him. Inferno, in the office, there was a girl sitting at a desk, and in front of her was a lot of scoreboard. Adjusted the level of participation in events in the main scenario. The difficulty is adjusted depending on the level of the user participating in the main scenario. The main scenario quest rewards have been adjusted. As for why this is happening again, she believes that it is correct that the level of participation in the events of the main scenario has been adjusted. It is precisely because of the maximum level limit that the main scenario has not yet been completed. It is clear that the complexity there is regulated proportionally. But there is one thing, the quest rewards are also changed, plus another unsuccessful creation of Isla's. Because of the descendant of Thanos, the Lord of Decaying Death began to move in a different direction from the original forecasts. The main scenario was adjusted by too many variables to predict the main scenario, she thought. She has to go through all these difficulties only because she has invested the necessary profession in this game universe. Well, nevertheless, this turn of events seems to be very exciting, it's just worth watching. On their way to the Temple of Thanos, the boys move forward, passing small mountains in a darkened landscape. The girl in the orange cap can't use her teleportation spell here, how inconvenient. If they were able to put up a barrier all over the mountain range, then the information that this is truly a great religion is reliable. According to the information that the girl in the green cap received from other religious bishops in the Pantheon, no other religion can invade the territory of the Temple of Thanos. As far as the knight knows, the Zenith's church, which worships the god of heaven, is the largest and most powerful religion in the central continent. And this is a church that worships the most powerful god, so they have reason to be nervous. According to the information that the Shinwa Guild found, even ordinary priests in the Church of Thanos are stronger than bishops of other religions, in other words, they are heading to the headquarters of such a powerful religion. Suddenly, everyone stopped, it's like an earthquake started, no one even knows, it doesn't look like a monster, and it doesn't feel like the earth's crust is shifting. How long they still have to go to the main temple? Quite a bit the guy replied. Whatever happens from now on, they will move slowly so as not to disturb anyone. Then we see how the birds flew up further, it turned out that there for the sake of the owner, the warriors must work hard today cut a mountain stone to make a statue. They were climbing a skeleton statue that already had a lot of blood on it, but what was going on? The guys watched from behind the cliff high and sung, because he seemed to call himself a descendant of Thanos. But he's not Thanos himself, is he? Then we see someone's old hands this is a man, a skeleton sitting on a throne, he understood that a descendant of Thanos had awakened. There is a fragment of the Demon King's soul, sealed a long time ago by the Apostle of Thanos. He gave it to his army to bring, and his order will be carried out. The Plague Knights, their leader ordered them to listen carefully, they will return the Demon King's soul fragment, however, they are greatly weakened. From now on, the moment they are discovered by Thanos' hounds, they will no longer be able to follow the Master's orders. While they are wasting their time in the traps, much to their shame, they must avoid their eyes in every possible way. Now the skeletons are sent to the royal castle of Phyalos. Then we see the beautiful tree of Elfheim, the city of elves. Then we see the house, the Black Union, the Black Spy Guild, this was the guild's base. Arjun's Thunderbird, Nurk the Steel Serpent. The girl was looking at them on the screen, if she caught these two bosses, how much would she get for them? Snake and Bird, boss monsters that can't be regenerated after being captured. Well, doesn't that mean that the items from their dungeon will never be available again? The head of KH Varan reported that information had arrived, according to which the amount of money invested at the moment is about 300 million. Taking into account items and other income, 
they are more than enough to cover all costs, well, in any case, this is not her money. In addition, they would earn a reputation for catching something that was beyond the Shinwa Guild's abilities. And only empty-headed pots will be the ones who will get into the events of the main scenario. And there is no need to try their best, because they can safely get information from their spies sitting in each guild. But isn't it time to read what information was sent to her? She put it on her hand on the envelope. Information about the dungeon root seal, there were 50 people when the capacity is exceeded. Nurk and Argent team up to destroy those who have invaded the dungeon. The entrance is only open when birds and snakes are fighting, so they fight several times a day. There are tree monsters inside they are all powerful, and the passage is quite wide, so it is considered more efficient to move in groups of several people. However, in order to avoid being caught by other Black Union guilds, the maximum number of secret agents in the Black Spy Guild is limited to 30. Even if the number of participants is not exceeded at the end of the raid, Bird and Snake work together to deal with intruders at the root of the seal. This was something the girl liked, if it was something that these two bosses were fighting over, then wouldn't it be much more valuable than killing those two animals? They should avoid the leader's gaze in other guilds to clear the dungeon and find the hidden value there. A man approached her, and he brought her a mercenary. The down payment, down payment, and items have all been paid. People came in. It was nice to meet her. She's a Twerin, one of the guild heads of the Black Union. There was a man of level 238, rare rank and fellow assassin. A guy of level 246, simple rank and thief class, Hankom Jai. These guys were in the first group. In the second, H. Wang Jai Chong, level 249, simple rank, tanker class, Ritzfil, girl, level 231, unique rank, and support class. There was also a girl whose level was classified by her nickname, there was Death, and she also had a unique rank. There was also a guy whose level is also a secret, his name was Hyun Sung with a unique rank. He will try his best to show that he was not paid such money in vain, he is counting on them. In the third group, there was this girl and the hero. The mercenaries had to deal with Nurk and Argenta. For the amount they were given, it's probably not a heavy request. This will be the 15th raid, which means there is a lot to learn, the hero thought. These are bosses that not only the Shinwa guild, but also the hero's guild couldn't catch. Perhaps even if he blew up a gravity meteor four times in a row, it wouldn't be enough. The mercenaries will attack the monsters in pairs when they signal the group to retreat. The girl will leave the newcomers with more information, they will provide a member of their guild. They're going to form a group by putting the two of them together in the order they're currently standing in. Again, as stated in the contract, additional compensation is not provided if someone dies during the raid. Items that they lose due to a fine that is imposed in the event of their death are not compensated. Report on the quest item. The man said to follow him, he will take them to a room where they can rest until they start the raid. It looks like that envelope on the table has some information about bosses, the hero thought. The man asked the group to wait here until they were called. The boy was sitting across from the guy she was meditating with. Judging by the atmosphere, he wasn't eager to start a conversation. He was looking at him, and he suddenly opened his eyes, no matter how nervous the opponent was, because the guy was in the same group as him. He didn't quite understand what was being said, but he thought the hero was wondering who he was to say something like that. He hopes the guy has heard of Ashura, which is a big secret, but he's one of Ashura's friends. Remove, we see skeletons moving into the indestructible royal castle. There is no demon king soul fragment in this place, it looks like someone took it, the head said. Judging by the remaining clumps of energy, a descendant of Thanos had been here. Now we know that he is also hunting for the demon king's soul fragment since he killed Baron Maul. There is a high probability that he will go to the next area. The skeletons are now heading towards the young world tree, where the next Demon King Soul Shard is located. There was a group of humans standing next to the elf tree, and it felt like something wasn't adding up. The Black Alliance should have more guild members than the mythical guild, but the fact that mercenaries are used doesn't mean that there are no talented people. And this is not the only strange thing, for some reason it seems to him that it will be better if the raid fails. And the look in that woman's eyes said that she wasn't going to give up, and besides, that letter on the table, it looked like she was up to something. Death watched the hero, he saw how his classmate looked quite tense. He told the guy not to worry, because in case of danger, he will protect them. The boy, of course, thanked him, but this guy clearly has no equal in lying. However, since he was chosen as a mercenary for this mission, it means that he is not without abilities. Instead of a man running up and shouting that someone was coming, everyone had to take up positions and wait for their turn. Everyone knew this wasn't the first time, but it looked like this raid was going to fail. Chaotic enthusiasm will be their Achilles heel. Although they had trained with each other, real combat and practice were different things, would he be able to see the second phase? A bird and a snake were approaching, they were ready to attack, as expected. These are not the monsters that can be defeated with four gravity meteor attacks. He did the right thing and decided to join the mercenaries for scouting. The mercenaries must first win over a Gronark. 
when his aggro is stable, immediately start attacking him. The guy assumes to take advantage of the loophole that has arisen and pull the monster over. He now understood the purpose for which the mercenaries had been hired. If they pull a monster over, then C focuses on them and the bird, and at this point they lead Didi into battle. First of all, you need to make a powerful attack to drag the monsters on yourself. All death attacks are incredibly powerful, he said. But the hero did not wait, he flew up and hit the monster, from which he screamed, it's too late to dodge, you will have to block the blow. The guy took a stance and defended himself with his M sword, he used the wind sword. Now it's time to go on stage, said his partner. So that's what he's so boastful about, that he clearly has abilities, he used black magic, stopped the monster. He said that there was no need to thank you, because for him it was a mere trifle, other mercenaries shot arrows, used their magic on the snake. The guy used a thousand jin strike. It can be said that he cut through the monster, then the bird crashed into it with its beak. Although others had heard at the briefing that the bosses were fighting each other, but no one expected such a fierce fight. In any case, today's raid was going to fail, the hero knew, so they would test how well he could handle the role of Didi alone. Although monsters control their MP, trying not to use basic skills, they still take quite significant damage. If you try hard enough, you can handle it alone, can't you? As the battle continued, he had to be careful, because he was attacking again. No one expected such an attack, so many died, Nurk stroked the HP of the dead party members. Why didn't the mercenaries keep an eye on him properly? Meanwhile the guy used a punch. A warning popped up that the serpent was furious and that the thunderbird was too. Both bosses have become much stronger. Before the second phase, the team was still like the moon, they had to run away as quickly as possible, as I thought, they were clearly up to something. But what? The bird and snakes used their attacks everywhere. If the guy stands still, he will die, he used the song of beads. Red rays began to radiate from it, and it all hit the monsters. They're heading for the young world tree, so what's going on? The song's effect was complete, and he only received 50% of the damage dealt within 10 seconds. All vital items have been restored, the raid monster suddenly starts behaving strangely in the middle of the battle and at the same time goes somewhere it is strange. Something is clearly wrong here, the fact that the head of the attacking squad has escaped suggests that he is aware of what is happening. The head of the attacking party is this member of the Black Union's Black Spy Guild. So the mercenaries were hired directly by the Black Spy Guild. In that case, what's on the Black Spy Guild's mind? If he followed the bosses, he would be able to find out, wouldn't he? The guy put on his mask and started shooting. Then we see a pit, and smoke was pouring down from the side, it seems that the guy is the only one who survived here. Even Death, with his excellent defensive skills, died in the blink of an eye. This cave is the same dungeon that was mentioned in the letter he saw before leaving the office. The Black Alliance, the woman, the bosses, the dungeon, it all seems to be interconnected in this way. The woman named H. Warren may not need to give orders directly, but the fact that she took absolutely no part in the raid suggests that her interest is focused on something else. Even though such a motley team was assembled, no one would act so detached after investing such a huge amount of money. He thinks that once inside, he can find out what this place is like and what the woman's plan is. The guy entered the dungeon, it's a special dungeon, no one knows what might happen here. There was also a warning that no one knew what was going to happen there, the two divine monsters didn't welcome intruders. There were 33 people in the dungeon, but who these people were, judging from the circumstances, they were clearly people from the Black Union. From the looks of it, the monsters must have come to kill them. The two bosses are either guarding something here, or they want to take it over, so they came back to deal with the intruders. Suddenly, a certain little man flew past the guy, smelled something delicious from the depths of the cave comes a very delicious aroma, he said, it turns out, the hero, thought about her, so I came here. The guy has no idea what that delicious smell is, of course, but she's so cute, so he'd better just keep quiet. He found a special quest for Tin's pet, the quest to find the Demon King's Soul Shard. In search of the Demon King's Soul Shard, the power that forms the basis of Tina's growth is none other than the Demon King's Soul Shard. However, due to the fact that the Demon King's soul fragments are so unstable, Tina's growth hasn't ended yet. And this dungeon feels the energy of another Demon King's soul fragment. If it is found and given as a gift, Tina really likes it, so her further growth won't be long in coming. It looks like she smelled that particular piece of glass, which means the guy thinks it's pretty good. Maybe then they will go and eliminate other competitors. The girl in her office was angry this raid was planned with all the variables taken into account. How then will the man explain what happened? If more than 50 people enter the dungeon, then two bosses will appear there to destroy the intruders. Therefore, a group of 40 people was sent with the man, taking into account that someone else would accidentally wander into the dungeon. The woman also knows about it, so someone entered the dungeon with the group they sent. 
As far as she knew, the man also had a plan in place for this case. I was, but suddenly I received a notification that 32 intruders had entered the dungeon. As a result of which the limit was exceeded, the monsters immediately reacted to this, destroying the raid squad, heading towards the root of the seal. If we were talking about two or three users, then this could be attributed to chance. But getting inside to a group of 32 people, and even through an unknown entrance, can only mean one thing. There is a high probability that we are talking about NPCs once the attempt to explore the dungeon fail, so they will have to wait another 10 days of real time until the next time. There are still about a dozen secret agents left, they need to be collected now, the woman said, to organize a new search party. And this time, she will also take part in the raid, no matter if it is an NPC or a user, she will clearly show what will happen to the one who pulls his hands to the desired item. Next, we see a certain tree fighting with skeletons. Due to the fact that someone entered here earlier, the limit was exceeded and the monsters came at their request. It was necessary to spread the plague and find the Demon King's soul fragment and also the team should try to stay away from the monsters. A descendant of a traitor can also come here to get their hands on the Demon King's soul shard if found, they must be killed on the spot, he said while lying on the ground. The guy meanwhile explored the dungeon, can you find out, baby, where is her yummy? It's quite difficult the whole cave is filled with this smell, she replied. If the smell suddenly becomes more intense, then let her immediately tell him about it and you need to watch carefully from his shoulder, and if he has to fight, then she needs to immediately retreat as far as possible. She promised to do just that. When they came, they saw an ordinary monster, it is very big, the girl was afraid. Suddenly something hit was hellfire, no experience points are awarded. The guy didn't understand what was going on the root giant was charged with plague who charged him with the plague, and the guy also wondered why his body has such a strange color. As expected, this is not an ordinary monster, it seems that it has no immunity or resistance to magic, but no attributes affect it. Attributes are powerless this is something new in this case, the magic swordsman Ashura enters the battle. The guy was holding a wooden staff and sword in his hand, a wooden man came out on it, he used gravity. And later on, he used the moonball cut, cutting a flower, he literally cut the monster in half. Later used shooting demonic bullets and so on the battle went on. The monster was trying to hit him with force, not magic. So monsters charged with the plague die this way. The fight turned out to be harder than the guy thought. If he meets a couple more of them on his way, then he will have to use a meter. A little girl called out to him that there was a threat from behind. There were a bunch of skeletons in armor that were trying to attack the guy. A meteor that was activated with a blessing. He used his attack and aimed it directly at this army. Crazy, his skill almost finished him off. The guy didn't say a word, just thought about it and it immediately activated. It turns out that the blessing skill's effect is too good is also a problem. The plague knight was hanged, he got the key to the main scenario with each new clue, he got one step closer to the second part of the main scenario. So they had used the skill of concealing their presence, given the nature of the dungeon, they made a pretty reasonable decision. Is the guy sure that because they have the vision of infected monsters, they can explore the dungeon without exerting any strength? He doesn't know why, but they're also looking for the Demon King's soul fragment. If you try to draw conclusions, then most likely the representatives of the Black Union were the first to enter the dungeon. Then the Plague Knights invaded here, which provoked a large-scale attack of these two monsters, and the two bosses finally dealt with the invaders from the Black Union. The Plague Knights have excellent concealment skills, so they still haven't caught the eye of those two bosses yet. The number of people in the dungeon only increased. As soon as the hero entered the dungeon, the number of people here was 33, he destroyed 3 of them, and there were 30 left. But now there are 41 of them, which means that 11 more people have entered the dungeon. Black Union no, it's certainly H. Wherein that woman from the Black Spy Guild. The situation takes an interesting turn, since they just entered, the guy should give them a warm welcome. We see the same woman at the beginning of the cave, hoping that everyone has concealment skills. The fact that despite being present in the dungeon, the monsters still haven't destroyed them means that the skills have worked. She can't believe it took her so long to do something so simple, but suddenly there was an earthquake, only they could generate such vibrations. This may mean that someone has fallen into their clutches, everyone must move around without letting down their guard for a second and continue to keep the concealment skill activated. They went to the dungeon, this is a special dungeon, no one knows what might happen, the system gave them the same warnings as the hero before. There are currently 41 of them in the dungeon, so two of those who entered earlier were dead. When the guys went a little further, they saw an army of those same armor. This is the place where what they crave is located. The sovereign's treasures can't be placed in the hands of the likes of them. They are the ones who have fresh blood, they should lay down their heads here. The girl was scared it still, what is it in front of them not the monsters of the root seal? Maybe it's an NPC he feels sorry for, but the curse of death devours them. Who are they? Why are they so strong? The woman was indignant. Her team started a fight suddenly there was poison somewhere, it was necessary to step back and use the antidote. 
their team, which is strongly opposed to them, are their mercenaries going to deal with them as soon as possible? The man didn't understand what the woman was talking about. A plague knight was hanged by the Knights of the Order of Decaying Death. The girl lost five secret agents, but got the key to the main scenario too. With each new clue, she gets one step closer. She never expected that they would find the basic scenario that the mythical guild was so frantically searching for. If you sell this information to Chung or Heli, you can make a good profit. The woman laughed, then we see the guy, he found it. Now we see the same knights, they have already lost six, they have invisibility cloaks made by Iris. That's why the guy doesn't think they would have been defeated by these monsters. It looks like they're dealing with intruders, they've spread the plague everywhere at the moment, but it hasn't reached all the targets yet. They hadn't been able to track Argenta and Nurk's movements. Now they believe that it seems that this is not enough to track down the intruders. The head thinks that they are dealing with an opponent who is not lacking in abilities. The fact that none of the six survive proves that the enemy is strong. From now on, all go together, Vice Captain. From now on, they will deal with the removal of intruders. Then we see a girl screaming, and later a guy he killed six, and not a single item fell out, but he needed to deal with them because they could become food for the monster and restore it to health, so he did it now. Why didn't the two bosses still appear? They couldn't help but pick up the vibrations of the gravity meteor. Just how big is this place that they still haven't come after him? In this situation, a one-on-one -on -one battle is much more profitable than a skirmish with two opponents. The guy looked up and saw a monster flying at him, it was destroying everything in its path, it was subjected to Nurk's furious roar, it is deafening for five seconds. But its divine energy, the effect of a cozy blanket, reduces this time to two seconds. Now he can get started, he used gravity meteors, pointed it straight at the monster, Thanos' serene cloud bed, the guy flew up in the air on the cloud. All of his health has been restored, and he can still use the effect of the serene cloud bed twice more. There are only two times left, you need to save them for the most extreme case, although the blow looks painful in reality, there is almost no effect. He combined the magnetic charge and the thousand jin strike, and received a cut through punch. Also the moon sword cutting flower, he used the wind sword. The guy delivered a fatal blow to a vital organ, and Thanos' nightmare was triggered. The monster is suffering from a nightmare, he is paralyzed. Thanos' nocturne, everything suddenly turned purple and the monster seemed to evaporate, it screamed in pain, its resilience beyond imagination. What does it matter to the guy that he's glaring at him like that? He probably can't do anything right now. Apart from howling in pain, the hero stopped and saw a root giant charged with plague coming at him. So the Chewy Knights would be coming for him soon, so he had to hurry. The Steel Serpent was entering the second phase the Steel Spike of the Steel Serpent was activated. It sucked in the health of all creatures on Earth, Nurk Steel Spikes piercing a root giant charged with plague. The guy didn't understand what was going on, the monster was screaming in pain Steel Snake regained stamina, it's just impossible. By the way, is that someone laughing there now? He really did laugh, now he's convinced. The snake was laughing and the monsters were screaming in pain, so it must be some kind of mechanism that restores the health of the monster when the spike is hit. Now it's clear why the Hero Guild and the Mythical Guild couldn't catch him, even though they cooperated. The effect of indomitable pain also ended today, so what should the guy do now? Magic has almost no effect on him, and close combat makes it difficult to avoid spikes it's a difficult task. What if, in this situation, a bird also descends? He had an idea, he shouted to the monster to attack, he was still recovering his health, at that moment a bird flew here, it attacked the snake and it screamed again in pain. She flew up to him and used her attack at the expense of what appeared to be a green light. It was his retaliatory attack at the bird, and they grappled and started the fight. They were fighting, but suddenly the snake noticed something, what it was. The bird suddenly unhooked itself and fell to the ground, the level was raised, it was the guy who defeated it. Still a game of Thanos Souls, it came in handy after summoning a boss using the Thanos Souls game, he created his own image with a mirage using an illusory spell. Although everything was done in a hurry, but the success on the face of it, he had no choice but to go for a deception, absorbing the health of the boss monster disguised as him. The snake did not understand where the bird had gone, but the guy shouted to it to open its mouth, because now a meteor was going to fly from it. So it happened right to fall a fireball flew to him, the thunderbird was at the end of the dungeon, the root of the seal, the path opened. Part of the seal was removed to destroy the remaining part of the seal, he needed to undress with the steel serpent. He had obtained the thunderbird card and could activate half of the territory, the seal root, in the form of a map. In the end, it turned out to be a place that would only be opened after both monsters were destroyed. The snake was serious, although the guy now felt like he'd become a villain, but if that wasn't the way things were going in the world, the guy must deal with himself before these people of decaying death arrive. Now that the stamina of the two bosses who had fought each other all their lives was at zero, he had at least a chance to win. The battle began, the snake fired its weapons from its mouth, but immediately it was chained up, instant movement plus blink, the hero used. 
Later, he used his sword to strike a thousand Jin plus gravity, as well as the gravity spear. Then when the monster was all on fire, it used to shoot demonic bullets. And then the nocturne of Tenados. The monster was exhausted, and the guy used the moon sword, cutting a flower, to rest in peace. The level has been raised. He has defeated a monster with which he has an unimaginable level difference. He received many different rewards, made impossible moves, and so on. Also all the seals were removed. He could activate the entire territory, the root seal, in the form of a map. The guy stopped though, and he was dealing with bosses, but on a battle that took longer than he thought, it's a shame. There were many more skills than when he was fighting the doppelganger. Yes, and the number of applications also increased, but it was not as fierce as then, but it managed to solve the problem only thanks to a timely strategy. The hero is still very weak. He has expanded the map of the dungeon. The Thunderbird map checks the area with a sound similar to radar, and the Steel Serpent map is a map with the topography drawn on it. What is it that he sees? The dots were moving on the map. Does this mean that he is able to track the location of the soldier decaying death? It also shows the location of the Demon King's soul fragment. Once you've found out where they're hiding, you can't just leave it at that. The guy thought, apparently, this is his fate. The decaying death soldiers realized that the monsters were dead. Although they are not in perfect condition, but the indisputable fact is that the power is then quite the same as it is worth doing. He truly deserves to be called a descendant of Thanos. At the moment, no movement is observed. It seems that he was seriously injured during the battle with these monsters. As planned, the direction they're heading is where this man is and that damned son will be punished just as he deserves. Although they use the concealment effect, they know how far its power extends, so you can't let your guard down for even a second. The team agreed, and they moved on. They saw a cloud, and a guy was lying on it, snoring, and the knights noticed it. We were talking about a descendant of Thanos, he would be quite capable of doing something like this. Since this is the god of death and sun, it's no wonder he's sleeping somewhere, should they attack him now. The soldier said to watch out for sleepwalking. Thanos sleepwalking was a calamity that none of the gods could stop. They were once members of a knight squad, so they know it well. As long as they are dealing with the descendant of that traitor, there is a high probability that he is exactly the same. However, despite using sleepwalking, he won't be able to defeat all of them, let the guys attack right now. They did so, but suddenly something purple appeared, they needed to dodge. An item with divine energy in Thanos is certainly interesting. If you put a pillow, blanket and bed together, then anyone who dares to interfere with sleep will be destroyed on the spot. Three people have already been killed, but the main thing is to kill the one in this bed. No matter how powerful the items with divine energy are, once the owner dies, it's all over. The knights tried to attack, but they did not succeed. They threw various blows, but the guy did not care. First they would retreat. The man moved away, but a blow flew at him. He even bled. Others tried to attack the bed, but nothing worked in the end. The monsters remained dead. The man looked at all this. Thana's narcolepsy skill was activated. He was forced to fall asleep. His character will remain in the game until he is forced out of the game, and even if he leaves the capsule, he will be able to disconnect. The alarm was also activated. If he connects to the character after two hours of real time, he will be able to continue the game. The effect of items with divine power has been activated, and the intruder has been installed, activating absolute protection for a full sleep. The plague knights were leveled up, the decaying death knights were destroyed, he got the key to the main scenario, and the dream continued. The guy didn't notice anything. The chapter of decaying deaths reported that they failed and the chapter was disappointed. You need to get only one insignificant thing, but again a failure. All the monsters were angry. The head used magic, a red ball appeared in his hand. He told everyone else to become a victim. The Knights of Sloth have all submitted to him, and he must complete what the Knights of Plague have failed to do. Well, how frustrating it is that a man is not able to do what he was assigned. How pathetic is the one who once held the title of Pope. The man yelled at him to sh For someone who is sealed, he is too talkative. At the very least, he hadn't reached a day like this, when a man finally broke the seal, the entire continent would be in his hands. So what business did he come here for? Apparently, he encountered a descendant. He also lost his precious doppelganger because of him, although it wasn't such a bad result. And what will be the plan, as he himself sees with such a body, he is unlikely to be able to implement any plan of life himself. The dragon had told him that he would have to collect the offering first, and he would definitely be able to handle it. Only this time, he needed to do everything right. Yes, consciousness, his position is still, apparently, far away. Thanks to the items with divine energy, the fatigue was completely removed. How great it is, the hero woke up.
Also, the Plague Knights that were interfering with the quest were destroyed, and he even has a key to the main scenario, so now all that's left is to visit this place. As expected, if he hadn't caught both monster bosses, there was no way she would have opened this door. He turned to the girl, if the situation seems dangerous, then she should return to her room on the same day, she understood everything. Did he really want to enter the altar? Sure enough, yes the seal has been destroyed, the sealed consciousness has awakened, there is not a single notification with a warning. The descendant has proved his qualifications, the hidden part is awakened, he has found a hidden object, memories returned to the sealed consciousness. The guy went inside, everything was green. He came face to face with the consciousness of a dream apostle who serves Tenanos. He achieved a phenomenal achievement, all stats plus 10. What kind of apostle Tenanos is going to give him this time? Mother, don't worry. In front of him was a girl who seemed to be flying, a glorious descendant of God, and it was a great honor for her to meet him. She is the apostle of dreams Elysium. What other apostle does she look more like a real goddess? What kind of situation is this? Then we see the study, which is located in the tower, and in the circle lies the apostle. He jumped up and realized that there were serious problems. How Miss Elysium had awakened in the first place, he had to adjust the plan a little. They were standing in a green clearing, the return of the memories of her sealed consciousness reflected on her body all thanks to the providence of God. But the guy scratched his head and said he didn't do anything. He should have known that if he hadn't shown up, she would have continued to attack other creatures, then died. The girl on his shoulder was happy, because her master is better everything moves in accordance with his will, she already considers it nothing but fate. Or should she start first? In order to tell him why she became like this, she thinks she should briefly tell him about Tananos. Although he is widely known as the god of death and sleep, he is also the god of dreams. So if other gods only have one apostle and only one item with divine energy, the god Tananos has three apostles and three items with divine energy. The guy understood everything, she's not the same apostle as that person, is she? Did he meet any of the apostles besides her? He had crossed paths with one of them, and the meeting left only unpleasant memories, so he wondered if all the apostles were like this, which they hadn't met yet. It looks like he has met a dream apostle, he is an extremely frivolous and mischievous apostle. It turns out that the man was not an apostle of death, he is so gloomy that he is just perfect for the role of such an apostle. And the one who sealed the girl here was also the postal of sleep. She gave her consent, so don't worry too much about it. The girl felt that there was no one else who could protect the demon king's soul fragment sealed here, because she was the only apostle who could control this kind of consciousness. Here it is, as probably the only apostle that exists in this world at the moment is the apostle of sleep. Furthermore, her consciousness residing here had long since lost some of its memories due to the demon king's soul fragment. Despite this, as an apostle representing God, she is very ashamed. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed of anything can happen over time, she thanked the guy for understanding, as expected, he's very caring. Her soul, which is located here, guards the demon king's soul fragment. Since the king of Philos was entrusted with the smallest fragment of the demon king's soul, no guards were assigned to it. However, the rest of the shards are guarded by her consciousness, and in other dangerous places she also guards the seals. So the one who sealed it is the apostle of sleep, and the one who protects the seals is her lady Elysium. Why else is mistress the word is inappropriate? It turns out that next to the seal of the dragon of death Achillier, there is also her consciousness. That's right, although this is not a private child, but there was nothing to be done. Why does she call the dragon of death and wretch? More importantly, it turns out that he still hasn't met the death apostle yet, as expected, he's great. No, he might actually be able to become their full-fledged god. A dream apostle whose consciousness is split into several parts right now, but still based on her words, a death apostle seems to only be encountered under certain circumstances. Maybe I live up to my name and he's someone he can only meet when he's dead. Did he really need to die just once, even if it was on purpose? The girl doesn't have much time left, when the parts of her consciousness are printed out one by one, the binding body will also awaken. We will pray desperately to meet him again at that moment. The guy thanked her and had a good time, she gave him a fragment of the demon king's soul. She is sure that God will make good use of it, she means the child on his shoulder. Since she had already given that child a present, then she should give him a present too. She can't give much, because the power of her consciousness is weak here, but please let him accept her gifts. She is a little ashamed, but since he said that she should forget about the word shame, then she dares to give him her gift. What was she going to do with that? The girl used her power and directed some pink balls at the guy. Thanks to the power of this girl, Thano's dream skill has been temporarily enhanced, it can only open a dream shop, and all skill items that can be obtained in God's scrolls have a divine level or higher or random. He is surrounded by the grace of the Apostle of Dreams, the feeling that something good is about to happen. He opened a dream shop, where there was a choice of an item or a choice of a skill. He used Thana's prophetic dream, Dreams of Wealth. So he started, he used the item and skill selection.
he had obtained an item with divine energy as well as strength, and he needed to check the inventory. It seems that now it's time to say goodbye, the girl thinks that the will of this world will definitely be fulfilled. Balancing has started, and it will automatically log out in 10 seconds. Those who are not in a secure location will be moved to a secure location before logging out. Balancing is limited to the Korean server. The girl was standing still, the guy in front of her disappeared later. She too, she hopes that they will see each other again. The guy received an urgent notification about balancing from the Inferno office. Many people were at a loss due to the situation that arose. All users who suffered a loss for the start of balancing will be compensated after the patch is completed. Also, after the end of this patch, they will extend for 5 days during the free use of the capsule. In addition, they plan to distribute random boxes of rare rank and once again apologize. Considering the fact that the correction started as soon as the guy got the power and the item with divine energy, then this situation clearly has something to do with him. What a blessing it is that not a word is said about him here. In any case, this is not about some illegal program, but on the contrary, this is what he achieved through hard work and skills. So he doesn't think that anyone will touch the powers and items with divine energy that he has received. To put it bluntly, Nakanu is currently using the skill of Sun Tenanos. Getting a high rank skill and item once every 15 days is, of course, an advantage. A girl ran into his room and said they should go protest against the ideas, but why? This is something he achieved through his own efforts, so isn't the balance patch a bit much. And that's what she's talking about now, he should not say that, but go and get them to answer. The fact that he receives heroic and legendary rank skills once every two weeks, and the fact that he is only given items of heroic and legendary rank, is really quite a scam. They will be able to do this even after the patch ends, now they will go better to eat. She doesn't know if he's really calm or just reserved. There was a guy on the Japanese server, Sue, level 399, the only user of the divine level profession, the best unofficial ranker on the Japanese server. The guy fought, fired arrows at his opponents, thereby defeating them. It took a long time. The god of hunting sends them, the apostle, a message. Excellent work of the apostle, now he needs to enter the cave and take what will become his power. He did so, there was a bow inside, and it was the guy who tried to take it. But does it have an invisibility function? What is it? The quest was completed, the reward was received, probably the item is already in the inventory. As a reward, he received a skill, the skill of the hunting god Artem, and moved on to the next quest. Well, where is the item with divine energy? The god of hunting sent him a message, the god of hunting provides an additional reward, he received the relic of the bow of the apostle of hunting. Religion is not a subject with divine energy, but religion what kind of divorce is it? Next, we see the House of the Apostle of Dreams has done a lot of things. From the Elysium Blessing to the Dreams of Wealth buff. Why did he decide to strengthen Napok like the current situation with a Japanese Divine Rank user? The man will display the image on the screen. The Japanese server management team, after all, gave him an additional reward, right? In this case, what should they do with the American server? The report says that on the American server, two users have a profession of Divine Rank. Fortunately, they are similar, and they didn't notice the disappearance of the power that Hai and Sung Syak had acquired earlier, and they joined the server relatively recently. Here you can really exhale, now the problem is in the nerf, the moment Ashura opens his mouth, the image of the corporation will be destroyed. The manager got a call about the patch. They decided in the future to create items and powers corresponding to the item with divine energy for users of divine rank servers in other countries. Of course, you can't do it right now. What a relief this is for the man and by the way, about the nerf user high and sun, maybe he will like it and won't complain. If we are talking about the user high and sun, then on the contrary, he will be delighted with such improvements. Due to the NPSLC, there will undoubtedly be changes to the traces of the Apostle quest that high and sung users will receive at level 200. Major changes can be avoided if the user does not meet the Death Apostle before reaching the 200th level. If there are changes to the Apostle's Footprints quest, it will affect the main scenario. In that case, she needs to know if the main body of the Dream Apostle Elysium is still intact. The Dream Apostle is still where it was originally, but the Dream Apostle has also taken action, and as she said earlier, changing the NPC's behavior also affects the main scenario. Fortunately, the shadow of the Dragon of Death and Decaying Death follow the original pattern of behavior. However, the problem is the Sloth Knights, who have gone after the Demon King's third soul shard. There is a Saint of Tananos in that direction, but since he always moves as he pleases, it is not certain that he will stop them. It turns out that the guys have no other choice but to do what they can do. Yes, they faced a serious problem, since the beginning of the continental scenario was laid before the average level of users reached the proper level. That's right, they absolutely need to fix this problem. Next, we see someone fighting lizards, today he is in great shape. 
It was a group of friends, and Obi thought his shield had earned some good service today, too. They can catch 200 grand and go. Well, go ahead. But suddenly someone shouted the seven horned skink is attacking them, they are finished. Suddenly someone attacked the other from the mouth, but what happens is that breathing. Friend, the guy from the cliff shot an arrow and killed the monster, he defeated it. There is no social value, and he may not receive a reward. Is this Ashura? The three guys thought, and he smiled. I should probably add the divine arrow of Ashura. Diana, the item with divine energy is the bow that he obtained. The bow of Artem, the god of Ozoda, which he sent down to earth for his apostle. When holding the bow, divine power arrows can be summoned without restrictions. The divine power arrow never lingers or consumes any energy. Diana can also appear anywhere he wants, even if the bow is in their inventory, he can summon her with a single thought, and much more. As expected, his master is gorgeous, the girl rejoiced. In addition, Tina also grew up eating a fragment of the Demon King's soul, although with the exception of a change of headdress, nothing much has changed. The abilities of the item with divine power, they checked, can now evaluate the power. The last stage of the battle god, it seems that there is a divine rank called the battle god. Since the hero has appropriated his power, he will probably be very offended in the future. The final stage of the battle god is the ultimate limit, which contains everything that can be obtained from the battle god. More than any other skill, more than any other weapon, this is the last line of the god of battle, which makes him stronger. This skill replaces all stats except HP and NP with strength, and all physical attack power changes five times. All equipment effects remain invisible, and all active skills are sealed, only passive skills are applied. Items cannot be obtained while the last stage of the battle god is active, and experience points are halved. The effect was guaranteed and although the risk is great, but still we are talking about incredible power. Despite the fact that a nerf was placed on Tenano's dream, everything turned out much better than the hero thought. He checked his shop, even though it was a random selection, the DP loss was reduced, if he was lucky, he would be able to get 4 legendary rank positions. In this case, it is the opposite, a buff, not a nerf. This is a real jackpot for him. Then we see the capital city of Beldorn, and we see a guy drinking something from a mug, can he find out what made her come here? After all, it seems that people change when there's a big change in their state of mind, Lucifer, she said. He just feels like he needs to change. Apparently, negotiations will not be easy for her, but will the current situation not play into her hands? She wants to find out something about Ashura, but how did he find out? As soon as she entered the game after the patch expired, she immediately began to find help. Had he already noticed what she was doing in such a short period of time? Is he dangerous as a new sponsor who looks like his wallet is full to the brim? This sponsor is very considerate, since he easily discarded Zerakles, does he want her to offer to make a deal? Now the conversation has moved on, so what does the guy want? Suddenly, the woman was interrupted, an envelope was brought to her, what else is there? The Rainer Guild turned around. He tried to team up with like-minded people because he was defeated, but it seems that his skills in managing the superhuman guild leave much to be desired. The woman should go over to their side, the man told her. Well, it's really a bit of a shame that it can't even run rampant on a Korean server. The woman didn't quite understand what he was talking about, but it was exactly as he said. To solve this problem, she needs to catch Ashura, who still has a low level but is already well known. In addition, there are quite a few Korean server and unofficial rankers who hate Ashura. So, if she's ready to join them on the payment bill, she doesn't have to worry. In the bag that he put her, there were 500,000 coins in hundreds, translated into money that's about $6 billion. It may consider this as a fee provided as a condition of cooperation with them. Where did he get this? What country is he from? Is he from America? What is required of them? They know Ashura's weak spot, so just let her find out its location. There were a lot of headlines, the intuition of Ashura's new mask, why put another video on YouTube when in fact it's just a brutal massacre of the boss, has anyone seen Ashura in a red mask and much more. Today, the guy caught about 10 bosses. Just like E.H. Wan said, the public is interested in watching the so-called boss raids. It is interesting to show different guises of Ashura, because thanks to the received items with divine energy and strength, he is a divine shooter than the master of the battlefield. Now there are only Chimera spiders left. Wouldn't it be great to break the record of Eden, the leader of the mythical guild, the number one player? However, the problem is that the minimum number of people to enter is two. Should the guy really start a guild, or should he tell Rin about it? Then, of course, she will provide all the support from her side, but he is still in his thoughts, because you can fool someone and then disperse and hunt alone. Should he just start shouting in the middle of the street like he did when he went to the Lycan Cave? But then he noticed the guy who was standing just like that, shouting that voice, was familiar. He shouted that whoever became his partner could safely hide behind him, let those who were confident approach. No one is aware of the benefits they can get from this, no one recognizes their skills, and no one wants to team up. 
Maybe he chose a strange concept because he thought that with an unusual approach, he could quickly find a partner. He was sad and didn't even pay attention to the person who approached him. That guy has something to do with him. Or maybe he's the brave dude who wants to go after the spider queen's head with him. His concept hasn't changed at all. The guy smiled, but you can and, so to speak, don't want to team up with him. The guy stood up and shook the hero's hand. At this moment, when they shake hands firmly, they will be united by a comradeship that is no different from fraternal ties. Death is again the same unchanging concept. As a result, the guys created one team, the guy realized that Ashura had joined him and was shocked, is this really the one? Just look at the equipment, it looks exactly like what the guy saw in the video, it turns out that this is Ashura himself. By the way, there's no boss here, because he also has his own record, but instead of playing alone, he's looking for a companion. Apparently, he started looking for a partner because there is a restriction on the dungeon. It seems that the choice fell on the first player who came across. He's going to have to shoot a video, so it looks like he's chosen the one who stands out the most. Death still couldn't understand that this was the real Ashura and what to do, what to say or thank for becoming a partner, what to do in general. The hero turned to the guy, how about you first change the location? He agreed there are too many losers in this place. The hero understood everything, and Death got angry, they came to a cafe and sat down at the same table, if he just goes dumb like a fish and demonstrates his abilities, then he will add him as a friend. The guy said that he wants to introduce himself as a blogger who has a channel called Ashura on YouTube, it's better for the guy to keep quiet. Even though the hero turned to him because he was looking for a team, but the main goal of the hero is to make a video with the Spider Queen. Of course, for large-scale raids, you need a certain team size, but as he knows, the guy specializes mainly in single-player raids. However, this time, if he doesn't mind, the guy would like to shoot a video of their raid together. It can't be that the guy was thrilled, he was offered to star in a video on Ashura's channel. The guy jumped up and said that he already shared his life with him. Of course, he doesn't mind with both hands in favor, now they are definitely friends. Why are there only such people in the hero's entourage? He wondered indignantly in his mind. Has the guy seen the boss video, so does he know the pattern? The guy said nothing in response before coordinating their actions, you need to give Death a little explanation. He will tell him briefly, by the way, judging by his worn out equipment, apparently a tank. This is how you can say that this is the strongest shield, and although we are talking about a unique rank, you can take on the role of a tank. Both aggro and even a bit of the dealer's damage, and now understands why he calls it the strongest shield. Apparently, the guy doesn't know, so he will tell you about the laws of conducting a boss fight. There were spiders on the way, of course, and the guy defended this skill that he showed earlier, and later used an attack on the spider, and he succeeded. The hero of course thinks that his partner will not die during the battle with the spider queen. After all, he knows perfectly well when to contribute to the victory, and when to step aside. They continued to fight the spiders, the guy using his shields, and then attacks. The spider was confused, unable to recognize allies and enemies for 10 seconds. At that moment, the guy used his attack and chopped it into small pieces. Just how much damage can it do to the enemy that it was able to kill this spider in just a few attacks? Most likely, the guys together can defeat the spider queen, because Ashura is not with him, so there will definitely be no problems. Other teams looked at the spiders and how the guys overcome them, there are quite a lot of people here, and it also feels like they are carefully watching every movement of the hero, it seems that they are up to something. He turned to death, how about we rest for a while, since he looks tired. Nothing like that, said the guy who sees it, it's just a perfectly good acting game. Now, there was only the boss room left, so they should rest first and then go there. The guy agreed, well, more precisely, if the hero thinks so, that it is necessary, then they will do so, let it be according to him. Ashura laughed in response, and they went to rest. It's just not possible, how is it even possible to capture such a monster? People didn't understand how they managed to dodge and even move, it's impossible, whether they saw, he even used the skills to a minimum. They just aren't able to catch this spider, so report it to the supervisor waiting in front of the boss room. It really would be worth changing the strategy, based on what we saw now, the most effective way would be to hit him after he finished the raid. At that moment, when he will be tired and vigilant in his opinion, the guys discuss standing far away. He might be a monster, but he would still run out of steam after a boss fight. They were overheard, there's a little girl, it's a trap. A girl quickly flew up to him and told him that they were going to catch him after the boss raid. They can try, the hero said. Then we see the Araman Guild, a guy was sitting in the office, he was informed that Ashura had entered the spider lair. During the capture of the spider queen, he must be thwarted and killed if the opportunity presents itself, said the guy sitting in the chair, he was obeyed. His place was third in the guild ranking, tenth in the official Araman ranking. He was also told that under the terms of the deal, even if they failed to kill the hero, they would transfer money to their account for the information alone, right? That was exactly what the man who had spoken to the woman had said. He's counting on their response to agree to join the guild union, 
and now he's going to leave them. The man disappeared, and the guy thought in the future, the landscape of the idea will change dramatically. Is he by any chance Mr. Ashura asked the guy at the entrance? That's right, although the hero is missing a lot, but this guy is one of the leaders of the Araman Guild, Pollen. The hero was nice to meet you, his name was Ashura, is he really going to go on a raid now? Yes, the two of them decided to try their luck, they are really great. All their preparations are not yet fully completed, the guys prepared in advance, but there were problems in the process. So they still have a lot of things to prepare, if the guy doesn't mind, he might as well challenge the boss first. Well, if you can squeeze in out of turn, of course, it doesn't matter since not only they, but also other members of the guild are preparing for this raid. If he is well rested, he can start the raid. There is nothing surprising in such careful preparation, because the Spider Queen has after all the unique ability of slow rebirth. That's the guy, which, of course, for those who are hanged, there is a fine that prohibits entering the boss room for a week, but how can this prevent and challenge? Now that he knows the boy's plans, it all seems so obvious. Well, if they think it's a leak, then he should have some fun with them. He will never understand those who think that after a boss fight, he will collapse in exhaustion. Since this is the case, the guys will go first, the partner was worried about where to stop, he said that the guys will rest. Everything is as planned by the guys, these two will go first. The guilds had told him that they didn't know what to do with his partner, but Ashura would definitely complete the raid successfully, at which point they would have to strike. They need to strengthen their positions, everyone needs to be ready, he leaves in less than an hour. The second phase was completed in 10 minutes and 15 seconds an absolute record. It took 13 minutes and 35 seconds to clear the first and second phases. It doesn't matter if they are destroyed or not, their goal is to find out what the hero's weaknesses are. The Spider Queen was dead fixed, there was a new team record holder of 18 minutes and 47 seconds. The team of Ashura and Death managed to set a new record. In accordance with the merits of the team is given a special item elixir of the Spider Queen. Everyone was shouted to quickly get into position, the door was starting to open the main attack, the ranged mages are coming, let them hurry up. The door opened and there was an explosion, did this hero die? But what is it? How is it even possible that a spider came out of the smoke? How dare some insignificant humans attack the Spider Queen? Due to the fact that these people attacked the hero spider, now believes that they are enemies. They said that they were going to participate in the raid, so the guy decided to show special generosity and brought the boss to them from the dungeon. Destroying the continent was just a game to him. The queen came out of her enclosure and started attacking people. Even if he was going to die, he would still kill Ashura, people shouted. Let them try, he dashed at cool admired partner. People tried to fight off small spiders and large ones. Summoning a powerful boss will never be able to get his soul again, it's a pity even though it's small, but it has a lion's appetite, the guy looked at the girl on his shoulder. Well, let's see, he has about 30 enemies who have lost their morale. Who was holding a grudge against him, he had previously seen Rotting Death fight against the Black Spy Guild, and it was clearly not related to Rotting Death. Now they are trying to find out who they are. The guys just played them, you need to find at least a small weakness of this hero. They need to find a weak spot in his new fighting style, and then the guy will get into the vanguard. Suddenly an arrow flew at him, he stopped it with his shield, and when he ran to attack, and everyone ran after him, a lot of arrows started flying at them. The guy was twisting the thing over himself, thereby protecting people, they are coming from two sides. But then he noticed Ashura from above and shouted everyone dodge, darkness descended from the sky, threw an arrow straight down. Now they should attack, but the guy was already on the ground and was throwing other guys around in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Red Mask, is it possible to deal with him at all, should the guy himself sort out what he brewed? Now that the guild was finished, he asked the headmaster why he was being attacked. Angry Heaven's protection the guy thought about it, looked back and started running. He was on the edge, if it wasn't for the summoning spell, he would have already died. But he never found out why the guys were attacking him, he didn't have any conflicts with the Araman guild. And there's no way they would do that, just because the hero won the record, he thinks he needs to keep watching. And I used some kind of scoreboard and my partner ran up to him. In fact, there is no one cooler than Ashura. Death worked hard on the week today, hero is very sorry that because of him, he ended up being dragged into this kind of incident. No need to apologize, it's an honor for him, he will keep what happened in his memory. Also that video where they're raiding, the guy will edit the parts where the guy appeared, don't put it on the channel. If he so wants, then the hero can post a video of the cutout, all the parts with him at the beginning, he said that he doesn't care. Yes, yes, he doesn't care at all, the guy laughed. If so, the hero will leave him because he has an important case, he hopes that they will cross paths with him again. Then we see a wooden house, of course, such forces are not enough to grab Ashura, the guy thought. After all, the profession of the divine rank will not get, but who, Lucifer, is everything good for him. Thanks to him, he's had a good rest, he's glad to hear it, so the guy is calling him to make a report on Ashura, isn't he? Just as they had anticipated, the Araman guild had failed. 
a message was received that Gaia can only be destroyed if there are at least 300th level users gathered. No lower than the man on the other side of the phone was thinking, and what are the guy's thoughts on everything? In his opinion, there must be at least 10 users with level 350 and above. As expected, it fully corresponds to his profession. No, it should probably be said that it is different from all the other divine ranked corresponding professions on the continent. And it is not easy to say that there is an item that can only be obtained by eliminating Ashura, and when you manage to get it, the path to a new phase will be opened. But who is the source who shared such information with the man? This is something he can't even reveal to Lucifer unless he himself guessed that it was none other than an NPC. Isn't there a special reason why only Ashura is a descendant, while other players with the divine rank profession are apostles? That's where he got it right. So, if you consider him as a boss in this situation, yes, they think that he is the key to becoming a descendant of the zenith of the god of heaven. In addition, it seems that he is also the key to unlocking the main episode. The weaknesses that Ashura has discovered so far don't seem to be very helpful, something like his low level. We need to collect more information, the guy is not deprived of abilities, so he will cope with this task. Lucifer will do whatever it takes to live up to expectations. That would be really great, the man thinks, and he should know that he's about to leave the Eastern Continent for the Midlands in the near future. As soon as the second part of the main episode of the Eastern Continent is over, the man will have the opportunity to move between continents, it was not bad to cross paths at that moment. And now he has urgent business to attend to, so he has to leave, and Lucifer bowed, and they parted. In the near future, Ashura, the guy must definitely kill him. Then we see the main temple of the Tanano's religion, where a man sat idly by. Cardinal Carrot, she's back. The girl greeted Papa, Tenano's most loyal servant. A man's heart is filled with joy when he meets the faithful servant of their religion, Cardinal Carrot, who has returned from a mission. She bowed down to him. It looked like they had failed. It was a trap of decaying death. All the places they attacked were altars. And as a result of attacking them, the only result was that these people managed to make a sacrifice. In the end, the guys helped these renegades. But suddenly the man put his hand on the girl's forehead and told her to calm down. She thanked him and apologized for appearing in such an inappropriate manner. There is no need to apologize, she returned safely, so the man should listen carefully to her from beginning to end. The other gods began to act and also took the side of decaying death, the man said. This time, while tracking down decaying death, she discovered the divine power of the sky in the eastern continent and the divine power of light in the western continent. When she began to study each case separately, she found that, although to a small extent, they help putrefying deaths. There is only one being in the world with divine power, and that is the apostles. She wasn't able to get to the bottom of it, but she was able to figure out that they were cooperating with the decaying death. It seems that other religions have begun to actively spread their influence. They are gods who cannot even raise their heads in the presence of Thananos, but in his absence immediately turn their backs on him. She knows full well how and arrogant they are, but the moment a descendant of a god gains true power, they won't have to worry about traitors anymore. A man is much more concerned about the decaying death, the girl fully shares his anxiety, they are the most real traitors, so she can't understand why the apostles left them alone. However, even that might be Tanano's will, she doesn't see any signs of movement at the moment, so they'll wait and see. In addition, the priests were concentrated in places that were supposedly considered sacred land in the past. Therefore, they will be immediately informed if they take action. As expected, there is no choice but to untie Libya's hands. And where is he now? As soon as the mission was completed, he said that he was finally free and rushed like a bullet to the master. It was even stronger than before, so she didn't manage to grab it. There's nothing to apologize for, but it's just as well, at least they know where their destination is, don't they? The girl asked to listen for a few days, she feels the presence of a descendant, did he also disappear? No, it couldn't be that they were abandoned by someone so strongly attached to them in heart and soul, as soon as she sensed the descendant's energy, she would immediately report it to the man. Did he leave because he didn't want to see Libius? And this option should not be excluded. Then we see a desert, and there is some kind of explosion, the guy was running after him, monsters were chasing, he shouted for the owner to meet him. If the guy likes it, then the man likes it too. He used Eclipse and threw an arrow straight at the guy's head. There was an explosion, everything turned purple later, cleared up. The guy continued to run, but the monsters were no longer there, nevertheless, the experience points skyrocketed. This guy is over the moon to see his master again after all this time. I should have listened to Huna and taken a little more time to rest before connecting to the game. Nevertheless, the hero got a lot of fun, finally arranged a short vacation for himself. He was relaxing together, and after spending time with Huna and Ye Chuan, seeing Libya's face is very difficult. He asked if the owner could fire another shot, it was so exciting to the blood. The hero immediately asked how long the guy wanted to repeat this until all the monsters in the vicinity were destroyed. 
but to destroy all the inhabitants here, one eclipse will not be enough. If you put a meteor in the divine power chute, the power will increase threefold, and all attacks will become critical, so in this case, you will be able to achieve what you want. The servant was already ready to take up position. He ran again, breaking his legs from all the monsters and the hero struck and hit a gravitational meteor. If the counter-attack wasn't enough, then he would add a light to it by taking advantage of the serene cloud bed effect. The guy clamped down on the arrow and aimed it straight at the monsters, but then it suddenly broke. The hero was shocked to see her fall to the ground right in front of him, and the berserk song was activated. There was an explosion, the guy's level was raised, the berserk song was ending. He took 50% of the damage taken within 10 seconds. His stats were restored, his HP was zero, and he died. The conditions were met and a challenge to the underworld was made. The guy did not understand what was happening, and then he found himself underground. There was the apostle of death, he had been waiting for him for so long, the man was kneeling in front of the hero and crying. The guy noticed this explosion on the surface and was delighted with such a game of his boss, but would not notice anywhere around, he started shouting and calling for his boss. Meanwhile, the hero was in the apostle dungeon waiting for him since he became one. He had been waiting here all this time out of fear that he might show up here while he was away. I didn't want to miss the meeting with the hero for a ridiculous reason. While he was waiting for him, he felt relieved that the guy wasn't dead yet, but at the same time, he was very sad that it didn't happen, the man apologized for his behavior. The hero asked him to get up from his knees, he, of course, forgives him, even if the man is already getting up. In this case, he will take the guy to a more convenient place. This place, this is his pride and joy, he hopes that he will enjoy this kind of food. It's going to be a long conversation, and he must be very curious right now. Even an immortal traveler like him can't stay in this world for a while after death. Then why is he still here? Thanos is the god of death, sleep and dreams, the other gods rule only one, but the great Thanos rules three. Among them, there is a male apostle, although undeservedly he inherited the power of death. This is related to the main scenario of Thanos cursing the decaying knights, so listen to the apostles, that might get him into the main scenario, right? A man rules the underworld instead of a lord this is so that he can teach the transcendence of death. In other words, he's just a new god, but what? It seems like a huge penalty is provided for the death penalty. Firstly, its level will decrease, which everyone hates. Secondly, such a person is forbidden to enter real-time mode. And thirdly, loss of experience. To transcend death is to prevent death and weaken oneself during his resurrection from the dead. It sounds tempting. For this, the man apologizes, but the guy will need to pass the test. Something like a trial, in order to transcend death, there must be a reaper under his command. The more soul reapers he has under his command, the closer he is to overcoming death. If he passes the test, God grants him the power to transcend death. Then he should inform the man when he is ready right now, the guy is ready for the test, this is the right time, he thought. This is great in this case, the man will lead, his boyfriend got up and blue streams swirled around him. In this place, whenever he defeats a dead man, they come under his command. However, all of his skills would be sealed here, so he would only have to fight using his physical strength. Well, as for his stats, don't worry too much, his skills may be improved, but his stats will remain the same, but the reapers will duplicate his stats, so be careful. It turns out that the skills are fixed, but the statistics do not change, the man hopes that the sacred will pass the test. He wishes the guy all the best, and thank you, will it be enough for him to catch at least one reaper? Yes, but the more he grabs, the more reapers will be under his command, but he has to be careful as healing is impossible, he understood everything. The man sat down at his desk after meeting such a nice person, he now misses him. While other gods choose their apostles from among their followers, Thon has created them himself. Where he may have disappeared, there is a high probability that suspicion of him is somewhat dormant, where this could be true. Just in case with the help of a descendant, it should be resting after completing its test. Even if he surpassed death this time, there would be no more than 10 reapers under his command. Suddenly someone knocked on his door, he asked this person to enter, what's wrong? Is this descendant still in the center? He arranged a lawsuit about this, he will check the presence himself. But when the man approached, he didn't understand what was going on and was in shock. As expected of a descendant, is he really different? He was able to defeat all these monsters. At the same time, he had already reached 200 points, there was no way this could happen, the man thought that he repaired every reaper from the underworld. He made all of them his subjects, he achieved a great achievement and earned the title of king of the reapers. He had gained the hidden piece of descendants, he had gained the authority of the transcendent death. The title of reaper king could only be earned by defeating all of them with their own strength. The transcendence of death, or rather power, was none other than the descendant who had spawned death for him. Death was nothing more than a game. By passing the test, he reduces the death penalty by the number of reapers in his service. And much more he gets with the help of these skills. When he guy came out, but saw the man on the floor, he was lying down and praised the guy. He really can't help but experience the blessing. He should be punished for daring to underestimate the hero, 
but the hero said that it was fine and the man should stand up. The man is grateful that the guy is so generous that he forgave him, now he will prepare everything for his comfortable rest. He worked hard, he never thought that he would defeat all the reapers. The man believes that he has already mastered the death trance and he really does have it, as you would expect from a descendant of Thanos. The man is worried that he's taking up the hero's time when he hasn't even had a chance to rest yet, but he hopes that the guy will accept it. The man handed him the relic of Thanos' Nim, it is in his possession of the divine relic. It was supposed to be in the main church, but somehow ended up in the underworld, so now the man returns it to its rightful owner. The guy was insanely happy with the gift, but as soon as he took the box then disappeared, where did he go? He somehow teleported to the toilet. Most likely, the man will have this box next time. He'll probably be back soon man. Doesn't know if it's better if the guy doesn't come here. Well, doesn't he need to go to the exit of the netherworld to be able to get here after learning the transcendence of death? Next, we see the women and Lucifer discussing something over lunch, so if they don't find the second main scenario, then Asura will appear, right? That's right, and they just have to wait now? Yes, the woman replied. Why was she so sure about it? Preferences, preferences for the quest. In the case of ideas for the relevant task, it gives preference to the one who first clarifies the story. But wouldn't that be the case with the main scenario? It's only natural to give your preference to the person who cleaned it up after so much hard work. That really makes sense, then wouldn't they obviously tell the person with priority the starting point of the task? Is it correct that they complete tasks for everyone else? Of course, they had discovered something while tracking down the decaying death. So, they investigated their goals, travel routes, and results. Well, what came of it? The guy asked. Wherever Ashura wreaked havoc, the decaying deaths were always there, too. And in all these places, the only common factor was that there was a conflict over something. A young world tree where the bosses got into a fight over something. Decaying death, too, most likely also because of that something these bosses are targeting. The same thing happens further for Ashura, so it's probably something related to the main quest. This painting, this is the immortal royal city. It is one of the places ravaged by Ashura with a history of conflict, as well as traces of decaying death. Could it just be a coincidence or not? This is where they are right now, and it's also a place with a fierce battle over something. So she'd been waiting here to find a lead, and they'd found it, too. The center of three battles over something, plus new footprints appeared there just a few minutes ago, they weren't there before. This means that the main scenario will be associated with this location. And the fact that Ashira, who received a preference, will go there. Surely now they understood why she had called him here so urgently. Suddenly, a knight burst into their room and started shouting that they were in trouble. They urgently needed to look at it. The girl looked and saw. She kept the divine religion, but what was going on in the street? How did Ashura suddenly appear here? A guy appeared there with his eyes sparkling. It was his divine relic. That's how this video ends. If you have sat through to the end, please don't forget to press the subscribe button and leave feedback. See you in the next video.